Tanner oh. Animate's good, though. Holy moly, that right. guy's way ahead of me. Well, I'm going to ask you your last question here, yeah. then I'm going to kick you out so sure, we can get to this. Uh, what is your predicted record? So I told Mr. Jeff Blyden when I got here that I came here to 1-6 and chew bubble gum. Okay. As it turns out, I'm all out of gum. All right, so we're going to 1-6, baby. All right, so we got a lot of 5-2s and 1-6, and, <laughs> and that, that's a good possibility. All right, Maximilian, thank you, sir. Thanks. Peter, are you here? Yes, I am. All right, man. Well, let's me and you roll this. We have Heidi versus Dan. Okay. All right, so Heidi is in this uh, red, white, black humans, whatever we call that. What do we call that? Savoy? Sav- I don't know. What they, what are they? I'm the old. Sabai. Yeah. I'm old. Mardu. I don't like the Mardu. There we go. <laughs> I don't like the fancy new names. It is Savai. You are correct. Right. And then, um, oh, actually, no, I, we were wrong. It looks like Darian versus Jason. Oh, okay. So we've had oh, a so we're going to have a Lance matchup. Oh, the hatred. <laughs> oh, this will be fun. All right. So we have Darian with a more fully Lance, uh, with Jason with a little bit of a more Ponza. Um, and I, I think... Who's your call? P- pick it. I was going to say, I think it's Jason in this matchup as long as he draws a modicum of removal of targeted land removal spells because Darian does not have a lot of recursion and if Jason can get rid of lands that are not the snow basics I think Darian is going to have a very difficult time trying to assemble Field of the Dead. Yeah, I think that this list is going to come down this matchup is going to come down to this card. It's going to come down to strip mine and yes. whether Darian draws his good strip mine charts or not, right? I mean, that yep. is the power of the mine is um, what happens there. All right, so I see some lands, it looked like, uh, in Jason's Players hand. on seven? Yeah, so, so far, we've got players on seven. Yeah, SDI, I really like the value reanimator and just the like, hey, I'm just, it's, it's kind of like an eternal witness, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, I ran the value reanimator red black. And as I said, I had like the grief reanimator, you know, plays, the Dothy Voidwalker pop it, cast their spell, reanimate it plays. Um, so, you know, I think the value tempo reanimator is, is, is pretty solid, especially because it also can hit their list, right? The reanimate can yes. hit their graveyard as well. So you remove something juicy and start it. Yeah, you all are yeah. good to go out there. I don't know if they're waiting for the go-ahead, but uh, Mark, please give them the go-ahead. And uh, bring the dice a little more into frame, please. The uh, life total dice. Yeah. That was a request from chat. Life total dice in. Oh, you have a Maya straight into Arbor Elf. Yeah, so right, we were talking about that earlier, right? Like, oh, but there is the fast bond. So, like, that is the, like, oh, shit. Okay, then we got Urza Saga. Not enough crabs. No crabs, but... <laughs> But you have enough crabs for all of us, yeah. sir. Is that the day night card? Uh, Destroy an artifact creature. Uh, yeah, did he draft that? I love that card. I didn't see yes. he draft that. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. That's the day night. So you can sack that one to destroy an artifact or enchantment. Oh. Or when it flips, you can just when it hits, or no, not even when it hits, when it attacks, it destroys an artifact or enchantment. Uh, here, Ooh. let me. Outland Liberator. So yes, into the questing beast. Enjoy. Yeah, that a uh, questing beast turn. Well, here let's adjust. Um, that that got downsized. Yeah, one sec. Looks like Jason is reading Hanwar Battlements. Which which got downsized? The the card preview. Oh, okay. Uh, how do I do that? Uh, I'm gonna back up and let him adjust our card preview, which got boogered. So we have no red source on Darien's side, correct? Hanwar Battlements is just hanging out? Yeah, Hanwar Battlements is just hanging out. We have a fast okay. bond. We have the Alton Liberator, which you can see there. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought there was a, a card, a red card in Jason's hand that had a very beta color scheme to it, but it might have been the Acid Moss when he was flicking through in his opening seven. So we had no spells cast, so we are flipping the Outland Liberator. And uh, I really wish it would. I can call that mark in and check it out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here it is. So the Liberator flips into a 3 3 where you can sacrifice. Or, but every time it attacks, you also just get a beat, right? Like, okay. 
So it's it's got two. You can kill two artifacts or enchantments in one turn with it when it flips. Yep. So you hit the flip side on that over there. It's a little flip button. Okay. Yeah. So it's so a three three. It attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. Yep. You can also pay one to do the same. And now it is acidic slime on the Urza saga, right? Uh, most likely. Yep. And then we have a Doctor Pee Pee Poo Poo. Hell yeah. Yeah. Our doctors are out. We're trying to resize here, but we're having issues. I, I think we really just get to see the difference in strategies here where Darian wants to play a longer game, but Jason has the ability to just hit the gas right from the start. And Darian's just scooping it up. Darian's like, no, this is, yeah. I am not beating, uh, I am off those. I'm not beating that questing beast at this point. Yeah. Uh, like, Darian didn't draw any, uh, sorry, didn't draft any maze effects. There's nothing to slow down the creature onslaught. Right. And a quick questing beast is just, you know, that is a clock. Uh, I don't have player deck lists in front of me, so I do not know what Jason has in his sideboard, nor do I know what he would bring in for this matchup. They are on Moxfield, and I don't know if they have been shared with us um, okay. yet. So, there we go. There we go. Uh, Mark, if you're listening, could we get um, access to the Moxfield list? They're at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so if you go to the to the to the spreadsheet. Yes, there should be a link at the bottom of each deck. Conveniently, both of these players have filled out a mox field. Okay, there we go. so Jason's sideboard is Avison's Pilgrim, City of Solitude, Endurance Fury, Ground Seal, Helm, Lion Sash, Magnavore, Mountain Goat, Shame, Pearl, Kasali Prime Mage, Rest in Peace, Stoneforge, and Thought Seize. And I don't know what more you would there's nothing in this sideboard that screams it has to be brought in you could play a value game with right. stoneforge and lion sash no that doesn't seem very good no but that's aside from kasai pride mage that seems like the only cards i would look at bringing in i mean even pride mage i mean kitten fast bond's fine but i mean yeah I don't... exactly i don't think there's anything that screams that it needs to be brought in i don't know what he expects uh, and there, endurance might not be a bad value play. It gets the graveyard and also presents a, a clock. Right. Uh, Especially he, being instant speed. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's really going to help against shenanigans. Yes. And then there's Magnavore if he expects to take this game long, but I don't think that's good either. Right, right, right. No. From Darien's side, you have Bajuka Bog, Collector Oof. Dosa and the Fallen Leaf, Ensnaring Bridge, Force of Vigor, Porticolus, okay. Silent Gravestone, and Soul Guide Lantern. STI with the interesting question. Um, is that an on-color mox in the sideboard? And yes, I... It looks like it is. I did skip over the mox pearl, yes, in the sideboard. Uh, but it is on-color for only one card. Uh, what are we on-color for? Knight of the Reliquary. Just Knight of the Reliquary. I mean... I tell you what, if I've got wildfire and acid moss, even an off and burning, even an off color box seems pretty good to me. Seems decent, yes. I I, I can agree with that. I, that's that that goes against everything I know. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I'm gonna call that rookie mistakes. <laughs> I I'm gonna call that a veteran mistake. <laughs> that's that, that's on J that Jason swings deals, around. But how much does he really play? You know. <laughs> Yeah. With the mox the sideboard, he could side it in and try and take the advantage. Yeah, it's it's still bad. I mean, <laughs> we can cut look, it. You could also well. you could also do that from the main board. Yeah. <laughs> I, look, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to come up with a reason to sideboard the mox in. Also, yeah. this is a continuous construction event. Yes. No, no, it is not. No. Oh, it is not. It oh, is okay. not. There is no. a main board lock. It might be oh, a deckless error, and I'm going to follow up on that to see if it's a deckless error. Thank you, STI. You know what? The, the, I'm so glad that I'm seeing some of. Uh, some new people draft here today because I know that I don't ever have to fucking take advice from these people ever <laughs> again. <laughs> oh, that's fun. All right. Uh, uh, um, what did we reveal off once upon a time? I did not see. Listen, they, okay. they can't all be me and show the entire hand uh, off of every time. Uh, okay. That is the liberator again, it looks like. Uh, believe so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's the only day and yeah. night card in the list. Yeah, it's the liberator. 
I wonder if we'll see portcullis come in. Because it just says if there are two or more other creatures in play. So right now, portcullis is technically right. on. And so now you see why uh, portcullis might comment about portcullis being a bad uh, uh, ensnaring bridge uh, is meaningful. And why I was talking about Hex Drinker being so good. Uh, is he giving us the shocker? Hey, probably. I mean, all right. He, here's a truck stop, Kanye. <laughs> but uh, yeah, a right, card so. like Hex Drinker already being on the board. Just start One lander with a Burge and Arbor Elf. I mean, that is a keepable hand. Yeah, you know? it is, especially with his list. Espe- yeah, especially against Darian's list, which is pretty light on removal. I mean, yes, that's it. Yeah. Ooh, Grove of the Burn Willows. Did, did Not exactly have, punishing fire yet. Did he have the fires to go with that? He did draft it, yes. yes. Okay, okay. Thank you, Sir Lotus, for following up on that, please. I appreciate it. You are appreciated and valued. Um, okay. So uh, that was kind of one of the things we were talking about uh, with, like, effectiveness of threats mm-hmm. um, and... We see the Grove of the Burn Willows out in play. Um, you know what? Oh, okay, he, let him, he let him take back the Grove for a Tabernacle. Let's say. And then he scooped him. That's I mean, a quick scoop. I mean, even with, like, the handicapped, that's still a quick scoop because, like, like Liberators, that's a slow-ass threat. You're saying that, I mean, would you play through? I would play through for at least three turns. To see what I drew into, right? Sure, I mean, yeah. like that's not an auto scoop. You're gonna no, lose. I, I agree, especially they can you pay can, for themselves. You, yeah, you can pay for your. Themselves. They can yeah. pay, they can pay for themselves, and you you see if you draw some lands because liberator it all, it is also, a slow threat. It also does the same thing to the liberator. Right. Yeah. I mean, so it's gonna cost I, yeah, I absolutely. I mean, yeah. I will never. I'm scoop. a quick. I'm a pretty quick scooper. I, that is not a. <laughs> that is not a situation. That is not a scoop. scoop. Uh, yeah. I have one through more than one tabernacle. But you know where I should. Yeah. You know. I Tabernacle will. is like Blood Moon. It slows the game down, and if you do not have a way to close out the game, you will eventually lose underneath it. I make yeah. people play out Time Vault. Yeah. I <laughs> Show me that you can beat me before you deck yourself. Mm-hmm. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. So we got a bolt of six on Darian's side here. You know... It, was that 1993 rules where you just flash the hand? I guess, yeah. He was just so like, hey, look, I had a mock <laughs> diamond and some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So this is funny because also Darian and Jason work together at the collector store. So. I, did, I did not. Oh really? That. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it's Max who's from KC. Max Max used to be St. Louis, and okay. now he's KC. All right, so there's the card that goes to the bottom. It's I think Eric. we have an Eric Levine in the house because everyone just celebrated. So uh, yeah. Eric Levine, our, and our, nor- our normal announcer. Uh, his wife has been the last nine months in Japan because she's time. she's a Japanese studies PhD student, mm-hmm. and she's been over there. And she got back yesterday, so Eric is not joining us today because he's enjoying the companies of his lovely wife, and that they uh, are just here for the moment. Because I just heard the crowd go, "Hey, Ooh, uh, okay." So uh, I think Jason, yep, Jason yeah. blowing up that Urza so, saga. Urza say what? <laughs> and we have Liberator again, like just like this Liberator is just all day Can long. Somebody needs to learn how to shuffle, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. I also don't think that he's at 10 life. No, I don't think so. Um, all right, so we had a Vista. Can someone check a life totals there? That should be a 19 off the Vista. Um, 19 to 20, yeah. yeah. All right. Is that fertile ground? Or that's, what? Uh, yeah, that's fertile. Yeah, that's OG okay. fertile. Because Utopia Sprawl's got newer art. Yep. Now we have, oh, but see, Fertile against the 3-3, three, three, uh, which it went away. I was like, Fertile against the 3-3 three, three, uh, flipped Liberator uh, seems really bad because it just blows it up on attack. Yeah, and I think Jason's too early of a scoop in game two. is going to come back to bite. He's going to lose this yeah. in three now because he overscooped in game two. He should not have <laughs> scooped. Make him have it.
So what flips it back to day? He has to cast uh, two spells on a turn. Got it. No spell slips it from day to night. And we get Clothus? We got Clothus, which is going to do maybe add some mana. It's going to be okay. Yeah. It'll add a little bit. Yeah, it can exile the um, Clothus here, it can exile the Prismatic and make, give them four mana, or it can just do well, see, damage. now now that we get, uh, let's see, um, we're going to get out a Fertile Ground and can get can go oh, from that we have a into... Green Sun for six. So here comes Big Daddy Primetime. Yep. And Crazy teasy. Yeah. Uh, prime time on the board, and, and this is just now this is elementary at this point. And we do not have a dryad to go. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's not enough mountain action there. And he gets no, no, no. The, I'm counting for Field of the Dead. Oh. The Suva makes a duplicate, and I can't see what's off camera. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he... He doesn't have enough lands no matter what, because there's a Mox. I don't think he has enough no matter what. Yeah, it's a field, just in case. Okay. But... Down to six. But, like, one more attack with prime time is going gonna, gonna to trigger the field. And... Mm-hmm. And we have a Hex Drinker in play. Too late, too little, too yada. I'm just a little too late. Yeah, we do have some field. And we got a scoopage. Yep. Makes sense. All right. Well, you two chat up. I'm going to go talk to Eric and see okay. what's going on next. Yep. Okay. So we are waiting on confirmation about Jason's deck list because right now it looks like there's only 14 cards in the sideboard, including the mocks. Huh. Is but, it is a concern that one of them didn't get entered or... Uh, unsure. Okay. Mox Pearl is supposed to be in the sideboard. Okay. That was the question, was whether or not the Mox was supposed to be in the side or the main. So he's leaving it there for a reason. So if we're looking at lists as they are, what do we think would be one of the more interesting decks to see on camera next? Uh, I think you Mike want- is raring to go. Um, I also right. want to see how that came together. So, yep. um, uh, yeah. So, uh, in the meantime, I thought uh, we could do some interstitial, interstitial stuff. Yep. Uh, hold on a second. Let me pull up this. Um, so, imagine that there's a little banner up top that says, like, top five list or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Chat, let us know what you want to hear about because we've got a couple of these in the in the books, right? Do you want to hear about the most underdrafted cards, the most overdrafted cards, uh, perhaps top planeswalkers, top creatures? What would you like Pete and I to talk about? Sorry, Peter. Oh, that's fine. I don't mind. Right. Um, we could get started with, uh, I think... Planeswalkers is the most accessible of these topics. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's it's kind of more uh, figured out at this point uh, which ones work and which ones don't. So, do you want to take us through what uh, what you think is uh, up at the top of the board? So, I think uh, overdrafted is Narset. Personally, yeah. uh, Narset does a lot of great things, but I think there are a lot of people that again treat Narset like I mentioned earlier about slurring. Or commander, kind of like the sacred cow of, if I don't get it, somebody else will, and then I'm, gonna, then I'm going to lose to it. Yeah. But there are ways to either construct your deck to not lose to it, or to not have to care about it, aside from the minus ability on it. Yeah. And I, okay. I, I was just going to say, I think it does not help Narset's case that the meta has shifted a lot more towards creature decks, mm-hmm. and um. It basically means uh, in a lot of uh, matchups, if your Narset hits the board, you can't down tick. Correct. It's just going to. It's just going to get erased. Yeah. Um, and not only that, but like with the Mana Crypt thing and Soul Ring, two blue and one doesn't seem like it's a big deal, but it is a world of difference away from blue two. Um, it really prevents you from 
utilizing like a lot of like first turn mana acceleration stuff. And it also like that also means that you can't really get set up for like a wheel effect on turn two. Um, so yes, uh, that's You're giving up a lot. That's why Narset is overdrafted, and why we kind of see that correction that that um, fall back down to earth. But mm -hmm. it, it's still a very good card. Oh, but yeah. it is it is definitely not a second round, third round pick kind of a card. Yes, um, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, so how do you feel at this point about Jace the Mind Sculptor? Another Mason and Jeff are sliding over. Okay. And Mason's up to one health. Okay. Um, I think Jace the Mind Sculptor is very similar to Narset in that you could tap out to cast Jace the Mind Sculptor and die um, in this format. But I think there are decks that want to play a longer tempo game that could actually stand to play Jace the Mind Sculptor more. And I think with cards like Ledger Shredder, it's time to reevaluate the location of Jace within the overall hierarchy yeah. of Planeswalkers. Uh, so I agree with that sentiment, and I agree with the entrance of my buddy, my finals companion from VRD7, uh, L3 Judge Eric Levine, joining us in the booth. We're going to real quickly, uh, as they decide whether they're mulliganing or not, uh, I'm going to say hi to not Steven. How's it going, Brandon? It's going great. And I'm hello. Gonna, I'm going to let you have this one. Hello. Hello, VRD chat. How's everybody doing? Uh, we're doing great. We're going to go back to the gameplay here. We have Jeff and Mason, and one of those players is up 1-0, and I don't remember which one. Yeah, I just walked by that match, and I have zero information about it, other than I said hello to the players. Let's <laughs> assume it's Mason. Wow. Wow. I, a bold I think choice. That, I, I just think that's what I remember Steven saying. Yeah, that uh, sounds right. <laughs> Reptar, do you remember? I do not. I... <laughs> that's fine. Uh, yeah, uh, Mark, can we get a can we get a confirmation on that? Thank you. Uh, so we've got Mason here, uh, drafting very uh, good blue stuff cards. Many of which are counter spells, right? I think that uh, also includes a round fifteen mana drain. Yeah, mana drain went extremely late in this draft. I think that was a case of not nearly as many blue drafters as usual, and a bunch of people forgetting. Yeah, we yep. had a real, a, a seriously low number of blue drafters in this in this event, which meant that Mason could really just clean up all of these spells to the point where actual counter spell was not drafted. Right? Yeah. Uh, that is correct. Th I mean, that, to be fair, is a mistake. Yes. Uh, along the same vein as uh, Mana Drain not getting picked that late, but this is this is a draft where you have Mason, the one person you don't want this to happen for. Yes. And you and everybody lets it happen for Mason. Yeah, as you uh, all pointed but, out, yeah. he he has that strategy that used to be the the like jet. Thought sees Inquisition strategy that has moved to the sort of, I, I mean, based piece partially of, on his draft blue position. power. Yep. Into the force and force. Exactly. And so picking up, what was it, Sapphire into Time Walk, I believe, in the first two rounds? Mana Crypt into crypt Time and, Walk. That's right. Into Force of Will, into Force of yeah, Negation, negation and round five. It's, right. It's gross. And it's. And then you've also got all of the other value ones as well. Like you've got Ponder, you've got Days and Spell Pierce, and it's it's a really uh, scary list to go up against. And meanwhile, on the other side of this equation here, Jeff managed to pick up an artifact deck also largely uncontested, right? There weren't nobody, yeah. he didn't have to fight anybody early, which I think is usually a tradition with the artifact decks. Instead, Correct. we had Jason and Darian fighting over lands. And so we saw Jeff just uncontested getting a lot of the artifact payoffs. Uh, the, the the Chrome Mox, the Urza, I think both of those. Are, I, I don't remember Opal, seeing rather. an Urza at all. And I'm looking at Jeff's list and I do not see an Urza in here. No, Urza went undrafted. Oh, I hallucinated the Urza. Fantastic. Well, Urza Saga went, Second pick. Yes, Darian took that Urza Saga on the wheel. That's right. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Well, it of. makes sense to think that Jeff would have Urza looking at the construction of the deck overall yeah. because it seems like it would just fit in the list. He reported that he didn't uh, want it because of blue concerns, which I understand. I also feel like that Doesn't is... it cost one blue? It costs blue, blue, two. Blue, um, blue, okay. Personally, I feel like if you are in that defense grid, 
Yep, we're Which starting is, off with a a solid play against Mason here. Very good against Mason. Uh, very, very good against Mason. Mason going to yep. go ahead and respond with a uh, thought scour here, targeting himself, putting an ancient <laughs> grudge at a shivan reef into the graveyard here. But otherwise, we have islands facing off against their snow-covered snow covered counterparts. And are we going to get that uh, either days or I know that there's a force of will in hand. It looks like Jeff has managed to resolve Defense Grid and Mox Opal here. Mason bringing down the Mana Crypt, which may hurt him a little bit if this game goes long. Going to go ahead and grudge the Defense Grid on his own turn, avoiding that three mana tax. Wow. Yeah. So one of the things we talked about during the draft was a potential fighting over artifact lands, and I'm not seeing any in Jeff's list, and I don't see any in Dan's either. Yeah, um... I feel like uh, in this particular draft, more than any other time, a lot of picks were kind of wasted. There was, there was a, a higher inefficiency of picks than we're used to seeing. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that leads to things like, okay, well, then I can't spend three picks getting a Seat of the Synod and a uh, Great Furnace and a Dark Steel Citadel. Jeff yeah. trying to drop two rings. Rings of Bright Hearth here coming down, getting mana leaked. Jeff following up with a walking ballista on one. Trying to take advantage of that Mishra's workshop while he can. Mason being reminded to flip for the crypt. Flip for the crypt. Flip Tails, for the crypt. Fails. And it looks like it failed today for Mason as he takes three damage, falling to 17. So do we have a force? Of, no, that's an Archmage's Charm and a Force of Will in hand, uh, as well as a Time Walk. And a Drain, I believe. Yes, it's so gross. we're stocked. It's we so, are. It's so gross. Mason, with that very fortunate uh, Thought Scour early hitting that Ancient Grudge, allowing him to get rid of that defense grid. Yeah. I mean, even if he didn't have that Ancient Grudge, it's just a matter of, like, efficiency of like of your removal you don't yeah. really want to burn that force of will if you don't have to and uh that's that's why mason has won two of these yes no mason mason knows where to place his counter magic and when to place his counter magic and he's thinking about that right now as jeff tries to lay down an ethereum sculptor discounting the cost of his artifacts yeah, I think uh, Mason literally only has four counters because one of them is a time walk, which just gives him an extra turn to draw another uh, counter. So it'd be yeah, four just and a half. Blue explore. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Mason choosing to respond with Archmage's Charm here, drawing only just drawing two cards, not going to counter the Ethereum sculpture, just uh just gonna draw cards at the end of turn. Rips a daze it, here. Oh yeah, it's fine. He I mean he just he just replaced that counter with one that's easier to cast. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Is there a Hercules recall? Uh, it was picked, I believe, by Viviano uh, in roughly round 34-ish or 28-ish, something like that. Yeah, I think Mike has it. Oh, Mason has it. Oh, exciting. They're right next to each other in the draft sheet, so that's why. That'll do it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and Mason we're falls to 14. Ooh. in a Deceiver Exarch. And I think Jeff is smart enough to know that there is no red mana on... <laughs> yeah, it looks like Mason is trying to similarly deprive Jeff of red mana here, tapping the volcanic island in the upkeep. Rude. So looking at Jeff's list, there are two red cards that I can see immediately. There's Dak Faden and Dockside Extortionist. Yeah. So it's... Dockside is kind of a, a, a loss here because it's just a two for one. You pay two, you get one treasure from Mason's vault. Are we that afraid of Dak Faden? Uh, I, I mean, if Mason is anything like me, and he's not really, uh, he didn't read uh, the full deck list before committing to the match. Um, so, Fair enough. Uh, I've only done that once. Speaking of Hercules re Recall, Mason is going to go ahead and snap that off in Jeff's end step, returning about half of Jeff's board to his hand. No big deal. So in game two... Uh, that I watch um, Viviano beat Max. It, okay. Max goes turn one in Tomb and Archon of Cruelty, which then uh, Viviano reanimates his Archon of Cruelty on turn one. Wow. It's an instant. Yeah. Oh, no. Wow. So, oh, uh, no. That was, um, yeah, that was something. Reanimates a sorcery. 
Well, it did it at sorcery speed. It was like that's brutal. I know. You I don't know the exact. Know. I didn't see. All I came in was Viviano had his archon with the reanimate. I don't know the exact. Pl- it was a bad play line yeah. or whatever, but it was still brutal. Yeah. Mason going to go ahead and take advantage of that Mana Crypt here. Going to add Lutri to hand, but it looks like Mana Crypt is really doing a job on Mason's life. I can't quite get a handle on exactly There's what a, his life total is, but I'm looks thinking like a it might be 12. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. We could get so that brought down. That would the, be fantastic. The thing is, uh, Jeff still has six mana on board, right? Uh, now he's got seven. Uh He's not out of this because he has big, beefy, nasty things. Well, we need one more artifact for seven. Um, what? Looks like we're dropping a basalt monolith here. Jeff C. Careening towards All right, there we go. nonsense here. Uh, yeah. But, you know, what I was going to say is that uh, bouncing, using Hercules to bounce the ballista back to. Okay. Life's, okay, I'll fix this. Uh, it was a careful study, not an in-tune, by the way. So he goes, uh, turn one, careful study, draw two, pitch, land, archon, and he goes, play land, reanimate, <laughs> Untap, archon. land, reanimate. <laughs> Oof. So, uh, you know, we know what's in Mason's hand, and we know that it's a bunch, it's just a bunch of gross, overpowered counter spells. Uh, yeah. So, it's different, but to Jeff, he's probably he was probably thinking, like, this Hercules recall... Kind of helps me because I have a one mana. Or, yeah, we just have a one plus one plus one counter on that walking ballista. This gives me a chance to uh, to get some more action in. Yep. Um, but uh, Jeff is also smarter than that and knows that that probably means whatever's going back to hand. Uh, if Mason wants to, he's gonna be able to counter it. Yeah, there is a suggestion that Mason is going to have to bounce. The crypt back to his hand at this rate, and we are also rapidly heading towards yeah. that point in time. Yes, we are approaching that vibe, and especially the fact that he does not have, he's not representing any red mana on board, and so uh, his, what he has described as his win con is not coming very quickly. Brazen Borrower also unable to bounce his own crypt back. It will, however, bounce that Ethereum Sculptor back here, Mason having fallen to eat, as we noted from the crypt, it does not look like Mason has too much other aggressive action here. Just going to swing in with the Deceiver Exarch for one, dropping Jeff down to 18 and passing the turn. Ironically, it will come down to a coin flip, probabilistically, about whether the Mana Crypt will kill Mason before the Brazen <laughs> Borrower kills Jeff. Yeah. I imagine the next splashy play Jeff m- makes will get met with a Cryptic Command counter bounce. That sounds correct. People asked earlier in chat about uh, Dan's wish targets. Mm-hmm. Uh, tendrils of Agony. But also Tormod's Crypt, so he can Thoracle. So um, wish actually, the, the, the other question was how Dan plans, plans to cast wish. In the wish board. Yeah, the, the other question was uh, how does Dan, he plan to cast Dan wish. Has, uh, has Black Lotus. He has lo- both and Lotus treasures. and LED and... And what's Hall Breacher Treasures. And Hall Breacher Treasures, so... Yeah. Okay. A few different sources well, of red mana. Is, Obviously, it, a little hard to cast Wish from the hand with LED, is, but, yeah. but totally is, doable off Breach. It is right. part of the process of everything going off. Right. Like, I, he uh, just wanted the Breaches a moment yeah. ago, so, I mean, he's able to do it. <laughs> yep. Mason sending in that Brazen Bar. We're bringing Jeff down to 15 here. Jeff looks like he's going to be spending some mana to untap Basalt Monolith, or did he just untap it? Maybe he's just being cheeky. I don't know. And looks. That, oh, he 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 must. Well, have spent, no reason. He must have spent the mana in the at the end step and then untapped. Yeah. Yes, I see. I see what happened here. And he's going to go ahead and try to hard cast blight steel colossus. And I expect this will be met with some resistance I from hope, Mason. Man, I I wish that mana burn was still a thing, and I wish that Mason <laughs> mana drained it, <laughs> uh, costing ten. Uh, you got six uh, off of the basalt and the workshop, or sorry, costing eleven. Uh, and so he has Xaxes for being able to cast uh, Blightsteel. On another turn, I'd be tempted to meet this with Venser, but it looks like Mason is considering the Cryptic Command maneuver you all were mentioning earlier, considering casting the Cryptic Command, bouncing the Mana Crypt, and countering the Blightsteel. However, he's not sure yet. I've had a dig through time in his hand, too. I believe so. That seems like the most... 
the most efficient way to deal with this. And do it looks do like the two exactly things going to happen? Uh, prevent your opponent from winning and <laughs> prevent yourself from losing. Nah, he drew a card. Oh, okay. Mason, Mason in full savage mode, dropping to two off his own mana crypt here. What? Now having uh, just vet, he he can still bounce it with his Venser, right? So he's oh, still yeah, got okay. an avenue, but he's going to have to con- uh, have to That's... concede a lot of mana advantage in order to return it to his hand. So... But there is Splinter Twin in hand now. Ooh, so Mason going ahead and casting Dig Through Time, going to exile a significant portion of his graveyard here, along with tapping two islands to try to find the answer to this question. Can I kill Jeff? I mean, Brazen Borrower just does three damage flying, and you've got a billion goddamn counters. Or a, yeah, You so. know, it may be that what Mason's digging for is another free counter spell here so that he can hold that up while also venturing his own mana crypt. He has Days and Force of Will in hand. Or, he, no, he but I think he found a red source. Yeah, I th- in the dig. It, it's. I mean, who are He'll we? Need a who are we one, to right? criticize such a <laughs> position of power? Uh, but yeah, What's I mean, that? like he can just he can just counter whatever Jeff puts out there and just keep swinging with Brazen Borrower for three. Yeah, looks uh, like we have uh, one of one of Mason's various bad blue red lands coming down. I'm not quite sure which one that is from the art. I believe is, that is Silver Falls. Is it? Is it? That's a weird uh, Silver Falls. It, no, I thought it was the oh, one snarl. from AFR. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. No, that doesn't make sense either. Is it, is it oh, the snarl it's, from it's, it's the snarl. Haven? It's the storm oh. boil snarl or whatever. Thank you, STI. With many more eyes here on Twitch. Stay. Yeah, I think we're going to see the Vincer at end of turn. Yeah, Mason's yeah. got exactly that amount of mana lined up here between his Breeding Pool, Tropical Island, and Mana Crypt itself. Jeff uh, letting everyone know that he literally tapped that snow-covered island. I'm not sure what he's talking about, but uh, I believe him. Uh, Koldatha Forge Master coming down for Jeff. Of course, that's something oh. that, that he can tap and sacrifice three artifacts to tutor up another artifact from his library. And that is going to be re- met with a Venser returning Mana Crypt to Mason's hand. Oh, I was like... <laughs> I was like, Mason, you, saw, <laughs> you, salty <laughs> sea, you salty sea dog, I swear. I had that moment too. Yeah. Ponder from Mason here. Going to see three cards. One of them looks to be Kiki okay. and Cheeky. So... I'm looking at Jeff's list and I see an offer you can't refuse. Yeah. As the only piece of interaction with Splinter Ooh. Twin. Yeah. And that's a particularly but, awkward piece of interaction because it would give Mason two treasures and allow him to theoretically cast Kiki Jiki on a future turn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it. I feel like Jeff's fate has been sealed for a while now. There have been many times where that has been said about <laughs> games that I have participated in. But I had answers in my deck that I used all of my luck points to just draw to the top. <laughs> uh, I don't know that there is any series of draws that Jeff can get right here to bulldoze through three counter spells. No. Uh, Jeff can't cast his enlightened tier, but it does nothing. Yeah, that's a scoop. Jeff has no interest in playing this one out further, and I believe, if I understand correctly, that's going to be the match for Mason. Based on my presumptive guess. I think I also think Jeff went first this game, right? Because yeah. he, he played the island, and then he played the second island in the defense grid before Mason played a second that's land. That's correct, yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I believe that it takes a Mason, as his name is pronounced in, uh, <laughs> how, in a different way to pronounce it. Ah, oui. Uh, Beyond Sewer, uh, Mason, the house, uh, going to want to know. Yeah, the Snapcaster Hercules Recall sending Jeff's mana situation a little further behind. And Jeff says, I don't think I can play from this point with the Forge Master, but we're putting... Oh, oh, he oh, is oh, still oh. playing. Jeff, Jeff, oh, yeah. up. Oh. Jeff considered conceding, but thought better of it. I see. Okay. Oh no, he got he, he got hercled. Yeah. I see. Okay. Now I've put it, all the pieces together. I my memory of Hercules Recall 
his the Modern Masters 2015 version. There's this. Okay, we were just oh, about no. five seconds in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. V- visually, I have a very tough time distinguishing almost all of those blue instants or sorceries from like Legends Antiquities and uh, like alliances. They're they're all very dark. Uh, like oil paintings with some like orange hues kind of <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I'll be honest. I didn't even look at Mason's side of the board. I just saw Jeff scooping his permits up. up. Yeah. <laughs> Snapcaster Hercules. It's a, it's a good line. Oh. One of the best in this situation. And I am not sure what we're going to encounter here. Yeah, here, I'll, I'll drop out. Yeah, yeah, I can stick around longer. Yeah. Emily, I mean, Emily, no, we're actually, we just had a really good too. combo. We're uh, trying to hook Emily into the VRD pres- uh, St. Louis Presents group. Oh, that's a great idea. Um, and because we were talking about her doing these, and, uh, you know, there was some apprehension, but, like, this group yes. would probably be a really good fit for you. And yeah, I think so Emily would really She's talking that. to Redbeard about that right now. Perfect. All right. So we're going to have Darian versus Mike. Both are 1-0. Yeah, Darian, I saw took down Jason in the uh, the land fight inaugural match of uh, STL nine yeah, here. Jason scooped a little, a little too quick game two for sure, and I I, I read him rights about it, you know. But uh, <laughs> but Mike had, as I commented earlier, came in had the sweet play against Max, where Gosh. Max careful study dropped the Archon, and Mike was like, "Value reanimate on your Archon." Perfect. Is this Perfect. just me and you, or is Peter in here? Uh, I am Peter's here. in here. Sweet, awesome. Okay, good. I just want to make sure that I'm not talking over one of our partners in crime. Yeah, Snapcaster fucking Hercules recall was beautiful and made me cry. <laughs> like, yeah. I have seen a lot of beautiful Snapcasters. That one is, oh, good. So it looks like Mark Mike is starting off fast. You're going to go ahead and cycle that Street Wraith right off the bat. See if he can't start filling that graveyard, getting his value going. So I don't know if you all remember. I mean, I said this when my interview with Mike. Like He said that he felt his first half of the draft was really good and then it fell apart. I told him the inverse. I said I hated his first half of the draft. But after his fatal push pick, I thought his draft came together beautifully. Yeah, I, I, and, I, I, I yeah. quite agree with you. And he was, very, he was very intrigued by that. And I think that opened his eyes to some different thinking about what VRD is. Because I talked about like why Deathrite Shaman is overrated in VRD, for example. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Similar to, uh, similar to the discussion that I think uh, was being had in the booth about... Uh, the, the, Peter, you were talking about this, I think, about Darian's growth of the Burn Willows and Punishing Fire combo not being quite necessarily up to snuff in VRD where you have uh, only one copy of each of those cards. Yeah, uh, Brendan and I spent a lot of time talking about that in particular because of how Darian's deck really does feel like the grinding version of the Legacy deck. And from all the discussion in VRDs about the transfer of players from Constructed to mm-hmm. this format that is a common theme that we see yeah uh, i think it depends can, if you take these arc these archetypes i would tell you that combo in particular can be brutal in vrd but you generally want it in the rug deck with a spell seeker to go get the punishing fires Ooh. right <laughs> folks i hate to interrupt you but some spicy nonsense is happening darian going off with the turn one fast bond getting that forest off of the prismatic vista, vista dropping the fast bond and saying strip mine go so, and it is, but I'm that's sure. a that's a monkey though. Yeah, I mean, that's like out of yeah. all the things. Like I thought that was a dread horde. Out of all the things you don't want to be facing with turn one fast bond, it might be the monkey. Oh, certainly, yeah. monkey will accumulate treasure. So, so uh, STI asked the question of how good punishing fire is, especially in this draft. And if you look at the lists, uh, I haven't taken a look at Heidi's full list, but I think punishing fire eats Heidi's deck alive if the sequence of creatures doesn't land properly to pump. The yeah, squad. You're correct. Like, it can either be horrible against Heidi's deck or it can be ridiculous against Heidi's deck. Uh, and that's all about her creature, creature sequencing. Yeah. Some fantastic play from Mike here. Going ahead and dropping that swamp, reanimating Street Wraith, and just putting a 3-4 on the battlefield saying, all right, now I'm going to Lava Axe you every turn for the rest of the game until you actually do something about this. And oh, yeah. by the way, Fast Bond deals you damage. It also turns on the Death Right Shaman. Not the Death Right Shaman, the uh, Death Shadow in the list, correct? Oh. That's in the Crop rotation gets mental misstepped, and Darian says no oh. thanks. <laughs> Again, oh no! Mike is a very good player, right? Like he is a longtime local grinder. He knows his cards. That was beautifully played against. The, I mean, obviously, he didn't have the lock piece for it, but yeah, um, that was beautifully played. Like Mike also has some, I believe, some recent uh, good tournament finishes, if I recall correctly. But yeah. uh, he's taking a look at Darian's deck list here, 
and uh, do we have do we have their deck lists up here? It looks like we do. Yes. We have some some up here. All right. So uh, both of these decks are available. As I said, I've jokingly accused Viviano before of cheating at uh, limited because his freaking limited builds are so good. <laughs> his two headed giant builds uh, are often make me cry. You know, I've seen Mike play Magic extremely well every time I've watched him play Magic. Are we? Is does this Moxfield decklist scene? Is this? A, does this scene work? Let's find out. Ha <laughs> <Yes, laughs> Okay. Does. All righty. So, so we're why I miss you. And... Me and me and Brandon are back here going technological. Oh, roar, 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 roar. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, when, it works I because were... I put this one together. I remember. Oh, I was so. sitting right next to you when you, when you <laughs> put this scene together. I, I, we, we, you worked hard on this, and now here I am reaping the uh, reaping the benefits of yeah. your hard work. So thank you, Peter. It looks like all right. Here we go. And if I just go ahead and resize this window a little bit, yeah. Okay. Now we have the full thing in here. So. Let's take a quick look at Mike's sideboard, see what he might bring in here. Um, not we, a... Not, we could see the surgical, potentially. Surgical and oppo agent are both possibilities. Uh, he doesn't have enough fetches for the op agent to be super value here, I don't think. Uh, He's got crop it, rot. Yeah, but that's uh, just one. That's so fair. there's a Green Sun Zenith, Hour of Promise, Sylvan Scrying, Crop Rotation. Okay, one, okay. Uh, once upon a time doesn't search, but there's summoners packed. Right, that's legit. Okay, relic. Uh, right, because he's got the summoners packed and the prime time. Yeah, he's oh, got prime that. time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's legit then. So yeah, we may very well see that. We might see relic if uh, if if Mike is worried about the graveyard stuff. But I think Mike might be more interested in protecting his own graveyard in this matchup and not playing the relic. I don't think we see Colgan, so Colgan should be main deck. Um, so good. So one of the things we'll probably see out of Darien is Dose in the Falling Leaf. Yeah. Sorcery speed game, right? We don't want the fluster storm being an interactive element. We don't want snuff out. Yeah, Dosen would be good. Um, does who has the Merc Tide? Does Mike have the Merc Tide? Merc Tide. Yes, Mike has Merc Tide. Mike has Merc Tide. So, yeah, and the Kess. Right. So uh, and the Dreadhorde. The, the art, so yeah, you definitely want uh, some of the graveyard hate out of um, out of them there. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a few things. He had. So those would be good for sure. Because, like, Murktide is a VRD beating. You know, you're just like, oh, that's so much. And then they do it real quick, and you're like, oh, my God, I'm never going to beat this yeah. card. Murktide is, Murk is just just a really unpleasant card to play against. I was watching a stream yep. last night, and uh, the streamer was lamenting, or the chat was lamenting the old days when Ethereal Forager, everyone's favorite Delve Whale, was the, the hot new Delve card on the scene. And then Murktide appeared, and Murktide's everything was like, much worse. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> Today's hat day in uh, in the house. And <laughs> yeah, well, me, you, and uh, we're all we're all, all, all doing the hats. Well, I bought this. I bought this sweet new uh, Golden State Warriors hat when I was visiting my my buddy in Chicago or not Chicago. Jeez, I go a lot of places <laughs> in San Francisco, and uh, my my friend my friend Roberto and I both wanted new hats. So as is our tradition, we uh, we high rolled to see who would buy hats, and uh, I bought Roberto a hat. So <laughs> you're welcome, Roberto. So congrats, let's congrats, Roberto. Let's take a quick transition back to the gameplay scene here. All right, Mark. I was using I was using OBS to man, see both was, scenes at he, once. He was doing some sexy stuff here, man. <laughs> this is why uh, Eric is. Uh, oh, so we got a, another quick fast bond. Another very early fast bond here from Darian dropping Actually. Dryad Arbor, uh, as well as the Field of the Dead alongside that Mox Emerald. So I don't know if you were there during, in chat during the Field of the Dead discussion. Field of the Dead is a fine backup for a deck like this, but it cannot be mm -hmm. a primary win con. It's yes. Just, you know. No, I, I when he said that during his interview, I thought, hmm, that's a mistake that Darian will learn from. Yeah. Like, it, it, there was a couple games that won me when I did was that 6-1 and one with that bug deck. Like, there was a couple mm -hmm. games where I was like, they were late, they were long games, and I just closed them out because of it. But, so it looks like Darian has that constant mist. Was that in his main deck? Uh, I think he brought it out of the board. That's very cool. Uh, Hanweir, Battlements, Crop Rot, and Constant Mist seen off the Gitaxian Pro as Mike falls to 16 from both that and cycling the Street Wraith here. Mm -hmm. Mike knowing that his life total is absolutely a resource in this matchup. Yeah. And, I mean, is that a... Can you hit me over? Are we on Death Shadow? Is that Death Shadow's first Absolutely. Bet? Would you mind holding this fantastic, whole beautiful this microphone, microphone for sorry. me? Yep. We are definitely on Death Shadow. Yeah, I know, but I'm asking is Death Shadow, is that his first time picked? Uh, oh, death, okay. Death. I would imagine not. I imagine it might be. Uh, death Shadow. Ba it is okay. barely not. 270. Two. Yeah. Okay. 
it's good with the value reanimation plan, especially if you have unearth, which yeah, no, I, I mean, it, it, it's, I, mean I think in his deck here, it's, it's going to do its job, right? It's going to yeah. do well. You're not going all in on it, but he's like, hey, can nope. I read the flip side of that thing? So that again is out in Liberator, which was a key player in his game against Jason. Uh, it is a werewolf, daybound, nightbound. When you it, on the first side, it's a two-two. You can pay one to sack it to disenchant. On the back side, it is a three-three that disenchants when it attacks, not when it does damage. When it attacks, yeah, and you can still pay one and sacrifice it. It's a remarkable card, especially on the flip side. Something that's uh, there's a, I, I think along with Cathar Commando is is sort of poised yeah. to transform the future of breaking stuff. I have loved Cathar Commando in my VRDs, and then the other werewolf that's actually really good in the VRDs has been Suspicious Stowaway. Yes, yeah, Stowaway now now part of the Magic Online Vintage Cube, uh, continuing to to be a, a solid card. And it looks like Outland Liberator is transforming here as we move to. Oh, we Knights. have some Dryad Arbor beads. Dryad Arbor is uh, is is taking Mike's, Mike's life total down to twelve alongside the Liberator now, the whatever the name of the backside of Outland Liberator is. Yeah, Cathar Commando has been phenomenal for me though. I actually in my Karn deck when I I had a uh, Liquid Metal Torque, I was like, all right, I'm gonna Liquid Metal that Cathar, Flashing Car Cathar Commando, kill that thing. I don't want to deal with. Mike dropping his uh, Dread Horde Arcanist here, poised to recast that Gitaxian Probe. It doesn't stop a three three though. No, it does not. Uh, Dreadhorde Arcanist, of course, a 1-3, not stacking up well against this 3-3 werewolf. So we are value exploring. <laughs> SD, I, 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 I. <laughs> Just start to get a three-letter name in places. Yes. <laughs> oh, I understand. It's like that the story of the, the, the person on Twitter whose Twitter handle was L and they got hacked like 17 times. We thought it was just because you were British. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those weird British spellings, sir. Ooh, yeah. Ledger Shredder. Ledger Shredder coming down and doing some... Uh... How did Mike pay red? How did Mike uh, pay red? How did Mike pay valid. red? I'll be right back. All right, all right. We're going to go figure that out. Um pause ourselves here. Thank you very much, uh, Kyle. That is a very good question. <laughs> there is a possibility that there is a blood crypt in hand that we missed. Well, of course, if, if you all don't know, Eric uh, Levine, uh, the Raging Levine, is a you know accomplished L3 has uh, head judged many a pro tour in a GP type of scenarios. So uh, the ability to suss this out is right within his wheelhouse. So mm -hmm. I feel myself an accomplished judge, but I, uh, I hold off at his massive amounts of expertise. Oh, yeah. he, he Eric not, is a judge to behold, yeah, if you are did, lucky enough to work with him. He did not shut the door, though, so when he left, so there is a, a quiet roar, and that is what you're hearing, is the roar <laughs> of the other room. So I imagine with the steam vents in hand, this is a potentially easy fix, but we might have to roll a mic down to seven. Right. I mean, we have a game rule violation type situation. Um, mm -hmm. if I thought I did, and I didn't. I... Yep. Improper casting of a spell. Can we roll back? How far can we go? Okay, and that's what we're doing. We're going to go ahead and, and have him shock. No, seven. Darian seems okay with this. So they retap for the turn. Yep. Right. Oh, the roar from the other room. Man, this mic, this mic picks up better in there than it does in here. <laughs> All right, so that was the fix we thought was going to happen. Uh, so as a reminder for those of you, we play at the Don't Be an Asshole area, <laughs> um, which is like we, we've never had to really grind someone out for, you know, Casey and Darian was susceptible to this misunderstanding here. Uh, yeah. Oops. Well, Darian, all, uh, being a judge as well, also, he knows that when I go to that table and say, hey, you know, we have this problem and here are the many, many card draws we've gone through since then. He knows that the, the by the book fix is do nothing right, because we right. can't realistically back that up. But yep. uh, since Mike proposed a solution that involved him swapping that steam vents and taking his life. hand for, for the land he played that turn and paying two life to shock himself, uh, a card which he certainly had in his hand, 
uh, and Darian was amenable to that, obviously we're going to do that. Right. So Dreadboard yep. takes out the uh, Flippy Wolfy there. Um, so in hand, we have a f- exploration. Yeah, we have an exploration and a summoner's pact. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and unknown card. An unknown card. <laughs> So when I left, I lost track. Who's, who's, whose turn is it? Where, where? That is a valid question. <laughs> it is now Darian. Okay, strip, okay. strip mine comes into play. Um, we're going to strip mine the red source. <laughs> it says, fuck your red source. Get that right out of here. Darian passes back. Uh, Mike down at six. However, he, he is the one mustering the attacking yeah, force now. I'm, now that the, uh, the frenzied whatever the heck is in the graveyard. Who's the beatdown? I mean, it's the classic yep. question. Um, exactly, Kyle. That is the that that would be the correct ruling at competitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, this is the thing when I talk to you know a lot of VRD players when I was talking to Sam, which is uh, Brandon's partner, uh, about you know becoming getting better at VRD. I said one of the things she has to realize is sometimes is who's the beatdown. Yep. And we have another. Uh, actually, he's in the chat today, uh, Luke, who's you know a newer VRD player. There was a game I was watching his the other day where he was. Kept dirtling with flash with uh, blink stuff, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Dude, you could have won this game like thirty minutes ago." At the end, that game two, like that shouldn't have gone that long. You're like you were the beatdown, just be the beatdown. I find that some um, players that come from sort of the commander end of the spectrum to VRD are often uh, less less understanding of who is the beatdown, whereas yeah. players like Mike, who come to VRD through competitive magic, are have a better understanding of when that tone shifts in the game and when they can turn the key and just and just start start right. pushing pushing the gas pedal to the floor, right? Summoner's mm-hmm. pack how much do you have to pay is summer pack four to pay for? Summer's pack is two yep. pack is two green green. Okay, okay. Which I was like Darian has to pay for that summer's pack? Because <laughs> but because right now Mike is for sure the beat that cast is back breaking. Yeah the cast is a, a big deal here. Yeah. Like that what can... do you get? Get ramming up excavator? Yeah, so Darian is looking to... So this is interesting. It looks like Darian is looking to lock Mike out of mana. He's got... Which really... Oh, there's a Valakit, and... Uh, what did he get off the pack? It, it was the Ramanap. Oh, right? he did it at the end. He got the... But he had to pay it. So he did it at the end. Got the... The Excavator? Got the Excavator, and then tapped for the thing and played the Valakit. Okay. And Darian aggressively noting, for clarity, that uh, his, his Dryad Arbor is extremely tapped. But a him to Torox going to take the exploration and the excavator, and that's probably going to seal this game up. I mean, if if Mike is is oh he's at sixteen, not six. I see. Right. right. Hey Mark, can we get that die moved in a little bit, please? It keeps Players going. keep moving it up. Yeah, the white die is the one that keeps going up. One day we'll mark it with painter's tape or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what has he got in the cache? I mean, he's got a dreadboard in the cache yard. Uh, I mean, yes. that. so even like a prime time as a blocker just doesn't do anything. Yeah, and Mike, Mike is too disciplined to consider dreadboring the, uh, dryad, the dryad arbor, arbor right, here. Right. He knows that's the wrong play. Right. Yep. Especially when you're flying over for, is it five a turn? How big is Kess? Yeah, Kess being a 3-4, a three, three, I four, believe. 3-4 flyer. So it looks like Mike continues to be in the driver's seat here. Uh, you might think that when, when Mike is down at five life that, that he's behind, but that's just the game of magic, folks. Life is a resource, particularly when you're well, in the Death Shadow deck. Death Shadow, exactly. Mike is exactly where Mike needs to be for Death Shadow. And Mike's creatures are exactly where they belong in the red zone. Mike serves for five, dropping Darian, I believe, also down to five, uh, maybe six, I forget. So a little spyglass action, we're going to shut something off. Mike has yeah, so it, many ways to get information about his opponent's hand. He does, he does. But that's it. His, his opponent's in top deck mode, so he's just naming something. Yeah. Sure. Strip mine. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. this is to to power up the Ledger Shredder, so next turn is... Oh, no, there was no follow-up. Okay. Yeah, and Darian's just picking him up, so... Yeah. All right, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. If Darian has no play, then Dreadboard takes out Dryad Arbor, you swing for six, but if you have another play to follow up the Sorcerer Spyglass, then you can guarantee that the Ledger Shredder and Kess fly over for the six, so... Absolutely. All righty, folks, I'm going to step out and let Brandon back into the booth here, but I'll see you all later, either in chat. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Mike Viviano, for your uh, kind sorry. We appreciate sorry. it. <laughs> so sorry. So sorry. Oh, It's okay, Mike. It's Everybody okay. makes it mistakes. 
<laughs> I once cast a Wrath of God off of uh, one white man and a green, you know. <laughs> Ask me about oh, yeah. times I tapped my fetch lands for mana with, without an Urborg or anything to play. Actually, one of my favorite uh, situations earlier was someone, they, there was a card, Moreland Haunt, and another card looked very similar, and he had Japanese versions. I think it might have been Evolving Wilds or something, but the art looked very similar at the time, and he won a game, like, five or six activations of Moreland Haunt when he did not have a Moreland Haunt in play. Oh, no. <laughs> and it was like, I can't remember I'm like, oh, uh, well, yeah, um, you know. I was like, I can't tell the difference, so, uh, you know. All so right. Light. Do we know who we're getting here next? Uh, yes, Jason and Dan. All right, so Mark should be updating those. Yep, we have we have Jason's list. We need Dan's list, and I'm very excited to see what Dan Dan's forty card main deck looks like. So I know uh, Dan took he just, down Heidi. He, yeah. Um, in game one. Mm-hmm. And then J- J- Jason's how did Jason's second match go? Do we know? Uh, Jason. Max. Played, Jason versus Max. Pl- they played the match. We wait, 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 wait. How's that white die looking? Still too high? Still too well, high. Yes. Well, both dies are still high right I'll now. I'll take care of them both. Thank you, sir. Uh, that's the text that we were looking at here. Yeah, we're looking at it. So Jason played Max. That was the previous round? Yeah, but we don't know Jason? the winner of that one yet. So Yes. Okay. I will do it when I sit down. I will. Here, I'm going to pass this. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to go figure out who won that match. Okay. Okay. So how has it been on the floor? Oh, it's great. Eric's uh, Eric's wife is back. I'm mm-hmm. sure he mentioned at some point from a, a long sojourn uh, elsewhere abroad. And uh, so this was actually my first time uh, meeting Christ. Emily. Heidi? Oh. Okay, they already have it. Heidi versus Mike. Oh. Heidi, versus Heidi versus Mike. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. This is. Be- oh, my goodness. It's being updated remotely. I didn't even know. Goodness yes. gracious. Uh, okay. Text. Cool. So, uh, yeah. Um, you know, just hanging out on the floor. It's still early. It's anybody's mm-hmm. game. Uh, you know, there, there's one or two like, ah, I, I should have been able to overcome that mm-hmm. kind of thing. But, uh, you know, overall, it's just a good day for VRD. Every day that we have VRD is a good day for VRD. And every day above ground is a great day. Remember that. Oh, yeah. You can take it one step past mine. Uh, I... Uh, uh, haha. One <laughs> above and beyond. Something like that. <laughs> okay, so from Heidi. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, black, white, red. I say Red. Uh, cause there's a few, uh, few red cards in there. Uh, mm-hmm. he- legendary humans. Um, it's got some yes. very powerful cards. It's low to the ground. And, uh, if Mike can't deal with it quickly enough, uh, he's going to get overwhelmed. Um, I think the challenge for Heidi is just making sure that everything curves out nicely. Um, yes. and you know, just hopefully being able to dodge some of the removal that Mike has, I think in terms of just like a uh, percentage of cards that either impact the board or go mm-hmm. one for one, Heidi's probably got the advantage here. I would agree too. There's not a lot about Heidi's list that I, re- I would really look to change. The one thing that I don't know is, if it matters at all in VRD is not having three mana Thalia. And I know we talked about, especially uh, Steven more so than, than the two of us, yeah. how glutted Heidi's deck is at the three mana value spot. Yeah. But does that three mana value Thalia that slows your opponents I, down? I think that card is so good and it gets overshadowed by its two mana counterpart, mm-hmm. but especially in VRD where, you know, so you and I and Steven have emphasized how important haste is as a keyword uh, three monothalia drink, uh, like, a excuse me, stop. Oh yeah, I can. Uh, I've, I'm holding things and there's mics. Oh, okay. that's on. fair. Um, so, uh, Thalia, 
Thalia with Heretic Cathars, two and a white for a legendary creature, human soldier, 3-2 with first strike. So very similar to the original Thalia, that was a 2-1 for first strike. But the, it's the extra text on Thalia, Heretic, Cathar that we're really enamored with. So, Creatures yeah. and non-basic lands your opponents control enter the battlefield tap, yeah, which is an incredible tax in this format because the majority of mana bases are made up of non-basic lands. It is, it is, I've ran or Archon Ramiria, right. It can be an incredible tax. Against some decks, it's absolutely backbreaking. Against some decks, it's just okay, whatever. But, mm -hmm. but, but the cre I mean, when you're an aggro deck, the creatures part can't be understated, though. Right, right. Uh, the fact that you're getting stuff down onto the board uh, before you play this card that you're kind of forcing your opponent to deal with. If you're if you're Trevor, playing it, Intrepid Adversary, Thalia. Oh, Thalia. Okay. Uh, so. I mean, not only is a three-two first strike just like a fat, a fat butt. Like that's 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 pretty juicy and voluptuous. Mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> preventing haste cards from being meaningfully impactful is really, really important. And uh, just <laughs> preventing them from she's about to get saucy here. She can hit. Yeah, she can. Okay, okay pull a uh, Torak for me. What, what is Torak's kicker? Like uh, dread cantor. Yeah, it's two black. It's two black. It's, okay, it's so she can't three full, black. She can't full total. She can't full that there. No. Um, aside from that, uh, Heidi has it all right now. Yeah, I mean, I swing with my three one lifelink here, right? Like you make him lose that ledger shredder if you if you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he and he didn't. He was like, I'm not losing my ledger shredder, but. I mean, it, de it depends on what's in Mike's hand uh, about whether or not that's the right call. Uh, but like, regardless, he's getting punished. Um, uh, Mike missed a trigger there. Well, also there's a, a mom on board. So, right. But Mike missed a connive trigger. I like just shredder. She cast trigger. Mox and a uh, bit of blossom. So Mike would have been able to connive and he missed. Oh, trigger, so. I a lot of people play Ledger Shredder and they don't read the full text of the card. So I wonder if that's the case. I guarantee Mike knows the full text of the card. I think he just missed the trigger. Okay. Like, like he is, he's, he's a good enough player. He knows the full text. Okay. Uh, oh, the hat hand was already revealed. So it's Luris and Turok in hand. And that's, yep. you yep. know what? I, I will Turok your Turok. Yeah, I will. <laughs> it's, a, it is very rare that you'll ever hear that. Uh, be a line of play outside of VRD. And even in VRD, <laughs> super, usually those will be buddied up. Right, Let me sing Turok the song of his people. Yes, indeed. Yeah. But the lures there is the big loss, actually, because like if he deals with the Intrepid, she can replay it, particularly with the Intrepid, where you can replay it and still pay the kicker. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. the power of both Turok and Intrepid Alpha of the Lurus, is that you still get to pay the kicker and do the crazy stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean... Yeah, with a sack outlet and stuff so he, like he that. He got too. the trigger that time. Pitch ball therapy. Uh, good call. Yeah, <laughs> not not doing a whole lot right now. So we have a Doctor Pee Pee Poo Poo Pants MD. Hell yeah! It's there's no pants at the end. You just no, you're, you're it's pants. There's pants. There. Just be respectful. No, no, be respectful. <laughs> it's because some respect on that. It's, it's because I can't handle seeing you without pants. It'll turn me on too much. I. Well, uh, you think he's special? <laughs> No, Any. I don't. <laughs> oh. All right, uh, so this is a she's yeah. gonna block. She's gonna protect, right? Yeah. Like, so th this is a Gumball is the card I asked about throwing Heidi's pre VRD. Uh, should that Religious Shredder be dead? No, it's, uh, it's a it has a counter on it. It is a one four currently. And two four. One is a two, two four. four. Oh, I thought okay. I thought it was a. It starts out as a one two. No, it starts as a one. Yeah, no, it's a one three. Oh, Damn. oh, farts. Walk a doodle do. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is. This this just swung the other way. Yeah, this just took a bit because it cheats any damage, right? So like she yeah. blocks with that bitter blossom token. Oh wow! So we can say bye to mom and mom's going by, and then intrepid adversary is going by yeah. a very uh, at some point in the near future. Yeah. I will not say very yeah. soon after that, but um, yeah. and boom. Okay, and well, boom. And <laughs> you, you don't need to uh, <laughs> I, belabor I, the point. Y yes. Well, Mike was very excited that that's what <laughs> just happened. Yeah. Uh, so he's gonna he's gonna do it very emphatically, but and yeah. we're still swinging for three and have a com ball on board. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Uh, Mike is in a she, very she, good position. She should have another bit of blossom if they acknowledge it. She did. They're, they're doing an out of order sequencing, which is fine. Yep. Uh, All right, but like, my, but but once Mike gets rolling, he can also start gaining life. Right. I mean, that's the, yes. 
Like yeah. Gita is not what she wants to be seen. Like that is brutal. It's it is uh, <laughs> it is a very good answer to what is currently happening in this right. game. Well, and she did not know. Like this is that you know newer player and Heidi a little more casual, and that's fine. Yeah. Like I mentioned skull clamp during our post draft right. interview, and she like, didn't know skull clamp existed. Yeah. And I was like, oh, because yeah, well, it's, it's banned. It's like it's really good in your deck. You yeah. <laughs> you know? it, it's also this kind of bygone piece of equipment. Yeah, because it was banned in standard, then immediately banned and extended. Banned in Legacy and only legal in Vintage and Commander. Like, and and it was banned in oh, Modern. All that breaking. Yes, it was. Oh, right. I think it was. One, wasn't it one of the? Uh, it was the initial ban. Initial ban list. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I'm going to tell a story about. So I got. I mean, I started playing Magic in the dark. Right. I'm an old man. And like then, with the lights off or the set. Both. Like you holding a candle. <laughs> yeah, both. Uh, 1994 was a dark yeah, time. Dark time. I was 17 <laughs> years old. I was a piece of shit. Uh, you know. So I was on a lot of drugs. Uh, but anyway, so back in. And then I quit around Alliances, Homelands Alliances, somewhere in there. So you played for a total of like four and a half months? Yeah, no, yeah. It was, it was a couple of years. But, yeah. uh, and then I came back briefly and dipped my toe in at Fifth Dawn. Okay? Yeah. And mm-hmm. I'm, read, I'm reading an article on Inquest about, about the banning of um, School Clinic. And I don't, I don't get it. I'm looking at the card. I'm like, I don't understand how this card's good. I don't understand how this card's good. And then I sit down yeah. and play the pre-con that it came with. The little mm-hmm. white precon, and I'm like, after like five plays, I'm like, oh, okay, that card's broken. I see why it's good. But, so yeah. I think Skull Camp's a card that if you're not super hyper familiar with Magic, it doesn't look like much, right? Like me coming from that earlier mindset, I looked at it, I'm like, why is this card good? Yeah. And then as soon as I started goldfishing with and playing with it, I'm like, okay, I get that this card's dumb. Um, but if you haven't seen it or you're not overly familiar with it, I understand why you don't think it is. Okay, so not only uh, has, here. not only does uh, Mike have a Kess on board, but he's got a Merktide Regent with three counters. That is a fat Regent. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the That's there's a, a Caracas in play, which can bounce the Kess. Right. And she has a connive. This is good though, because she's got lethal scheme. She's going to connive. She connive for th- she's going to get two connives off of it. Right. Yeah, but she has no card hand, so they're just going to be draw discard. So she's yeah. straight losing. But the creatures might gain counters. So she's going to kill the regent unless he's got shenanigans, which he has shenanigans. Of course. Uh, wait, how much was? It should have been oh. two extra. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm not sure why she got five mana. Does she connive with two? I thought she connived with both creatures. Yeah, so that should have only been two mana taps. She should have had enough to pay for that. So I'm not sure what happened there, but that's not. She cycled the triumph. Oh, she cycled the triumph. Very good. Okay, thank you. You're right. There you go. Yeah, so we can bounce the kiss, which is which is good. What is the game uh, life trigger on Uh Not opponent plays a non creature spell. Yes. Okay. Yes. So like, this is still. But Kimball's going to die here in a moment because he's going to go up to four counters on the G. Yeah. <laughs> that cheat that just <laughs> completely reversed the fortunes of this map or match as it does. It's it's, uh, you know what? I know it's a sleeper hit, but I'm going to call it. I think that this card's pretty good. <laughs> Who would have thought? Um, yeah. Did either of you play in that block con- uh, constructed? I did. Format? I was playing only casual at that point. During, okay. during the era. Yeah. Uh, uh, the GK yeah. era. Oh, like where everybody was buying the rat precon. Yeah. God, God um, no, I uh, I was. Yeah, I only came back to competitive. I learned my lesson at, during Lin Civi. Yeah. So, uh, Gta was printed under the second generation legendary rule. So the second one became the wrath. You know, it, right. it got all copies on board. Yeah. And which, which survived control until decks would side Jace. in Gta against the aggro decks to wrath Gta. Right. That was the best answer. It was like in the Planeswalker era the when you played Jace Spellerin. Right. Yeah. The, to the, get. So for those that don't know, during the, the old legendary rule was that it affected both people. So you, during when Jace the Mind Sculpture became a thing, uh, people would, but their control decks especially, would always have Baby Jace in the main and or, main, or, and uh, or uh, because sideboard. It had to do with the Planeswalker uniqueness rule. Not just the legendary rule. The planeswalker uniqueness rule used to look for not a subtype name. on the planeswalker, so it was just Jace. Both of these planeswalkers were just known as Jace. So you could lock out your, you could play your baby Jace first and lock out their Jace four drop, 
and or to use your baby Jace's removal. So yes. it was uh, it was a different era, uh, long 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 for gone. All right, yes. so Mike goes to o, Mike goes up to two O here with two very convincing wins off of the deck that I am impressed with. You know? yeah. I, I mean, I think all three of us looked at the list and said like the cards that he's going to put in the main board, it, they're going to be very cohesive. He drafted a mana base well, mm-hmm. and like they're they're just high efficiency cards. Uh, that Grixis shell, like Grixis mid range kind of shell, is not something that we see a lot. In Grixis this. and bug good stuff. They're yeah. both just like yeah. Grixis and bug good stuff, and and Bixis, Brick, uh, Grixis bug and rug good stuff are ridiculous shells. Yeah, you're just like I'm going to tempo, I'm going to good stuff, and I'm going to kind of half ass control, and I'm going to kill mm-hmm. good stuff. I I will still say that none of them are quite bant, but they are. Like they're right up there. Um, if you Obviously. just, in terms of just like taking good cards from yeah. like from those color identities, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's something that- you don't see a lot of because I think people don't see like a let's say a blue black. Is that just game one? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. I thought it was just game one, yeah. Okay, I thought that was game uh, two. That was a long game. So one. here we got player left winner. Right. I'm gonna step out for a quick moment while we look at sideboards. Okay, All right, brother. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I'm, was what we're saying? I'm, I'm drunk and autistic. You added. I can't the, you added the. We're talking about band in that mix. Uh, yeah. So, is it, uh, Rakdos and Demir? do kind of different things. And so I think mentally that's what uh, prevents people from necessarily like diving into Grixis too frequently. Um, Also like those being like colors that are pieced out as splashes. Right. uh, Is a little bit different. Um, But like if you just take out the, the, the Colagon's commands, the, you know, the ledger shredders, the, the X, Y, and Z, you just have like really efficient, well costed like removal and value creatures. So, right. uh, yeah, Grixis Grixis works really well. We just don't see it nearly that often. And it's because the mana base, right? Three colors is hard to, to do well. I mean, yeah, it's I mean, it's especially any, anything dis- with blue, anything. especially in the discords where we're heavy, right? Yeah. Like because the, the like the land rushes go quick, you know? Yeah. Blue black and uh, blue red tend to split right. uh, your ability to do that. Right, right. So um, you know it's much more frequent that you'll see some you know in a draft. All right, one so we had a Badlands into a Git Probe. Uh, so he's getting Git Probe. We see the Caracas. Uh, no, we have the Plat. We see Caracas and Badlands in hand. She's got Grand Ball Washer swords. Um, General Enforcer and Dam and something under the dam that I can't tell. Oh, that's just Dam on, on that's just Dam because it's just the uh, it's over whatever it is. It's the proxy over this card. So, I mean that's a fine keep. She's got she's got access to all her mana. Um, you know she. I can, mean yeah, that's that's a hell of a keep. Yeah. Uh, you can't play Dam, but that's it. Right. And then we're gonna cabal therapy and just rip something away. So. Yeah. Get probing to Cabal Therapy, pretty sweet. <laughs> I did. I honestly didn't think that Cabal Therapy was going to get uh, main boarded here, and I don't. I, you know, I, I, obviously, I, right now it's right, working. Right, I still think it's a mistake. I mean, yeah, I, I, st- I still would probably not have, especially it without a bitter blossom or something. Well, especially without cards that you, without creatures you want to sacrifice. Right, as I'm saying, like a bitter blossom yeah. or something like that. Right, I mean, like he doesn't have enough creatures that he wants to be sacking. Right. So, uh, in that sense, I mean, like you can. Take your swords. Just... Sacrifice a death right shaman that's gone past its utility, but like this is this is kind of like a nick fit. He started off kind of like going into nick fit, and then just started drafting Grixis good stuff. Oh no no! Oh she's like oh. Oh, he thought I was gonna ball wash her. No, ah, no, no. Oh contraire, mon frère. <laughs> I'm gonna do this top deck thing, right? Like, and that's uh, that's a place to be. That that's a solid top. Deck Mike right wants now. to play a red source and then lightning bolt at Thalia. It's no, he's gonna snuff it out. Yeah. Okay. He has that's, a swamp. That's... He pays for a life. 
And instant speed, he's like, oh, you can read this if you want. <laughs> Does he not have a second land? Uh, he did not, I don't know. I think he did that in a turn. It's an instant. I'm pretty sure Snuff Out's an instant. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, no, that was, uh, that was main phase. Okay. Well, either way, I mean, he still yeah. gets, he has the land. He doesn't need to. Because he <laughs> had to be able to pay the one off the land right. for it. So now we see the abolisher. And that is not uh, Enforcer. That is uh, Killian, the duelist. Uh, so the 2-2 two, two minutes lifelink we talked about earlier. Yeah. So, you know, we saw what happened with last game, last game and seeing Jit just take things over. And I think that that's what people kind of miss uh, when they're getting into one of these drafts is not recognizing the self-contained power level of cards that they're drafting Mm -hmm. Um, or people like foregoing a card like JIT in favor of something like, you know, like uh, I want to get an artifact land. I want to get my seat of the synod so that when I thought the one to draw to thought monitor or thought cast or whatever, uh, it's easier to get that value on this turn. And it's like, that's not how these things are coming up. Right. You're, mm-hmm. I think one of the problems is people trying to script their turns rather than understanding that more often than not, you play a land and go if you're playing a, a deck with right, like so we got, CM, we got CM. Vindicate on Bob there. And, uh, um, she did not have a second black. So I was like, the good play would have been Killian into Vindicate making it cheaper, but she didn't have a second black. So that's, that makes yeah. sense. So. Yeah, what is that, the other card in her hand? Uh, she has Dam and then Killian Ink Duelist. Okay, Damn. it is Dam. I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's Dam. I wish I was your lover. It's Sophie B. Hawkins. Damn. Damn. I, I wish I was your lover. I wish I wish. Um, oh, and Colgan's command gonna come in here. It's gonna make her discard a card. Um, and probably, you gotta get rid of that damn girl. Probably. Damn girl. Oh. I yeah I think. That's yeah. Be the beat down. And, uh, Let the beat What in. was the second effect? I guess the two damage to her? I mean... Uh, no, just card a card, bring back the bob. Oh, bring back the bob. Okay, okay. I missed that part. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, so that in, the, the in that case, the dam, the dam holding out is more reasonable. Right. Yeah, Yeah. you have to choose the modes before you yeah. choose your discard, so... Good call on that. Yeah, okay. Well, I take it back, Heidi. I apologize. Yeah, I mean that's the thing is like I you know there's I you know I had a deck recently on one of the online ones that like it hums when it hums. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And but the you know the the issue is is like sometimes what do the cards do individually on their own? You know. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's why I'm really big on multifaceted cards. Like I discovered Moonsnare prototype as another co- thing when you have Urza, it's another thing that lets you tap down Winter Lord. Now, that card by itself would suck if not for the fact that you can also uh, channel it to put a card on top or bottom of their deck, right? So that allows it to work that extra. What if I get it and it works this way? That's great. When I get it, it works this way, it's great. But by itself, just another way to tap down Winter Orb is like, okay, whatever. That's not that great, right? But the the fact that it channels it makes it pushes it up for me, right? Okay. Absolutely. It's uh, that's why I think you know a Turok Dread Canter is a lot better than its average draft pick or. Sure. Um, it's representation because, you know, worst case scenario, it's just like a little one, two shit kicker. Yeah, it's like a two, one lifelink or whatever. Or, yeah, whatever. Uh, but <laughs> there is some tremendous upside that, right. you know, so with Bowser just got pushed. No one's creature. He's got the GTA out, but it's got to carry something. Um, they're both sitting pretty at man. They both have one or two cards in hand. I don't know what's in hand. Is that a, oh, I thought that was a howling mine. Like, wait, I don't think anybody should have drafted that. Oh, uh, that I mean, like that's another uh, Winter Orb. Rays. It's another Winter Orb style card. Right. Mm, delicious. Oh, we're going full beat down now. Street race beat down. Damn. Uh, we're going to cycle. We're just going to be like, hey, let's do. Oh, that, that's good. That's very good. Uh, she, uh, she can play the land and cast it. She, she hasn't played the land yet, has she? No, she played one to cycle. Okay. Oh, she'll take three. Uh, yeah. She'll take three from the Jeet. That's fine. All right. And the problem here is not that she took three. It's the Jeet counters, to be honest. Yeah. Because yes. 
now the solitude dies when she cast it. Yeah. What are the questions uh, I asked? Uh, nope. Going, nope. Path, beautiful. Well, she can. The I mean, it still so will, but because, yeah. yeah, she can still. Um, Jeet, the, the the only thing that matters for Jeet for being equipped is the plus two plus two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is going to be a, a very nice turn, which is you know if Mike is able to drop a Kess uh, is gone, I believe. I don't think Kess is yet. No, it was last game. Okay. Um, whatever threat he drops, Merc Tide, Kess, whatever. Yeah, whatever it is is going away, and then so are the counters on, right. on uh, on the jit. Say jit, I say jite. <laughs> oh, that you just like you just like you drew it up, my friend. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what you want. I mean, that's the fantasy right there. In your fantasy, dream about me. A little Carly Ray for you. Okay, so Mike is leaving up a steam vents and a blood crypt. Uh, I don't know, maybe more. He, he's to equip. I mean, he untapped it. Uh, he tapped a bunch and then untapped some. He's figuring out his delve. So yeah, does he have any cards in hand? Yes, right. there's one under his right hand. Yeah, it's that's one. the reason why I asked because the only piece of interaction that I think uh, Flusterstone doesn't even do it because it's instants or sorceries. It's gonna flash in. Oh, yep, he's he doesn't have it. Wow. I'm surprised that yeah, he's got uh, at least two cards in hand there. I, I feel like a drown in the lock would have been a good for him. Yeah, I, drown in lock's oh, been a yeah. card that I have when I drafted it. It sucks, and when other people draft it, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny how that ha- yeah. how that happens? Yeah, when I draft it, they never have enough stuff in their yard when I want it. So yeah, and yep. Listen, look at us. We're just calling these things like crazy. That one was pretty. All right, so we got some Darian and Dan up next. She draw the looks like drew like a creature of some type there. Comes down. Oh, oh Arcana of America. Not, a, I mean, the land, the land parts are relevant at this point, but the slow it's, one spell per turn. And it's about. bolted. One spell per turn. No, 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 Bolt the that. bird. That, that was the one spell that mattered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bobble. And, ooh, it's a magic card. It is. It's good that they're not playing with Pokemon cards. Hmm. That's illegal. Oh, but it's a Lurus. That. That's a juicy and voluptuous. <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah, M- Mike's toast. Yeah, Dahlia comes back, and I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's. I I one. don't think I don't know that that's the right one. Did you do abolisher? Uh, I mean it's one of the two. If you tap differently, it could have been both. Yeah. That's yeah. True. Oh, there's ancestral recall in hand. Yeah, that's brutal. Dread bore into ancestral. Yeah, STI, that's 100%. Like, I've been, like, you've kicked my ass with that card. But, like, every time I cast the card, yeah. I, just, I get my teeth kicked in. Like, it's like, no, they don't have what I need. That's also because wow. you draft a lot of considers. and ooh, that's Even cool. with a Thalia on board, just Dreadbore, Ancestral, Darcy, Equip. I mean, she's got removal. I mean, we, we haven't, we've seen, well, we've seen Swords, we've seen Path, we've seen Solitude. We haven't seen Vanishing Verse yet. No. I'm trying to think what else she, does she have that can... I mean, right also, the, the life totals here are still 17 and 12. This is this game is not... is is not ending imminently. All right, so, oh, we're good. You know, we're heading oh, on. she has the... That, that Thalia is still on board, right? Yeah. She's no, got, don't tap it. She, she connived with it. You can fog the GT with Caracas and Thalia. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's legit. But she still has Caracas. Yes. And the, cel- yeah. the spell was successfully cast because there was no blue mana right. involved. She, so. she had to pay one more for the... He pointed out she needed to pay one more for the Thalia. She pitched a land. She So, that, again, that's the power of that connive, is that it's like, hey... Uh, oh, oh, are we getting caracas We're going to Caracas the cast back. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, is that like, yeah, it's like I, I get to draw a card. Okay, it's a land. I don't need a land. And I'm just going to get rid of well, that land. Well, this, uh, this Thalia is about to get bolted. Before the, yeah. Yeah, before it can get bounced. Yeah, priority. I mean, or fatal push. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Both I, are in the yard. Right. Uh, so, you know, if you're, if you're Mike in this situation, 
Which one of those are you using? You're using the fatal push, right? I'm using the push. And he does. Yeah. Oh, I thought Cass just triggered in the upkeep. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Cass it's is once straight, during your once turn. Your turn, and if it's yep. an instant, it's an instant. Yep. It's a, yep. it's, it's a, it's brutal. I don't like that Mike doesn't play with his hand <laughs> out. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna kick that bitch along. One, two, two, three, three. We've got three counters. So it's gonna be a six four. You know what? That's pretty juicy. Six four life linker. I mean but he can read yeah. so but there's cast in a dreadboard. Yeah, he can play the cast in the dreadboard. At some point, he's he's gonna run out of stuff in the graveyard. I mean, seventeen is 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 a relevant number. Yeah, but DRS can nibble. I mean, it can nibble for sure. Uh, is it? Oh, I guess yeah. I mean, with with yeah, Jit, right. and then yeah. okay, yeah, Ledger Shredder. That, that, that three. I mean, even if she can bounce the cast all she yeah. wants. It doesn't do anything at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that 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 we're at ouchy times. As we were bemusing earlier, it's Gta that's going to take it home. You just start pumping. Yeah. I like I'm saying, man. I understand the uh, the compulsion to draft draft stuff like Arkham's Astrolabe and like blah 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 blah. Uh, but they don't do anything on their own. They and cards like Gta do. I I straight be honest. If I don't have an Urza, I'm not. I agree. Like Urza, yeah, hundred percent. The card's ridiculous. You know, I mean, but if out there, there's or, or Urza and Oko. Those are the ones that correct. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like Pintad Prism. Like yeah. Pintad Prism's fine with Oko Pintad, and Urza Pintad Prism and Monastery insane. Mentor and, and, and right. Brain Freeze. There's, like all these dumb. There's cards things. that push those things forward, yeah. but like outside of those, it's just a draw card. Yeah. And yeah, this is retirement mode here. Um, if he's, he can just pump and kill. Yeah, point. and so I believe uh, this takes Mike to uh, 3-0. Um, I think he's still got a bolt in the yard, Hill. I think he can still burn her to the face. Yeah. I mean, he's not even going to be greedy. He doesn't have to be greedy and pump. It's like, he's just going to... Yeah. Yeah, hey, he's uh, yeah. all right, I pump him. You know. And the hand is extended, and we move. All right, I'm going to be back. I'm going to step out for a few moments, stretch out, grab right. some water. Uh, do you want to switch so I can go pee real quick? Yeah, yeah I'll let you go first. <laughs> I've had too many beers already. I it is. That's why I need some water. <laughs> it is early. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the great Did thing about St. Lotus is, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of beer. Mm -hmm. Darian and Dan are up next. All right, Darian and Dan is our next match. So Storm versus Lands. And uh, we shall see where they fall on the old records. Um. So one of the things I, I was asking about the, when I came down to uh, the VRD last time was how well tribal decks work. Like, what are the most common tribes that do well? And I think the answer was that merfolk and... Goblins tend to do well so we because see each of their their cards are worth more than they are as individuals. They do much more. They're more synergistic. All right, we've seen goblins a couple times. Uh, or yeah. we, once in VRD, once in MRD. Um, yep. It was Mason online, but the combo conspicuous snoop with goblins makes it yep. crazier, right? Yes. But like, I also don't know if just anyone can come pick up that deck because the lines I saw Mason win with through hate were amazing, right? Like, mm -hmm. it was easy to hate out, but Mason won through all the hate because he knew the lines backwards and forwards. Okay. Um, Merfolk plays really well, especially if you've got any, you know, it's, it's a tempo thing. I went four and three with blue-white humans. Um, and I think that, I think humans is legit, uh, particularly like blue-white. I had meddling mage. I had um, uh, b -b 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 scheming, scheming fence, Things mm -hmm. like that. 
So like the disruption plan and the fact you can get spell pierce and the similar, it basically plays similar to Merfolk, right? Yeah, the tempo game. Right. Um, yep. I, I've been tinkering with a green-white humans list that is really fast. Um, oh, okay. And I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to debut it in a Discord at some point probably. Um, it is pretty ridiculously fast, but it loses out on the disruption that the blue-white has. Okay. So, yeah, you're trading off the ability to play a more tempo-oriented game and establish yourself right. for a mid- to late-game play. Then. For a lot quicker and a little more card draw, honestly, because you get, like, the uh, the werewolf human that when you when one of your creatures... Dan it's six creature, a power of creature attack, you draw a card, things like that, right? Okay, yes, yeah. Um, so I think those three are probably the three that you most want to be looking at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as I said, I... I went. I had time. I took. I first picked time walk just because I wanted to, and I went four and you know like, and I had Snapcaster. So like, I went four and three with time walk humans with Snapcaster, you know, blue mm -hmm. and you know it was nice. Like, like I was just like, oh cool. Here's you know the spell pierce or the swords, and now I'm gonna Snapcaster the swords, and you know vile was good. Um, yeah. You know, Vile's still risky no matter what, just because you're looking at, you know, when you have it in early hand, it's amazing. When you draw it later, you're like, why did I draw this? <laughs> yeah. It's also an artifact accelerant, and that's the entire format, so... It depends on the draft. I mean, like, we've been seeing less and less. There's so much hate for artifact that, you mm -hmm. know, like, I we have been seeing, le you know, more and more drafts that, like, the artifact deck just doesn't show up. So, yeah. therefore, the artifact hate just doesn't show up as much. There's always a little okay. bit, but... So, yeah, uh, yeah, you're always going to get splashed out, like, you know. We, uh, I've gotten word from Jason that uh, he, in three matches, he has yet to get to, well, he's only once gotten to more than two lands in a 19 land deck. Yeah, well, yeah. Oof. I, and my only response to that was, shuffle better, dude. Play yeah. mocks. <laughs> play, play a mox. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good times. All right, so we got Heidi versus Jason here. Uh, O2 versus O3. Did you need to yeah, hydrate? Need you, you can... Uh, I got one we need the okay. the overlay is reversed so as well yeah. for the players. Uh, okay. Um, Heidi's on the right. Uh, I will oh. make Mark do it. Okay. <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, they need to reverse oh. Heidi Jason. Here, just pick them up and make them go to the other side of the table. Yeah, just. Could you please? There's your hex drinker. Now, Hex Drinker is base what? Is it a base? It's base 2-1. Uh, Hex Drinker, more like Hex Stinker, because it's gone. Goodbye. How sad. What a day for Hex Drinker. Kytheon just keeps trucking in until he has two more friends. And then they, and uh, yeah, if they... Uh, if, uh, Kytheon and two others attack uh, at end of combat. Flip it. Yep. Into the tireless tracker, huh? Uh, Alicia, who smiles at death. An old border version. Interesting. Yeah. Alicia's an interesting card. So it's, again, an does attack bring, trigger. You, does it bring back three or less or two or less? Two or less. Okay. That's, so... Yeah, it's a bit messy when you look at the list because there are a lot of threes and fours, but there's still some very powerful cards. It brings back mom. Up. It brings back. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Uh, was that oh, Mom Vuli Acid Moss? Okay. Okay, so. We acid moss the, the plains yeah, instead of the cavern. Huh? So we had Liliana the Veil, and then yes. Jeff plays Time Vault, and yes. then Oko is played to turn Time Vault into a creature to be sacked, made sack with Liliana the Veil. Oh. <laughs> All right. BRD. B BRD, baby. Uh, you know, I believe that the Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo MD tokens were originally used for the first time as tireless tracker tokens. Really? I believe so. So as the treasure tokens? 
uh, as, the, as, yeah. uh, as the uh, clue tokens. Clue tokens. Yeah. So when Jason drafted the Tireless Tracker, I was going to ask you how you felt about the little tracker, the one from Modern Horizons. The uh, Tireless um, Provisioner? Provisioner, yeah. I think it's great. It's it's another way to go infinite. I think uh, a fast bond deck, for example, should mm-hmm. be playing both of those cards as integral components to it. Uh, okay. It doesn't quite have the legs. Thank you. Because it doesn't get bigger, right? It just yeah, correct. So in that way, it doesn't have the legs that Tireless Tracker does, and you know, card draw is not quite the same. But it uh, it does allow you to go infinite better. Uh, with you know something like a boro, um, for example, um, so I I like both of them a lot. Uh, I think tireless provisioner is kind of underdrafted, and that you know uh, as opposed to like a terravore, Jason would have liked a tireless provisioner a lot better. Okay, well that's why I asked because provisioner reads like a great card, but I wasn't sure overall how it fits within the format because it does not get bigger. It doesn't get bigger. Um, but you're not re like if your other piece gets taken offline, if mm-hmm. you play that and then in response, they blow up a fast bond. Um, and it's just sitting out there. Mm-hmm. That's kind of, uh, the same context as uh, mostly the same context as tireless tracker. Uh, yeah. but if it's on board and you have the fast bond in play to do your stuff, you're going infinite anyways. Okay. So, um, whether it's attack, like there is definitely upside, but, uh, yeah, attacking for three versus attacking for an escalating mount just changes your clock and, uh, you know, changes your reliance on the other creatures, uh, in your deck. If you've yeah. got a tireless tracker, you don't necessarily have to have a questing beast. Whereas with a provisioner, you still, you know, if somebody else for yeah. whatever reason drafted the tracker, you don't have to support it yeah. in that way. I also thought the fact that it make, made or makes food and treasures, which don't help you churn through your deck, might be a detractor for either certain strategies or the format on the whole, which is, again, another reason why Tire- I asked him. Tireless Tracker wins you the game faster. Tireless Provisioner keeps you alive in the game for longer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so we've got Nissa who shakes the earth, who personally is in my top five Planeswalkers in the format. Uh hitting and dropping uh just pooping out a little three three haste vigilance because that's fair just yep. every turn three three haste vigilance uh, that, that can indestructible then, uh only after you ult the the minus eight ability is lands you control uh have indestructible vigilance okay i knew that part i thought the uh and yavimea it's a good combo i wasn't sure that jason actually drafted it um because we were talking oh. about the Urborg Yavimea, but oh, you missed it! Uh, game one, turn one of the entire event, Jason went Yavimea into Arbor Elf. Lived the dream. That's that's how God intended. I think he could have just hung it up there. Yeah. Just <laughs> called it a day. Pack it in. Uh, is this the Magnivore? Uh, I don't know what this card is. It's a red card, that's for sure. Uh, you know what? I believe it. It's what. Oh, it's Wildfire. Uh, oh. It is the uh, Modern Masters 2 Wildfire art. Why does it have an old border? Maybe they recycled that art for... Yeah, uh, fair enough. They've done some, uh, you know, silly stuff on uh, Cockatrice or whatever, wherever it is that... Uh, mm-hmm. I Man... I don't know about you, but when I play on Cockatrice, I absolutely hate that they use the old border planeswalker thing. Oh, I yeah. Those. It's the worst thing in the fucking world. I was just like, I'm never drafting this card on, um, on so Discord drafts. There is, for anybody listening who plays on Cockatrice, I forget exactly where in the menus. It's not a deep dive, but it's there. The ability to, deter- to set a, a priority order for set art which for, is by the way a terrible system yes for all all cards so i don't know if i still have cockatrice in this computer or not but like i put alpha beta unlimited and, and revised like at the top so that's where all my basics and my bolts and stuff live and then i've like 
spend hours of my life reordering <laughs> things to make sure I didn't get like secret layer art and all this other crap. Uh, you know what? Like that's that's absolutely fair. I would still hate to get the alpha beta text for a lot of cards that are still relevant in VRD. Oh yeah, for VRD, I yeah. imagine it, that's an absolute crapshoot. I was default, just playing modern on there, so I'm playing like to, primeval titans and stuff, you know. Yeah, default to a printing between 2007 and 2018. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, exactly. We got, we got uh, Jason uh, getting up to alt range with uh, the Nissa, and we got Eric in the booth just ripping curls with this two and a Eight half, two curls? pound dumbbell. Don't give me that half pound. Oh, okay. It's two. It's two pounds only. It's this little tiny. Listen, little man. Big weight. Sorry, the the may the way you were just cranking them out made me think that like <laughs> that's not how that works. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I've got to say. <laughs> I was joking earlier. Uh, I was trying to embellish the amount of uh, Budweiser's that I've consumed. And I was like, I drink it all day. I don't have a problem. And I was like, kind of like a little bit loud with that. <laughs> and then Mark's like, my child is in that room <laughs> taking a nap th- that you're yelling immediately next to. And I was like, okay, well, I'm, like, I'm going to go do my job. Now. The, the official <laughs> young person of VRD is yes. in that room. Yeah. <laughs> There's an even younger one. That's true. They just, you know what? These days, they just keep printing new stuff. Yeah. And it's just. It's ridiculous. Yeah. This wildfire was absolutely devastating. It, just, and I, it doesn't feel good, but an Aether Vial feels like a very good way out of it, potentially. I mean, when yes. you've got all those Nissa tokens on board. It's just been. Oh, uh, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. right, mediocre over. draw after a mediocre yeah, draw for it's, Heidi. It, it's, it's just over. been a slog. Yeah, Jason could ult, but honestly, you just plus one, and that's Exaxes, right? No, it's not. Do you give any thought to popping the Kythe in here, just clearing the blocker out? I, that's what I would do. So it looks like Jason went to the well and got a land back here. Oh, all right, we're we're in destructible mode. Yep, putting those putting those uh, three three lands and indestructible, just getting as many forests as Jason feels like getting out of his deck here with the Nissa ult. Did they come in tapped? You're the Nissa expert, Brandon. Um, yeah, they I've come never needed tapped. to use the ult. <laughs> Rude. If I have, it's just been for flavor. Thank yeah, you. you get any number of forests and put them in a play tapped and shuffle your library. Yes, they. Yeah. Okay. Uh. I'm glad Peter knows things. <laughs> well, I have Moxfield up. I once, literally just read. <laughs> well, see, you know, once the Nissa hits here. the board, right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> your opponent either scoops or is in for a world of hurt. I to play you know what? I can't tell you all the the text on. Karn liberated, mm. and why is that? Because it usually induces a scoop. Uh, let's see. Plus I four Karn- opponent ex- exiles a card from their hand. Minus their hand, three yeah. exile target permanent. Yeah. Uh, and minus 10 uh, start the game over with, with all, all cards perm- exiled. All cards exiled, exiled with Karn under play, yeah. and play under your control. Or all yeah. permanents exiled Speaking with Karn. Speaking of permanents, it looks like Jason has gotten an Elder Gargaroth down, a card that I know Darian talked about targeting during the draft, but uh, mm-hmm. Jason's the one who ended up with it here, and he's going to swing yes. in with this 3-3 Mountain here, but it's got Vigilance. See, nice. the, the thing is, with Jason's Ooh, with deck too. is that, like, at no point was the Ponza idea ever better than just going with highly efficient creatures in green, like Elder Gargaroth and Questing Beast and a Hex Drinker, and just leaning straight into the value that you get out of those cards. So you're saying yeah. you would have gone the Bloodbraid Elf route with uh, with Jason's seat here? Oh, uh, 100 fucking percent. <laughs> I mean, especially because Jason... Ooh. Jason was there in a are, seat where, like, he could really capitalize on that. He he talked about yeah. dra- like picking Sylvan Library as early as second round, and I'm mm-hmm. like, why? It just never made sense to me. Uh, he pivoted from one plan to another and ended up on Ponza. I think the Sylvan Library was a pivot, and then he pivoted away, but stuck with Sylvan. I'd be executing a lethal scheme here on Jason's Elder Gargaroth, uh, conniving <laughs> on that Kythian after. Uh, convoking with it pretty cool card that, that Heidi picked up here in this draft uh I I concur um it was not on my radar and uh 
thanks to Heidi, it now is. It seems like a very effective uh, value removal piece. Yeah, if you are playing a significant number of creatures, especially if enough of them are black to help with the black mana, I think it's very strong. Ooh, it looks like that's the end for Aether Vial here. And oh, that's the end for... I think that's the end for Heidi and, yeah. and her friends. Yeah. So we're just going to click. Bring up the old Moxfield. Not that. We're going to click that. Uh, Blink, bring up Moxfield. Go ahead and take us to Moxfield deck lists. And then do me a favor and hit the studio mode button over here. I will click that button. Yeah, and then click gameplay. And now, when we're ready to transition, we can press this button. But Ooh. not yet. All right. So this is not this is Mike's list. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's minimize go this one. Through this yeah. right here. Perfect. Uh. Heidi has a lot of good cards in the sideboard. This is the one. Okay, I think that's, so, yeah, that's Jason's list here. And here is uh, the Nissa with all the text that uh, we want. What card in particular are we looking Let's at? Let's take a look at uh, uh, Jason's sideboard here, see what he's got coming in for this uh, this matchup. Interesting. Avacyn's Pilgrim out of the sideboard. Uh, okay, so... I think Fury... She does have Loris, but do we really care? No. I think Fury is okay. coming in. I think the Mox Pearl is almost certain to come in. I don't know if we've talked about Jason's predicament here uh, earlier in the stream, but he was telling me a minute ago that he forgot to put Mox Pearl into his deck before he played his first match on camera. And at that point, well, he was kind of locked in. So Mox Pearl lives in his sideboard, unfortunately. Uh, Yike Ruskies. Um, he could bring in the Mountain Goat. Uh, you know what? He could bring in a lot. He could bring in 14 cards. <laughs> uh Let's Look, see. Mountain Goat is relevant. Mountain I goat. mean, no, it's still not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it walks right over that Savai Triome, that Badlands. Uh, the two mountains. With, yep. You know what? Oh, my God, I've got a great idea. Let's bring in the Forge Mystic and, and an equipment. Oh. Oh, no. It was a bad idea. Uh, oh, Lion Sash, the only equipment. Uh, yeah. Uh, so... I think we're likely think, to see Fury. We may see Endurance just as a 3-4 Flash creature here. I th Thoughtseize I think might also be a look. Well, so this is in, this is an interesting point that you bring up. Uh, because Endurance is a... Against this particular deck is a very good way to like have those edge case wins against Lurus. Uh, but also, like, 3-4 Reach is... Very relevant in this matchup. Flash. Right. Heidi's got the elite spellbinder, 3-1. Yeah. Heidi's got a lot of 3-3s. Three the general Kudro pumping up a lot of two-power creatures to three-power. Endurance does a lot of work in this matchup. Yeah, I think yeah. that that's a great, great choice. Um, and uh, other than that, I don't think that Heidi has enough or any flash. We've so got, uh, We've got uh, Dan up 1-0 going into game two with... Um, Viviano and uh, Mason and um, Darian are starting game three um, with currently Darian has two um, Urza Saga tokens so Ooh. going at it so he's going a little aggressive with some Urza beaters and they're going in game three so. Urza Saga not legendary just, just putting it out there in case you just made an assumption Squad. The old uh, Enchantment Land Urza Saga. Hey, guys, did you know that Skyclave Apparition doesn't have flying? Skyclave Apparition is one, on a, one of a long list of cards with art flying, uh, which yeah. dates back to Whippoorwill from the dark. Not a good keyword. <laughs> Wait, no. uh, Frozen Shade? Doesn't Ooh, that have art that's flying? That's true. Actually, Frozen Shade is the original art flying card. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, it also has this weird... Uh, switch in rules text where for one black it gets plus one plus one period. Yes. Plus but then later on that's only until end of turn. Yeah. <laughs> Mighty dropping the uh, the Caracas early here. Not going to do a whole lot against Jason other uh, than provide white mana. Jason dropping the Birds of Paradise. Heidi is unable to bolt it but will play Thalia Guardian of Thraben. Going to go ahead and tax Jason's future non-land drops or non-creature drops here. And Jason looks to be immediately paying the tax for Fertile Ground. Mm -hmm. You know what? 
Not a bad choice. I'm going to say it. No, not at all. Jason getting quite far ahead on mana here. Heidi will drop that Savai Triome here. I bet Jason regrets not bringing in that Mountain Goat. <sighs> you know what? And that's General's Enforcer here for Heidi, making her legendary humans indestructible, swinging in with Thalia for two. That's r real saucy. That's a Sausalito yeah. cookie right there. I didn't know that card existed. General's Enforcer, a deep cut from, from the days of Ikoria. A deep, a deep pandemic set. Oh, yeah, that's why. As opposed hey. to the current pandemic, which I think CDC General. is classified as a light pandemic. Is this monkeypox? No, just no. COVID. I'm immune. I, I'm immune. I can't. I've I've had a girlfriend who had it, and was we were, we were cohabitating. I just just test negative all 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 darn day. Nice life. Yeah. Uh oh, a utopia sprawl. Jason paying two for this utopia sprawl here with his fertile ground mountain. So we've got four mana available. That is not enough for Anissa, but just enough for a questing beast. Jason trying very hard to show us what color he named, but uh, I could not read his boogie board. Could you? Don't don't no. care. I'm no. just going to assume that if he taps for the correct number, it's the correct number. I'm sure. I'm sure Heidi will keep him honest. Meanwhile, Jason dropping the, oh. the reliquary here, which is a great threat. No lands in the graveyard currently, but that will change. Uh, yeah. That's great against that Thalia. Oh, so Jason has to rotate through plains and forests, correct? That is the requirement on Night of the Reliquary? I believe you have to sacrifice a plains or a forest, and then you can go get whatever the heck you want. Yeah, it's pretty juicy and voluptuous. Yeah, except when your only forest and or plains is enchanted with Utopia Sprawl. <laughs> Jason uh, will show us his hand off of this uh, elite spellbinder here, and Paolo sees one Vuli Acid Moss, Renin Six, and Clothis. You know what, Repsart? You've got a good point. That's <laughs> <laughs> in retrospect, uh, maybe that's not how he should have tapped his friggin' mana. But it, look, it was what was available at the time, and this Acid Moss is going to help a smidge, right? So, uh, well, Acid Moss is now being put in the Elite Spellbinder oh, so Bad the elite Boy Zone. Own. So now it's going to cost not just two, but three more thanks three? to the Thalia. That's going to be a seven mana uh, Acid Moss should Jason what? choose three, to snap that six. off. I mean, we're, we're just one lonely mana away, right? He's very close to blowing up that presumably either Savai Triome or Caracas here. Uh, boy. Boy, howdy. Uh... Yeah, I mean, like th this is a this is an interesting board state. It's a very precarious board state. It mm -hmm. could, it, yeah. you know what? This quest stands on the edge of a knife, stray but a little. That's a basic, and it's a basic planes. Basic planes, definitely what uh, Jason is looking for. Monvuli Acid Moss taking out the is... Caracas here. Wow. Wow. Oh, because because she can protect her own yep. stuff. And now Jason goes to get a forest card. So and now we are on the Renin Six. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Heidi is still incentivized to to swing out here because that way she can make Kythian indestructible for three mana, and then go ahead and flip that post combat into the Gideon Planeswalker that it becomes. Yeah. But, but the Rick in hand but makes this a more interesting question. Also, that Gideon isn't very good. It's an okay Gideon. Uh, I, mm, ah, bah, bah, bah. Can we bring it up to read the backside? Yeah, let's do that. Um, I honestly forgot what it is. Out of all the Origins walkers, I played exactly one of them. Uh, was that Baby Jays? It, it absolutely yeah. was. Just click the click this. I, this. I, Baby Jays really helped convoke the flames. I'll tell you what. And untapping that card with Jeskai Ascendancy is just chef's kiss. So, listen, I, I completely understand why uh, you would play Kytheon, because it's a one drop. Yeah. And it turns into this? Great. This one, sometimes it's a 4-4. Four, four. I mean, if you're mm -hmm. ahead, here's the thing. If you're ahead enough to attack with Kytheon, you're usually going to be ahead enough to turn it into a 4-4 four, four for zero. I, yeah, I respect your position. I, you yeah. know what? And it it's, looks like Heidi respects my position as well because it turns out it's her board position. And she's going to go ahead and post-combat flip Kivian into Gideon Battleforged. Uh, yeah, we're doing that before 
before damage? No, you you can't. It doesn't flip until after. Yeah, so how does, it's over. how is it living? Because you can pay three to make it indestructible. Here, let's flip oh, back okay. to the other side. And for three for for the low, low price of two generic three. and one white. Also Kytheon, known as literally all of Heidi's mana. Kytheon gains indestructible mm -hmm. until her turn. But Jason is at a precarious six here. See, here's my thing. Why 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 draft pawns and stuff when you can just draft good creatures? Well, if you like good creatures, Jason's got uh, uh, Clothis in his hand. Uh, oh, and he's also representing uh, Dark Death. He's representing a yep. Merit Late Token on board. Yes. Yes. So there's a, there's also a Ren and Six in hand. So that'll take care of the Thalia, presumably. Yep. yep. And, Ren well, and Six going to bring down Elite Spellbinder here. Oh, Jason. Maybe yep, Jason. Yeah. Okay. Either one. Elite Spellbinder, 3-1. Three one's good to don't good you to snipe out of the don't sky. you cast another goddamn thing, Jason? Oh, you bringing it up? Don't cast. Well, Jason can tap his dark depths using his uh, his Yavamaya for mana. Ooh, Swifty bringing up a good question. Brandon, are crabs good creatures? Crabs are everything. Eventually, evolves into crabs. Yes, because you start off with. I don't know, let's say a Ragavan or like a Hex Drinker, and you're like, wow, these cards are really, really good. And then you're like, well, if I'm going to pay one mana, wouldn't I rather get it? And then you just eventually draft Crabs. Yeah. But there's only two of them, so that's why you have to draft other cards. This is a this is a legitimate uh, evolutionary you, process that Brandon is bringing yes. up, by the way. It's Car Carcina, Carcina Carcinogen Carcinogenesis. Yes, there we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, eventually... If a underwater population, uh, underwater species, uh, exists at a certain depth over enough millions of years, they will eventually evolve into a into having a crab-like form because mm -hmm. uh, it withstands pressure and it withstands heat, and they're delicious and they mill your opponent's library. A separate example of this is most trees um, well, always been... become crabs. <laughs> yeah, all trees become. <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. Uh, looks like is that Killian Ink Duelist coming down here? Looks like Killian. Yes. I. So Heidi doesn't have a flyer. Not currently. No. Why didn't Jason Dark Depths? Jason can't. Right. He could have. Oh, he could have. He could have gone and gotten stage with. Uh, yeah. With mm, Reliquary. I don't know. Still can. Is this There's still Heidi's play? turn? Is this still Heidi's turn? Yes. Yeah, oh. but he can't. Yes, activate. he can because he has City of Brass and Birds, and Yavamaya, and three blockers. Jason was set okay. pretty well set for this turn. You yep, know so. what? I'm so sorry, Jason. Jason dropping to five, turning his Thespian stage off that Knight of the Reliquary into and a Council's Judgment that is at sorcery speed. And Council's Judgment not going to do it, and Jason's going to pick this one up yep. to oh. So uh, Jason goes 1-3. He's well on... You know what? Listen, there's a lot of things you can say about Jason. Uh, you cannot say that Jason isn't self-aware. He's very, very on track to go the 2-5 and five that he predicted for himself. That's right. Unlike every other person in this draft who predicted themselves to go... 6-1. To, to predict themselves to go at least 5-2. and two. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Jeff did predict 5-2 and two because that is his traditional record. Yes. I mean, with Jeff, I believe it. I uh, Mason predicted himself to go seven and zero, uh, and I, I think that his deck against this field, uh, it there's never been a better shot to go seven and zero. But at the same time, uh, it's Mason. He's gonna lose a match, he's and he's gonna be very frustrated by it. Everybody loses a match sometime. I, I predicted. I, I predicted him at six one. Well, we'll see. I'm gonna head I, out. Y'all have fun. You leaving? Yeah, we're heading out. All right. Well, enjoy your time uh, yeah. with your wife. Um, finally being back. Uh, thank you for joining me in the booth. I appreciate it. Thank I've, you both for having me. And it was uh, a wonderful time. Yeah, we're we're gonna cube in sometime in the next couple weeks. Oh, brother, uh, your mm -hmm. cube or my cube? Either way is fine. Alrighty, I I. Uh, I think Jason's bringing back the last of the staples for it. Nice, nice, So nice. it'll just be 
exclusively powerless. But Doesn't matter to me as long as we queue. Cool. Okay. So, yeah. what do we have coming up? Do we know? Uh, we don't know. Uh, I am in the booth by myself. Um, uh-huh. So, let's switch it on over to... <sighs> Mason drops to Darian. Mason drops what? To Darian. Mason drops to Darian. I look very drunk. I'm you do. You do. But I'm going to need you to take, you it. take this for a bit. All right. You go do. Is Sam still? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. I think she just dropped off your stuff and split. I thought she so, loved me. I thought she did too, but you know. You she told me she loved me, so that's okay. <sighs> <sighs> well, you know. It took the good, you take the bad. I'm going to get the bad. Okay. You take the both, and there you have it. Yeah. Facts of life. The facts of what? The facts of life. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did Darian deal with the Kiki Jiki plan or the Splinter Twin plan? I, I, I didn't. All I came in on game three when, it, as I said, Darian had two Urza's tokens, and it looked like he yep. was just doing a little bit of a beatdown. Um, so I think that got there. Um, I don't know if maybe. I mean, the one thing I'll say for his blue list is that he had Brazen Borrower and Cryptic, but mm-hmm. I didn't see a lot of other bounce. Right, like I think the really good like blue list is going to have a little more bounce to deal with something that does. You have to deal with what resolves. Yeah, he had Vincer too. I guess he has plenty. Maybe yeah. he just bad draws. Right, yeah, I mean, Mason has a lot of bounce. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's just going to happen. Like yeah. just bad draws, right? Yeah. So he just had yeah. the bad draws. Um. All right. Uh, Darian is good among Murlocs. <laughs> yeah, god, that's fair. Is a good among Murlocs. Not a god, a good. Yeah, a okay. good. But also, thank you for the first time chat, Thunderpants. Yeah. So, Jason, we were trying to figure out what you were going to bring in against uh, Heidi. We, we we discussed the Mox Pearl and we discussed discussed Fury, and I brought up the ability for a Mountain Goat to do some work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I haven't cited a Mountain Goat yet uh, because nice. Mark didn't print it, and I haven't had time to go out to my car to get one yet because he didn't want to print it if I had one in my car. So okay, it's, it's it. there. It's just not there yet. Uh, yeah, the the Mox Pearl. So we're sitting there doing deck construction and everything. We uploaded on Mox Field, and I separated everything out basically. Like here are you know creatures, whatever. Threw a bunch of stuff in the sideboard that weren't creatures, uh, yep. lands, or enchantments. Mages and mentors, thank you for and the then was putting stuff back in that I wanted to use because I knew what creatures, enchantments, and lands I wanted to have in. And Mark yep. goes, hey, we want to get someone on camera. And I didn't finish my list. I just jumped at the chance. So Mox Pearl stayed in my sideboard. And it's Got just it. been boarded in every single game. This is a likely story for a bad play. <laughs> yeah. I, <it's, laughs> I, mistakes were made. Uh, I also don't think my draft pack two was as disciplined as it should have been. I could Especially that. towards the tail end of pack one. I got distracted by a lot of two-card Montes. Yeah. Uh, Leyline Hill yes. doesn't matter. Yeah. You didn't need the... Uh, or the rip. Uh, I... Should not have gone Stoneforge no. Sash. I should have just stuck with Scoos on that uh, and picked the Bog. Because having Reclaimer and Knight is enough that I can get Bog at instant speed, plus Scoos is yes. just an efficient... Sash is really good if you have enough white mana, because Sash gets bigger off any permanent, where Scoos only gets it off creatures. Yeah. Right? Uh, uh, so that's legit. That's what we're wearing. We're wearing the Adidas slides, not the Crocs. Sorry. But... Uh, Oh, there we go. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, I've got Wonder Woman chucks. On. Heck yes, Wonder Woman. I yeah. can't see him because I'm old and I can't get my leg that high. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm fucking old man river at this draft. Yeah, right. <laughs> like Eric, I often confuse. Like there's a thing in judging that's funny is where you think that a lot of judges are older than they are. Like I've thought Eric was older than me my whole life as a judge, but now Eric's like. Eight years younger than me. Yeah, no. yeah. I think like, the only judge that's actually older than me at this point are like Sheldon and like Steven Zwanger, and they're older than everybody. Yeah, so. basically. <laughs> uh, we have Max up on uh, okay. up ready to draft. Where do we go to gameplay scene? Gameplay scene. All right. Uh, gameplay. There we go. Okay, so we've got Max at one and two. Max took on Blyden. Um, I, I brought in some of the sauciness that happened there, where Blyden <laughs> Max drops Liliana. Blyden drops. Uh, uh, time Vault, Max drops Oko, turns the Blyden yep. into an Elk, and then makes him sack it. Yeah. And then the next turn duresses Blyden for a yeah. little further insult. Yeah. Uh, 
And then Dan rolling at 3 0. So, Dan, as I said, Dan drafted this deck like the last time he drafted this deck. I was his only, or he had two wins, yeah. or no, one win. It was me. Yeah. And he only won that off a top deck. Like, literally, yeah. he was dead the next turn and he top decked the card he needed. Uh, evidently, whatever he, he decided, I that was not a good showing of this deck. Yeah. I, I want did. vengeance. And he has a showing so far. I told him to his face earlier. I do not like your deck. I think this is a bad deck. I think this and is he's the gonna kick best me in the dick. storm list we have seen at St. Lotus by far. Okay. And it is not particularly close. Uh, he's doing very well, obviously. Uh, well, I mean, it's just a hell of a player. I mean, yeah, he, he is. Yeah. Especially with this archetype, this is his jam. Right. He loves breach combo. Uh, he's, you know, like so, me and But whatever and weaknesses stuff. he had, and one of those weaknesses he said was he missed the Tormod Crib last time for his yeah. wishboard. Uh, he called it, quote, a trauma pick. Right. Yeah, well, we thought in here, because they were laughing out there like it was a hate pick for Blyden and his kitty combos. Yeah. So in here we were talking about, and then no, it actually wasn't just a hate pick. No. Like, it is literally the pick that he feels cost him the last time he drafted this deck. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's XO. Yeah, he is. We were just comment talking yeah. about that. What the fuck? Well, I, I told him to his face I thought his deck it. was bad, and now he's uh, trying to show me I, I'm Nis wrong. Nissa has won me every game I've cast it. This is amazing. I, I is, have been saying this for over a year now, yeah. Yeah. that Nissa is a top three Planeswalker in this format. Yeah, yeah, it's real good. I'm going to say top five, but like she is amazing. Uh, I think the problem is just getting to Nissa. I'm Rattler, yeah. Oko, Nissa, four, Karn, five. Yeah, I, the new Ahab is pretty right. sick. I think you're right, Peter. Getting yeah. getting to Nissa is the problem. If you can get to white, and that's but you're in green. You're getting Nissa is not. If you're a baby, that that was one of my mistakes. I think in my deck was I didn't optimize the turn one ramp. Right, you, I went for way more of the high mana ramp. Well, than and I you, went, you went for the Arbor Elf much sooner than you should have. Yeah, like, like the because Arbor Elf, if you have the Yob, is amazing. Yeah. But if you went like turn one mana confluence into an Arbor Elf, it sucks. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, like Arbor Elf is cute, but like yeah. not what you want. To be. Yeah. Like birds and noble should have been your top two. Yeah. All right. So looking at some hands here. We got some. We got some whole breacher time trial, but I don't see a lot of land. I got a one island in that action. And a chrome mox. And a chrome. That's what mox. we're looking okay, at. Well, I mean that. Oh, yeah, that'll get sure. you there. Yeah. He's got a breach. You don't really want the breach in the opening hand like that. Um. I mean, I saw him brain freeze himself earlier to make the Max breach one happen. Does main discard too. All so, right. And that. Right. Yeah. So yeah, he's got. Uh, this is a mole though. So he's already mulling. Yeah. So he's gonna keep that and say okay. Um. We'll do it live. Yeah. Oh boy! Oh, the gym style sexiness. Max said, like Ma Max realized his faults in the interview. He said he had no sideboard cards. He had a shitty yeah. sideboard plan. Yeah. And he said, so I, I I took things like the gemstone to like show up my game one because I realized yeah. I did not draft my sideboard well. Yeah. Right. Like, which is of course the, the mistake that often happens. Mm-hmm. And there we go. Discarded Iona. Uh, and I think that was part of my mistake too. Is I had. There were a few people I think that had such versatile mainboard cards that their sideboard cards were subpar. And that, that's a that, well, that, right? Well, there's also a thing like sometimes you can have versatile mainboard cards that become sideboard cards, and that's fine. Yeah. Versus dedicated sideboard. Yeah. I think that this draft needed a choker tsunami, and I think the tsunami should have been in your deck. Right? Yeah. I I also I got scared when Viviano picked the third pick Ragavan. Yeah. I should have just gone for Mono Red at that point. Because uh, Ragavan's down, and yes, it's probably your best turn one threat in mono red. Right. But like Swiss Beard, Darcy, Burn was just wide open and would be outside of against Heidi's deck. I mean, right here. Lelia. You're, uh, you're up against Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Like Lelia. I mean, there's so many. Like the red deck, we talked about the Burn deck forever. The Burn deck's not what's relevant. The mono red deck is about Robber. It's about Lelia. It's about those creatures, right? Yep. It's about haste. Yeah. It's about getting creatures out early. And uh, it's about. Prison effects that are relatively undercosted. All right, uh, so we got Gemstone and Dark Rit. Go to Deadly Colors. All right, and then we have an Entomb with one of the Dark Rit. So we're sitting pretty like, okay, so I mean, he can exhume here off, after this. So if he gets Grizzled Daddy, I assume he's just going to do that. Though, I mean, honestly, like Iona naming Blue would be. Backbreaking. That'd be hilarious. Does Dan have a backup plan if that happens? Archon. I, oh, the Iona's exiled. For, was that for the gemstone? Do you have to exile card for gemstone? Then? I wasn't here for that. Yep. Okay. I believe you have to. Yes. Okay. So the Iona's exiled to gemstone. So he gets the. He just goes for the entomb and just goes for the threat of 
Um, Archon of Cruelty. The Archon. Right. Yeah, and here's the anime dad on the Archon. No, uh, Jim's Caverns. Cavern, okay. Uh, oh, right below. Uh, uh, no, so. I was, I was just saying uh, you, were, you had the whole thing highlighted. We don't have Dan's list on Moxfield, but there are outs to this. Okay. Dan does have Snap. Dan does have chain. Right. Dan does have echoing truth. Yeah, he's got and is echoing. I doubt echoing's main, but I bet, I bet snaps main. Would he have outs to this if it were Iona on blue? No, uh, I do not believe so. Wish into tendrils of agony, <laughs> <laughs> but what he a, can't score them all for that. Uh, yeah, that's that seems highly accurate. That's a gamble. I do not believe there is a red or colorless solution to the problem we are currently facing. Yeah. And this, I mean, this thing, like, I dog on the reanimator list a lot when it's just strict reanimator. Um, but I like this idea of I'm going to take a lot of walkers and then have reanimate as the side plan from a lot of walkers. It's pretty spicy. Um, because this is what reanimator can do, right? Like, our kind of cruelty is half a cruel ultimatum. It's cruel. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I think the threat suite that the deck has now, and it took Modern to recognize it, make it possible in VRD. Because we've had Archon of Cruelty for some time, but the Reanimator deck did not seem to incorporate it. Uh, I think it was John Ryan who... or John Ryan took it the first time. Yeah, and you know, to, to great effect... Okay. Um, and he lost. Uh, it, he he beat destroyed Mason in the pre, in the prelims with that. Yeah. By Iona mm-hmm. naming Green because Mason was on Elves. Yeah. But Mason just got him in the final. Like, yeah. Ma- Mason did Elvesy shit and uh, yep. got there. Ah, uh, yeah. This is because- pretty going to be one side at this point. He had the bat. He had the mobile six with the bad. Now there's the Archon eating him apart. Liliana eating his hand, and a Vampiric's just gonna. That's it. Yeah. You don't even know what he's getting. You're just like, whatever he's getting can't be good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go home. I mean, it makes that Tormod script feel <laughs> a lot better now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he, I mean, does he still leave it in the wishboard or does he bring it in? No, you bring it in. You won it on turn zero or turn one. Right. Yeah. Uh, especially, he's, I mean, he's on the play here. So. so he's got the spell seeker. Really good card. Hey, echoing going to come in. There was the echoing. I think he left the tournament to the Whitboard because he, he sees it as a combo piece. I think that's bad. I, I think it's a mistake. But that's actually a problem often with the Karn board, right? I've played Karn just as much as anyone in the format, right? Yeah. I, I don't say I've the most, but just as much as anyone. And one of the problems is, like, do I bring in the bridge where it's now just one of 40? Mm-hmm. Or do I leave it in the Karn board where the, I, I can get it when I need it? Right? Here's, the, here's the question. What turn do you need to play it by? Right. And if the answer is sooner than you get four mana regularly, uh, you bring it in. <laughs> because <laughs> if, yeah, it's... Uh, that's like, legit, right? And it, I it, think that's... It's what no the, good sitting in your hand when you're taking lethal. Right. That's one of the problems with the Karn board uh, as a whole is it actually makes sideboarding a challenge sometimes because you're like, yeah, where is it most effective at? Right? It is one of those things where you have to get reps in with that particular card and strategy before you recognize like the, the shortcuts, the rules, because like you're bringing in a Tormod script, but uh, you're not bringing in, um, you're never bringing in a Microsoft flash. With the cardboard, it's easy to do redundancy on some of the things. Like I always have two graveyard effects with the cardboard. Cause I'm like, cool. I can bring it in, but I can also then keep one for the cardboard. Yes, you bring you bring in Tormod script. You uh, leave Hurst Relic of Progenitus right. or whatever. But but you can't do that with like a defense grid, right? Where there, there's not a second one, or you can't do that. No. Necessarily. So some things are be like or a bridge. Right? There's just not a second bridge. Bridge right. bridge. You. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm I, I'm thinking about it and like. Bridge costs three. Karn costs four. Yeah. Don't don't cuck yourself. Right. Because you there's one Karn and there's one bridge. So which of those allows you to play it earlier? Right. And that's that's all you have to think about. 
Uh, yeah, bad bridge, Porkless. I was I was literally <laughs> thinking about that, and I was like, I I don't I'm not even gonna bring this up <laughs> because uh, Porkless not only costs more mana, but it it's worse. prevents him from playing it. Right. It doesn't affect the board once it's no, actually doesn't once it, the thing is comes into play effect. Yeah, so it like if you did not if you had a Karn and you don't have yes. bridge. Right. Crawl space is bad bridge. SCI is right, right? Crawl yeah. space is bad bridge. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like, like what you can drop bridge once they have creatures on the board. You drop port close once they have creatures on the board, it doesn't matter. Uh, good for you. I get you, sir. Yeah. I get your thought process. Yeah. Take a little slower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, so Dan's at 3 0, and that's, you know, I, yeah. I thought that they were saying that Dan was at 4 0. Now, I will say, like, Max is in a good shire, and I have, we've seen many people fight back from that one, too, including... I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. Uh, I don't know anyone who's fought back from one, two to a, um, to a tournament win, right? Like, <laughs> to, to winning 12 games consecutively? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know yeah, anyone who's I, done no, that. Nobody comes to mind. Um, All right, so we're just seeing a mole, but we see a pretty good hand under that mole. We see a four spike. We see an L- Oh, he's on a double mole, though. He's putting two back. There's still a four spike and an LED, and that's not a bad place to be. No. Um, I mean, out of the crowd, I don't know who Max has his losses against. I uh, took one against because uh, if it was against Mason Mike. or Mike, okay, so and I don't know who the second one's against. Yeah, so our presumptive front runners are Mike and Mason, who are currently playing each other. Right. So that'll and give Mason, us a lot Mason of has one loss. Mason lost to Darian. They're both three one. They're both three. Mike and Mike, Mike and Mason. Lost to Dan. Yeah. Mike lost to Dan. Mason lost to Darian. Okay. So uh Dan in pulling this out, uh I don't know because I know he's played Mike, oh. but I don't know that he's called played Mason. But those are the three people leading the pack. Yeah, Jace um, well Jace can, is Spike is Spike just non creature or Spike any spell? It's just any spell. Oh it's well, it's Manatide. That, that should have been Spike, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh because like that man, he got that JV that JVP in like round twenty or something like that. I so did you spike a JVP? Um, yeah, I, but I think I think once once two. you let it go, it's it's gone. But the the thing is like, because you're not gonna spike like a like a like an anime ex- dead, you know? Because he's gonna have one because mana. he can replay it if it's right. an exhum or whatever, right? right? right so right he, he has yeah. the one mana. Yep. He's got, yeah, he's got that. I don't know what that is. I think it's miscalc. But, I mean, so essentially the same thing. All right, so we got a grizzled daddy. Right, so this is over. No, it's not. There's uh, echoing truth in Dan's hand. Ah. Uh, yeah, but... But he did miss a land drop, so we're getting... Or chain of vapor, but we are getting very, very close to the end of this game. Oh, yeah. I mean, he gets to craft a hand now. I mean, that's the, yes. that's the real truth. I mean, yeah, the... I mean, the, dr- the bounce is what you want against a Grizzly Daddy. That's the thing about the reanimator match. The bounce yeah. is so much better than the removal, yeah. unless it's Exile. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. the um, the 45th or 46th pick for Max was show and tell, correct? Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, don't, um, I don't know if it's main deck or not. I don't think so. Uh, yeah. We could pull it up, and it's right behind on the uh, Moxfield deck lists. Yeah, uh, he has show and tell in his sideboard. Okay. And I can't imagine you would not bring it into this matchup because I do not believe you are afraid of anything that Dan is going to show into play. Right. Unless it's Hole Breacher. That's the only way you get hoisted. But you have more threats to show in than Dan has Hole Breachers. Yeah, once you've already got the Crystal Brand in play, then it's not helping you out anyways. Yeah. Lotus Petal, don't pop it for a Dark Rit. Like I got these extra cards. I'm gonna Dan, do something with these extra Exile, cards. Simeon Spirit Guide, casts Manamorphose, casts Brain so, Freeze for the dub. Two black and two right now. Oh, there's the Soul Ring. Tendrils. He's talking about. Ash, oh, that's Ashiat Dream Render. Uh, you know what? It that's a little bit anticlimactic. It is. It is. <laughs> I, honestly, yeah. like I was, I was, I think Splash Shock would have been probably better even there, but uh, yeah. I don't. An engineer lands time spiral. And land. Uh, I think we're 
hit some stuff at the end of turn. Still not a bad place to be, right? Because I mean, yeah. Nope. Against this deck, Ashiok is pretty good because when you're taking out key combo pieces, right? Like you take out Brain Freeze, you take out Wish. You're okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did Dan pick up any fetch lands? I don't think. So. Uh, I think Dan was too busy going hard, on doing him. the wheel stuff yeah. where you go. Okay. You know, like going Underworld and then LED, going Hull Breacher and Time Twister. Yeah, time Twister, yeah. Like, I don't... We flip a Jace Daddy. So that Goblin Engineer doesn't do anything now. It's like, I can't at least put a creature in the yard anymore. So we have Lotus and Academy in hand. But it, I... Yeah. So that's oh, an... Has that's... A master. It's an additional four mana available. Uh, so, is that a Simeon Spirit Guide? No, he didn't draft it. I don't think. Oh, but he got it as a what, what is that red card? Is that the Gorilla Shaman? He had a no. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the Goblin Engineer, which I thought was in the Exile, but it wasn't. Uh, yeah, it looks like a lot of the red cards that we have printed are using a much darker red. Is that a Shenanigans? Not sure. And Dan doesn't, have his, Dan doesn't have his list on Moxfield. What a jerk. Yeah, I know. All right. So we're we're going to hit four more pieces there. Um, he had a gamble in hand, Roy. That may be an old gamble. Goblin Engineer. That may be an old, old art gamble. I think He drew a gamble, right? I said gamble. So yeah. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. an old art gamble. All, All right, right. So we've lost a time spiral and a twister. So we're down two of our four wheels. Right. Lost a, uh, lost a Talarian West there. So that's... I mean, realistically, he wants to hit a Wheel of Fortune um, as one of the things that doesn't set uh, or doesn't reset things for Max and gets him closer at least to a, a mill out win. Yeah, Wheel of Fortune and I believe Windfall are the last two left in the deck. So we got one blue. We're looking at. I can't believe Dan didn't draft Echo of Eons. So, what is the other blue card in Dan's hand? We have Force Spike and. Uh, I cannot. That tell. card. Uh, it's like a. It's it's a Tome Scar. Tome Scar. Oh okay. Man, that was good. I'm pro. <laughs> Target player mills five cards. Uh, what does Tome Scar do? I think it's a. Target player knows five cards, yeah. Why draw a card? He, oh, he, he does it to himself. Does it to himself. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's no, it's no he drunk, Brad. And he says, Iona? No, I'm going home. <laughs> I know Yeah. Yeah. And Max takes it down, dropping Dan for yeah. the role of the undefeated. So uh, we currently have three three ones, two of whom are currently, currently playing one another. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we might have a situation where we have a little triangle trade action going on, happen. and they all they Especially take a, when all we've take got of each other. Jason and Heidi, who are going to be on the higher loss thing. So yeah. the thing about VRD, since it's round robin, that gets weird is that when you get those couple high win people or the couple high loss people, you end up with that couple high win people to trade up for it, and that's where you get that. Like we have one online currently that's looking like it might have like four, five, and twos because there's like yeah, it's insane. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It's not any less insane than the last than VRD eight, where we had what two six ones. Or VRD two, we had three five and twos. You know, Woo. yeah. Uh, I mean, three five and twos is is not that outrageous, but like the John John Ryan and Elaine both going six, six and one. one. Yeah. It's for that to happen, you're generally going to have someone be at zero and seven. And yeah, we had and, an and every time right. that's, that it's happened, right. there has been 0-7. I think that and, was and, Vince and, going 0-7 oh, that time. Yes. Uh, and then somebody going 1-6. Right. So, like, last time, Sam going 1-6 and Alex going 0-7. Uh, yeah. That's, a, that's how you get those results skewed towards the top. Yeah. All right. This should not be a game three, though, should it? Uh, I'm kind of weird what's going on there. I think they're just... Jamming for fun. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. I'm going to go figure this out. One second. I'll be right back. So. Um, yeah. 
we'll see where we uh, where we fall in the Mike versus Mason sweepstakes. That's a big match. It's a very very big match. It's gonna be a good one. Uh, so they they are currently playing each other. Um, I doubt they will. Yeah, I, this might just be for funsies or something. I am not sure. Darian, Darian's replacing Max. Okay. Oh, so, we for player versus, swap. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's Darian versus. Ah, it's Darian okay. versus Max or Darian versus, Darian versus Dan. Dan. They're, they're okay. Got it. So we have lands versus combo. <laughs> uh, yes. Um. Why do they have the same sleeves? I thought everybody had... And you know what? doesn't matter. I think everybody's been using the blue sleeves. I don't like that. I am in agreement. If you're going to oh. get, get a bunch of new sleeves... Listen. Listen. Uh, okay. We're just lucky that nobody's playing Oblivion Ring style effects. Uh, yeah. That's... You know what? It's a good thing that I didn't draft this time. Uh-oh. Was that the deck? I've... Uh, I've had, uh, you know, I love stuff like bribery and, and treachery. Um, okay. Those are those are fun effects that I enjoy. So Mason I got game one that. versus Mike, and they're going into game two. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't like putting bribery, treachery, and, uh, like, Praetor's graphs in their power cube, and I don't understand that. I think those cards are extremely good. All right. So this is the start. It looks like that like Darian had earlier versus um, uh, Mason Jason? for the or Mason for the win, right? Like, oh yeah, yeah. It's a pretty powerful start here. Uh, yep, we're going to be able to make a construct and have yeah, have a two two floating. construct. Um, now the issue in this is like Mason, Darian, like Veil of Summer went undrafted, right? Like Darian doesn't have Correct. any interaction to stop Dan shenanigans, and, and that's going to be. Is that a solve the equation for? I don't know. Muddle? There's no way it's, oh, it's muddle. It transmutes. Uh, no, that's a lot of. That's, yeah, that's not a lot of words. That'd be a lot of flavor text. I can't um. What is in his draft list? Uh, I mean, that is a current cost. It must be, it has to be muddle because I don't see anything else that it could. Drift of Phantasms. Ah, okay. That's Drift of Phantasms. So, Which very is, similar to muddle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, the reason that card is in the graveyard and Wheel of Fortune came out of the deck, regardless of which of these cards, is the same right. thing. We transmuted away. Right. So got, oh, a muddle only costs two? Okay. I transmute. Okay, you couldn't get wheel because muddle only costs two. Right. So we've All got right. two Urza tokens. And we're yep. tutoring up. About, they're about to be three threes, probably, as he's going to tutor up something else. He's like, what do I have that I'm tutoring them? And he has a mox. So. Or a yes. Pity Needle with his sure. main. Oh, he, oh, his Pity Needle's main, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. There's Graph Digger's Cage, Pithing Needle, and the Emerald. Oh, oh so Cage and uh, Pithing Needle are main. That's yep. hot. I actually kind of like that. It makes sense. No, I mean, with the, with the Urza's, it does, right? Like, yeah. you know. It, it's, kind of, it's interesting how Urza Saga creates this requirement for a tight little toolbox in the main, but Karn looks at your sideboard and it just asks you to play completely differently. Hey, Mark, can, if you are out there, can we hear what the Pithy Needle named? Or the Pithy Needle, whichever word pronunciation you want to go with. And why are we not using Dr. Poo Poo Pee Pee's? Uh, that's a valid question. And also, could we get some Dr. Poo Poo Pee Pee's in place of those dice? Because uh, I hate dice for tapping, though these are better than others. Yeah. Because they always have the Phyrexian symbol. We're also a classy event. Yeah, exactly. That is a hull breacher? There's a breacher and a wheel. I mean, he's got, like, like he's got, this clock's got a push, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, because, it, and that's the thing against this deck, is, like, if you do not have the interaction... 
Like I, I was man, able to wrangle him, even though he got me with the top deck mainly through discard. Yeah, um, Mark, could we get um, before you jump into this? Could we get uh, actual cards? Pee pee poo poos, and um, could we get a note with the, uh, the needle's name? All right, so we got a once upon a time vastly underdrafted card. Um, I don't know, I forget about it all the time, and it seems like other people do as well. Um, but the card is ridiculous. It absolutely is. I think this is another one of those cards, like we talked about earlier with Skull Clamp, where people just forgot about it because it was banned everywhere. Right. So just out of sight, out of mind, and it's not great in EDH. Right, right. Unlike Skull Clamp. Right. Uh, the only thing I can understand about Dan not doing anything on his turn is he's going to set up for an EOT Hull Breacher yeah. into a on top yeah. wheel, right? 100%. He's going to flash in Hull Breacher, and then he's going to wheel here. This is yeah. Cool. All right, live update from the floor. Uh, the Pippin oh. Needle is currently naming the two-mana Goblin Welder, named Goblin Engineer. Okay. Yes. Can you name Treasure Token of the Pippin Needle? It is a mana ability, isn't it? I, I think. Oh, yeah, I'll go. I think some of them can stop mana abilities, and Needle cannot. I believe so. Pippin Needle says... Card. Though? Yeah, and I think it also says card. Revoker can stop right. mana abilities, but I think it says card still. Needle also says they can't be activated unless they are mana abilities. Right. But it, the card name is the, even the bigger one. So. Right. There's yeah. no card named Treasure, so you can right. name Treasure. Yeah. There are some weird things though, like where there's a couple. Like one, I can't remember what token it is, but there is a weird one where there's a token that there is a card named that, and it can like. That's funny. Yeah. I don't know. Gob, I mean, Llanowar Elves has a has a card that produces Llanowar Elves. Right. That'd be an option. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And there's also a Planeswalker that I think. Yeah. I, there's one just really obscure one that like you can do because of a weird token. Um, yeah. So here we have the whole breacher. Um, yep. So. Was that an hour of promise? He played the strip mine in an hour? I mean... Yes. Okay. That's pretty strong. Yeah. I don't know. If maybe you should just play strip mine and strip mine. But, uh... Yeah, here comes the wheel. I think he... Dan did miss the, the land drop, so it does make sense to try and short him so he can't hull breach that turn and you pressure the life total even more. Yeah, you... Actually, wouldn't he be dead if he had nothing? You, 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 you I mean, he, he'll flash in the hull breacher. But if he doesn't have the he doesn't have the mana for the wheel, he doesn't have the mana for the wheel. So you you, you sh I don't think you hour there. You you're up on mana. You yeah. the hour doesn't do much. I was just trying to, to do the math on it. If he, if because you're crashing him with four fours, and if Dan doesn't block, now Dan's down to two mana, even with the hull breacher, missing a land drop, he has to rip off the top to be able to wheel. Yeah. I, but he's still at four. Yeah, I think the hour is exceptionally off there. I think you just gotta you gotta kill the mana. You take the red source. Yeah. Especially when he's so trapped in mana with only three sources in play. Yeah. You're not you're not coming through the mic by the way, Mark. I didn't hear you at least. Did he mute it? Uh is that this? Oh. Alright, try say it again. Maybe, maybe I just did myself. Testing one two. Testing one two. Okay, there you go. Now you're yeah, on. They are. Was strip mine searched up with the hour? Uh, that would make the most sense. I mean, that, that would explain. Oh, strip mine. Okay, that would, yeah, that would. And these tokens, are these tokens? Uh, they're awesome? Urzas. Okay. Yeah, so oh, they're okay. four, four Urzas. They're pretty big then. Yes. Yeah. There's one Needle four. Mox. Two of them. And Dan was talking about how Wish and his board, his Wish and his deck's mostly four fighting the tendrils, but occasionally it's finding Tormod the Tormod script. To, for Thassus. Right. Which he said that was, he lost many a game last time he drafted this deck because he didn't have that. Correct, because he had one extra mana that he needed to pay for relic or something. Yeah, or uh, the par uh, par uh, the the blue one. The blue oh one. dear God! Paradigm shift. Paradigm shift. He couldn't pay for the paradigm shift, but he, he would have been able to do. It. He could do yeah. wish and something and something, but not all three of them. This Talarian Academy with that many treasures and yeah, play is just dirty. Is, uh, this game just went from uh, zero to hero. Yep. Turnabout, untapping for infinite mana. Turn search or turnabout? That is turnabout. Okay. Oh no! I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. It, it's it's right. search. Yeah. Still, you're untapping an academy. It doesn't. Yeah. What? Whatever it is. I've been playing too yeah. much uh, solidarity. Right. Whatever yeah. it is is dirty. Like. So we have three different sets of counters going on the play mat. Our treasures, and then on that side card. That's a storm card. His storm and mana yep. card. Yeah. Yeah. So the top from card, the mana from the academy. Right. The top top card is a storm count. Uh, the top one is a storm count. The white one is his blue mana. Yes. And at this point in time, we're getting to arbitrary 
on both of those. Yeah, I mean, the storm count's mildly low. I mean, it's two at this it, point. His hand looks pretty empty, though. He has a gamble and a grim monolith, and that's it. And two lands. Yeah. So he really After the windfall? Him. Okay. But it just depends on what he hit in the yard, right? I mean, okay. So in my, the line I see is obviously gamble into wish to find... Uh, yep, that's... Oh, no, it's an engineer. I'm sorry. It's engineer. not a gamble. But it doesn't have haste, so... I, I see nothing in the yard that has flashback. There's a gamble in the yard. The gamble doesn't have flashback. Right. So what's left in the library is Talisman, a Chrome Mox, an LED, and Lotus itself. Lotus, yeah. I mean, Vault. Dan doesn't okay. have list uploaded. I, oh, he doesn't. He's the one player that hasn't yet? Yeah. Okay. Correct. Last we saw. All right. We can uh, harass him about that after this. It looks like LED is the card that got left on top, which is a signal at least. Mm -hmm. But not going to be helpful this turn. And he passes the turn. So that is one of the things, like sometimes in this deck, you, you, you're just going to be like, all right, cool, I did the cool thing. And then I'm in a bad situation. So we're going to strip mine the yeah. good play. And Darian has a punishing fire. I mean, obviously the queen condition in this match is just Tokens. All right, so he's got two four four, so he's got to block at least one of those, and he's going to block with the whole, with the thing with the whole bridge. He's going to go to four. Mm -hmm. What is that? That is the Valakit exploration. Let me pull it up a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull that thing up because that, there's that one and another one that I confuse. Um, Valakit awakening. Is this, this is the landfall the one? Assault. Yeah, this is the landfall. Okay, this one's the good one here actually for him. This one's sweet for him at this point. If he has lands in his hand. Twist is good here, though. Because he's got a lot of treasure still, right? It's a shield token for SNC. Interesting. Yeah, so uh, Hyphenate is asking about the rules change, and I believe the what we've been dancing around this entire time is there was a card previously that made a token that goes on a, a permanent token called uh, shield. shield. Right. Or something like that. Oh, that's wild. Shield counter, yeah. Yeah. But, correct. But there was this weird rules interaction with it. And I thought this is what we're talking about, but I wasn't sure. But that was a rules update that we just got. Right. That's funny. Yeah, that's certainly not relevant in this match, but it is, it is a nice bit of arcane trivia. Yeah, I'm just trying to think if it's, if it's what we've been talking about or, and hyphenated, or if we're still missing one little piece. So, yeah, there was a token called Splinter. Okay. Right, and now there's Splinter token. Yeah, thank you, Hyphenated. As always, you are on. So here comes the Breach, which we're going to see what that does after this. So looks like we've got another Drift of Phantasms, which he's not going to cast out of the yard, but it's a nice exile, right? And Drift of Phantasms, in this case, is not transmuting. He transmuted it for okay. the wheel. That makes right. sense. Yes, yeah. He transmuted it for the wheel. Because, I mean, Drift is just going to feel... It will feel his breach by being above exile. Right. But other than that, it's just a transmute. Yeah, he should have it now. Like That first wheel was bad for him. But, uh... Wheel just goes infinite with breach. Yes, that makes sense. Yes. Assuming that mana... I mean, with, with the whole breacher in play, if there's an interaction, right. this should be completely fine. There's mm -hmm. plenty of cards left in the library after that twister. Right. So everything should be fine. And we're just going to hit a brain freeze at some point. And... There's a, high Get him. there's a high tide, and he doesn't have any more islands, so the high tide's pretty relevant. So, uh, unless time spiral gets hit again, true. But even then, like, are you gonna are you gonna exile three cards for a high tide for three extra mana out of the? I think I think we're just kind of seeing what type of pie Dan chooses to eat on camera here. Mm, pie. There's the tome scour. I'm gonna hit himself for five. Look, if wheel's not infinite enough for you, how about tome scour? That's also fun. He, he's storm counting up and, and trying to find a brain freeze in his yard at this point. This is just the most sad feeling from Darian because he kind of drew the perfect card but didn't have the lands to back it up. Yeah. And has lethal on board several times over and just yes. can't close it out. So we're looking for a brain freeze or a wish, whichever happens first, right? Pretty much, yeah. So this, this storm deck that Dan drafted, this is very strong. Obviously, the previous best storm deck we saw was also by Dan, which was the Underworld Breach. Uh, it went one and six. 
Cor- correct. He was the previous <laughs> strongest one. <laughs> well, prior and to I told those. him I hated his deck again, and now he's going to prove me wrong. So yeah, uh, yeah I think he's spite, he's spite winning. <laughs> There's also, we, we didn't see a lot of anti-storm tech. We saw Comball get drafted by right. Hyde, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, but we didn't see a lot of, I mean, Storm is weak to a lot of things. So like the graveyard hate and things like that, obviously are strong against it. But we didn't see dedicated Storm hate. We still have not hit. There's, and he's just going through Oracle at this point. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. You just wheel enough times to get the Oracle, or Tom Scott enough yeah. times. I hadn't Tom even Scott seen a win con wheel. go by because yeah, Tom Scott not wheel. Because if you're wheeling, you draw a card and you lose. Where Tom Scott, yeah. like you're milling, you're fine. Well, I, th- I still thought Wish was in play. I guess. Okay. Yeah, I don't. He might have cited it out. He cited out. Yeah. So we have Dan up one zero. Yep. I mean, that was the start that Darian wants. I mean, that was a good start. Yeah, and that quick look, I don't think Wish is in the main anymore. Right. There's the brain freeze. Okay, so that's still here. Can you pull up your glasses, Monica? There's Wish. Yeah, so exploration is definitely good. Um, yeah. But, you know, it could have got there, but no. Yeah, and... This is traditionally the problem with the land-based strategy in constructed formats. You are weak to combo. You really do not have a lot you can do. So you dedicate upwards of eight sideboard slots to sphere effects, being eight sphere of resi- sorry four sphere of resistance and four thorn of amethyst. And now we go back to the conversation about Darian drafting a constructed deck in a limited format. Right. And, and there's also something like Valkyrie Exploration, which is really good in a constructed deck. Where you have a lot of fetches, but in here, like you know, one the one damage a turn is fine, mm-hmm. but it's not going to get you there really quick. You know? Correct. And, and also, I mean, this lands deck might be powerful, but it's not powerful enough to close out the other decks and have the inevitability that lands does in constructed formats. Uh, in this kind of format, you can't just take things like Mind Break Trap because it'll be good against exactly one deck and mm-hmm. have seven other matches to play against, where you're not going to have a sixty percent win rate. Correct. Yeah. You can even talk about something like uh, not so furic vortex. Game three, you like the um, they're going to game three. Yeah. The two mana enchantment from Scourge. Okay. That oh, was the yeah. first I heard. Yeah. Pillar or Eidolon of the Great Rebel is the creature version of it. Mike and Mason yeah. are in game three, and evidently it's a slobber knocker. So they're both uh, X and one right now. That's great. Yeah, let's jump over to standings and check that out a minute, actually. While they're shuffling up. Uh, uh, there we it go. loads up. So yeah, we we just saw Max came in and reported three matches, uh, all of which happened to be wins for him, which jumped him up to a three and two record wow. into the top half. Oh, okay. We've seen the one and two go to the win before. I mean, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Jeff is also playing against Heidi right now. Uh, I'm excited that everybody everybody has won at least one match. Oh sweet, Heidi got a win. That's nice. always my goal, right? I want right. Heidi to get a match. I want Jason to get a match, and they both did. Uh, but. I also want everyone to lose a match. So this is very important to me. Right. And so far, we're there. Yep. Yeah. We're, we're in exactly the perfect window. Right. Um, so the real goal now is to make sure Mason doesn't win. As always, our goal is in St. Louis is to make sure a Chicago player can never take down a victory. We've failed with that twice so far. Um, but hopefully, we can make it happen this today. Yep, yep, yep. Got to keep the Chicago players in Chicago. That's right. Until we invite <laughs> them back the next time. <laughs> I do really like Darian's deck. I think I think the idea of a lands deck is very good. I think that this time he got really punished by the fact that Jason happened to be in the same lane and they were just like ripping cards back and forth against each other the whole match. I was saying earlier that I think that like the strip mine land shell is great, but I think you want it with something else, right? Like I really like Cody's currently in an online Discord where he it's the strip mine shell, land shell, but it's with like aggro guys like Blood Raid and Layla and stuff like that. That makes sense. Do we have uh, do we have that list up here right now? Uh, that's it. Yeah, let's jump over to the Moxfield list while still shuffling a little bit. So here's here's what we're looking at. Once upon a time is a criminally like underdrafted deck. Yeah, we, we looks like Mike is about to take down Mason. Okay. With a torpor orb preventing aura triggers. Nice. It, that's beautiful. And uh, a Ragavan uh, exiling uh, Vincer off the top of Mason's deck. It's it's a it is a very good match that I wish we had on camera. Uh, I regret now telling them to just go ahead and play because Dan was the XO. 
That's kind of amazing. Uh, so I mean, he's got like Outland Liberator here, which I think is a really good card. Uh, I don't know if it's great in this shell, uh, but definitely in like an aggro list, it's really good. Um, you know, he's got a lot of really good stuff. Um, I mean, Silent Gravestone and Soul Guide Lantern are both very strong. Yeah. But Jukabog, like, there, there's a lot of avenues he has here. He doesn't necessarily have an avenue against the fast collector oof is really good dear god okay i think i think i'm convinced now that darian is pretty solid after board yeah like collector oof is like i mean that was actually the last time that and dan and i played lantern in hand the darian last time dan and i played with this list and like he, he beat me off the top deck it was because i had collector oof main deck and you know or and sideboard and it was oh brutal oh god him. we got a fast bond into an urza saga and going to be a uh and there's going to be a Soul Guide Lantern to play. Opting not to play it off the start just to get that value, I assume. Well, delaying the token generation's a decent idea if he knows that he's going to need three or more well, to win this game quickly. He can't, he can't delay a token there. There's a question is does he play the Soul Guide turn one or does he wait an exile card with it, right? Because uh, the token generation's not until step two. Yeah, so it seems like he's still pushing for the token as fast as possible because he's going to get it right now. Because um, there's another world where you just don't bother playing the third land off fastbound, like why pay the extra life? But I think he sees properly that Dan's not going to be pressuring him on life totals this game. So it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. You might as well get all the mana down right away to stop signaling. Oh, look, at, there's a Liberator. Yeah. Now he's not going to get a token here. He can before the next upkeep if he wants. Uh, so Liberator we pulled up a couple times. So again, this is a 2-2 two -two Werewolf. Uh, flips day-night. And then it... Uh, so you can pay one and sacrifice it on its one side to destroy target artifact or enchantment. But the flip side, it does... And the key is it doesn't want to attack trigger. It doesn't have to damage. That's wild. That's why the card's so good, right? Like, it becomes yeah. a 3-3. Three, three, it doesn't want the attack trigger. I lost it the other day because of the stupid attack trigger. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can block it. No, it doesn't matter. It's also so trivial against these... Oh, against the blue decks to have it flip right like it's so hard for them to play something every single turn yeah so we are gambling away and we're hitting the twist that's always the when you, whenever you see that it's hard to know did they tutor for the twister or did they tutor for the whole preacher maybe right. they already have two twisters in hand yeah you never know I mean unless they go <sighs> <laughs> that's how you know we drew a card. We now have an Urza trigger. We go to the Urza trigger as we know. So for folks in chat, is there anybody you want to talk to to hear about kind of how their day went? Uh, is it like what things uh, are you interested in hearing more about? Happy to. Uh, we have everyone out here. Captive Ooh, audience. The this cage point. off of the Urza. Oh, nice. That's better than a Soul Guide Lantern. Yeah. And he also opted not to make any card structs. Yeah, he was just like, all right, I'm just gonna. He floated the mana, so he floated one off before the uh, the Earth, Earth side went. For a fast bond deck, it always feels very weird to be crimped on mana. But maybe we're not doing cage. Maybe 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 mm -hmm. like a thought, like maybe we're not, and then no, we are still still cage. It puts it right out of the battlefield. Yeah, it does. It does. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to, with the coat, with the green from the Beseju and the coat one colors floating, we're going to once upon a time. I forget that once upon a time also has a casting cost. Mm -hmm. So here's a question here. If you, if you are Darian, do you say swing hit for two and then screw it and pop it just to blow the chrome box? Or do you wait and hope it flips later and you get the more value out of it? Ooh, I, I mean, after the first game where we saw how important mana was to Dan, I think I pull the trigger and pop it. But I, do, I do too. I, I could see an argument either way. Peter, what do you think? I thought he would have picked up the mocks last turn, in all honesty, because I think that's what I would have done. But I would have been more aggressive if there was a saga if that were the case. Mm -hmm. So I think we're looking at a, a slower turn with this creature. Right, so we've exiled, we played the Soul Guide, we exiled, and uh, the Time Twister is gone. And then, yep, we passed the turn. Darian also does have a lot more protection this game, right? The Graftigger's Cage plus Soul Guide Lantern means that there's not a great chance of him getting just blown out. 
other than the Bio Hell Breacher, uh, Hell Breacher combo, but there's not, I mean, unless he had tapped out for Hell Breacher this time, there's not much chance of that happening on next own turn. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, like, I can feel the tension from Dan that he has to play something this turn. It's probably going to be expressive iteration. There it is. Yeah, and it's the right call anyway because he's going to, you know, if he hits a land, oh, he does not hit a land. Oh. There's a brain freeze and an underworld breach in there, so he is going to be exiling one of those or at least tucking them back. He's gonna he's gonna exile the talisman. He's gonna exile the talisman. He's gonna draw the breach and he's gonna put tuck the freeze back. That sounds right to me. I mean, but you can't use the talisman. You can't. Yeah, it's a gauze. I mean, but that's the thing. You're losing one no matter what. So yeah, yeah. Without the land, he can't cast the talisman this turn. So I did not see what he did, but we'll see it when he flexes his hand at some point. And oh, there's no way you put the brain freeze in hand, right? Like, I no, guess. you you don't. Is that also a high tide exiled? What's or high tide exiled off the Chrome Mox? What's the other card exiled up there? On the top time Twister off of the uh, Soul Soul Guide coming into play. There we go. Okay. Also, now we have the Awakening. So now, oh, and Strip Mine. Oh, this is going to be brutal. Uh, so we're not going to play the Green Sun. We're going to Strip Mine land. Green Sun's going to go into the yard for not being able to play, and he'll take a damage. So popping the island is interesting there. Like, I think it's probably the right call, just because you're going to get rid of that chrome box eventually, but I think there's an argument for I want to take them off one color. But Dan is just so reliant on blue mana. This is probably the correct call, even though it takes two turns. That's a tough call. That's a tough call. Yeah. Uh, I assume Darian's looking at, at, at Dan's list, and if you take Dan off of double blue, that means Dan cannot cast Chain and Echoing Truth in the same turn. Or the same turn cycle. He also can't um, b -b 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 transmute. Sure. Yeah. Or whatever that ability is called. Yeah, off model. Yeah. Mu yeah. And and the drift, and the drift. Yeah. Drift phantasms. I don't. So green sun doesn't it go back to the yard? Can you pull back a valid cast there? it? He did not cast it. He only exiled it and then wasn't able to pay for no, it. No, I think it goes back to the yard if you don't if you exile and they take damage. I think oh, that's one of the call. weird things about Valagan. So uh it's a exploration, just click it. So, so it says um, if there are cards exile without, that put them into the great or graveyard, then it deals that much damage to each opponent. Ah, I'll go tell them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's a small thing, but it, it's relevant. All right, so now we have a flipped liberator, and that's gonna close this out. Uh, pretty swiftly, unless there's like a snap or something in hand. So we've got exploration goes. I chose not to tell them because it's a missed trigger. So okay. we can tell them after the match. Okay. Yeah. Good call. So we've got two Valakut Awakening triggers here, or Valakut Exploration triggers here. That's the fetch. Play those both, or you can just take the damage, and that's an interesting. I mean, I don't. I mean, I have Valka, so I think I take the damage off the exploration, but play the Dryad. So there's Chain. Well, and the there's interesting chain. thing is, if he does remember to do the damage, he has to move all the cards exiled. So right. at that point, I'll have to go interrupt them and tell okay. them that. Yeah, that because that you can't miss right. some of the trigger. Correct. Yeah, he, he just did. Did he do damage as well? I don't know what the uh, that card No, I think he just forgot that it does damage. He, correct. So he's entirely, he's missing the entire trigger. Okay. The entire second So we're trigger. fine. Yeah. Right. We're fine until he decides that he wants to move one of the cards and deal damage. Oh my yes. God. Yes. You don't play, you play that card because you get the extra. Like that. No, you play that card because it draws you a card. You right, no, it. but, but. The, okay, I play a lot of that effect. I just wrote an article about it. It's yeah. going to be proofread. One of the downfalls of that effect sometimes is you exile the good cards you want. This at least puts them back in the yard, right? So it, they're not exiled permanently. Uh, yeah. Mason just won six. Mason just won six mana crypt rolls in a row to not lose. Six mana crypt rolls to, in a row to, to not lose. to win. Uh, take down taking down Mike uh, as both players got to about six cards left in their library. It was an absolute banger of a match. Can you just go uh, roll that die a few times to make sure that it's uh, it's a, not a weighted die? <laughs> I, I'm not confident that it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of sixes and fours in a row. That's crazy. 
Oh, so there's the whole Breacher. So Dan has a way out again. Yeah. After yep. being seemingly shut out of this match. Darian just, it, it doesn't seem like his deck can close. Well, and this is one of the things, like, I, I think in the strip my deck, often you want both the Crucible and the and the Ramen Up, right? Like, splitting it's tough, right? I mean, you yeah. played it a lot. What do you think, Brandon? You, you don't I'm want bullshit. both? I've never drafted Ramen Up. Okay, okay. Fuck that card. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I know you I drafted it. You beat me with the, it. We, I mean, we were talking about this while the draft was taking place, which is that the win cons of Darian's deck don't exist. Right. They're not, yeah. they're not good, effective win cons. Field of the Dead doesn't quite get there. Right. If... Darian is winning, it's traditional, or it's typically on the back of getting them into a strip mine lock and having them concede because they don't see a way out of it. Right. Um, but, there, and then there's prime time. I mean, he's got a lantern right now, though. So even, I don't care if he's got the whole breacher in the other, like, he's still like, okay, I'm going to wheel, and then I'm just going to pop this lantern. Yeah, this feels like a prison deck that doesn't have any any uh, prison cards in it. Right. That's Wish. And there's the, the Parallax Haze, or whatever it's called. Right. Uh, paradigm shift, yeah. Paradigm shift, shift. Thank you. Paradox ways haze is another one. So paradigm shift is a win con with uh, our our Thorically friend. You remove all cards from your game and shuffle your graveyard into your library. So in that case, the soul guide actually plays into. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one-two punch. Yeah, it actually plays into what you want to do there. Yeah. I do love this art, despite it being from the less popular Nielsen. And here's the Torment's Crypt. Well, that that takes care of it because Torment's Crypt can target yourself, so yeah. that makes fair. Which is why he drafted it. Yeah. Nice little three card combo. Yeah, and I think I see the Thoracle in hand. So does he have another mana? Is the question? That's not a Remy app, is it? What is this? It is. Yes, it is. Okay. He's actually just going to Thoracle. He's just, he's not. He's like, I've got the Paradigm Shift. I don't need that. I'm just going to do. This. Oh, and he doesn't want any strip man locked. Right. Mm -hmm. The crypt should be in his graveyard, despite the fact that it's probably getting exiled. Uh, does it? You sure. sacrifice it as part of the cost. And he targeted his opponent, so yeah, it should be oh, in the graveyard. Yeah. Okay. He didn't bother sleeving it, just set it to the side. Right. But if he goes to Time Spiral or right. Twister, we're going to need that. I'm on it. Okay. You can take over. Thanks, Steven. Take a fucking dump. <laughs> great, great, everyone. Thanks. Oh my god, Steven, that's disgusting. Nice family, uh, family friendly stream here. Yeah. <sighs> okay, anyways, I'm here now. Wow, Steven, just really just like vulgar, vulgar crass, even. This is a family friendly environment. So we have the uh, the Outland Liberator getting flipped back to the front side. Yep. So we're discussing how the family a, friendly stream mark. Yes, uh, we, we, there have been a bunch of missed triggers in a delicate exploration, where cards were exiled and then not moved back to the graveyard, dealing lots of extra damage. I don't know what that means. Uh, let me pull up delicate exploration for any viewers that might not be aware of this card. I Obviously, of course know exactly what it does. Right, we all on commentary have an encyclopedic knowledge. It's uh, one of the requirements of the job. So the second yeah. triggered ability here says that any of the cards you exile that you don't play get moved to the graveyard and then deal that much damage. Thank you. Talking into a microphone like Johnny Carson, apparently. <laughs> uh, really big shoes. The thing Johnny Carson said, right? Uh, okay, so... In case anyone can't tell, we're really enjoying our unofficial sponsor, Budweiser. Uh, the freedom of beers. I just drank a coffee because I was enjoying Freedom Budweiser too many. All right, there's a Thassa's Oracle coming into play. That's Scrying like, three. Yep, there are still a lot of cards at Dan's library, so it's probably not going to win the game. Yeah. No, we're just going to value it right now. So, how big is the Outland? I think it's a 2 2, but let me double check that. You are correct, it was a 2 2. And then turns into a 3-3. Three, 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 yeah. Yeah. So we're offering up some resistance, making Darian a little more hesitant to attack, so slowing the game down. Sure. Yeah, just being able to block a 2-2 two, two is nice. Also yeah. prevents it from flipping, because you're playing a card in your own turn. Oracle being a 1-3, so that's a nice brick wall. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I assume at some point Dan's going to cast an Echoing Truth or Chain of Vapor to pick it up. Yes. 
and there's a two three coming through as well. Uh, Dan opts not to trade the th- the um, the Hulk Reacher for the Ramming Up now that yeah, Threatman is gone. Just let these bonk. Um, so there's also so there's Snap. There's Echoing Truth. Uh, is that it left? Uh, was there Chain of Vapor as well, or is it just Snap and Echoing Truth? I think we cast the chain already. Oh, I see. Okay. And then has it's in the graveyard. There, there are recursion elements in Dan's deck, obviously, notably Underworld yes. Breach. But yeah. So I'm just looking to see what we have left. We also have Spellseeker. So that's kind of a virtual copy of both of these, but it's going to run him out of mana since he is very... Uh... Okay, St- Steven just uh, pointed out that the card's going to the graveyard off of Valakut's Awakening now need to cause damage. Now, because Darian exiled them and then moved to the graveyard, that indicates that he has now remembered the trigger, and we actually have to read the full trigger. So... They're discussing the rules implications of the previous times where he forgot. Uh, mm-hmm. And theoretically, they should all be moving to the graveyard. We'll see how what ends up happening here. Well, they would have been moved to the graveyard before the exile from Tormod's Crypt. Correct. Yeah, Sormans, I, I think you're correct. I'm having trouble parsing the second half of what you're saying, but I think it's correct. All right, Kyle, thanks for hanging out with us. And uh, yeah, hope to catch you later after your nap. Otherwise, enjoy that sweet nap. And as a dad of uh, an infant, I'm very jealous. As that infant, I think you should stay awake forever. I just wish Brandon would stop crying in the middle of the night so loudly. That is because of my trauma. (laughs) All right, we just had a library count. Ooh, spicy. I thought and Mike that's a tome or... that's a tome scour targeting his opponent. What is Dan yeah, planning here? Like that's Mike... about ten cards left in library, I think, somewhere in the oh, there's thought, a brain freeze. I thought you meant Library of Alexandria account, and I was like, Mike yeah. drafted that. Yes, yeah, so we have a, we have a windfall, muddle the mixture, and brain freeze in hand. So it Dan's it. it looks like Dan's gonna be going off the back of a fair brain freeze here. I don't know how to do the sheet, but uh Mason won two oh. It was not a freeze. It's on my computer. Do you want to bubble? I couldn't Ooh, what did we what did we make a pee pee poo poo from? Oh, Yeah. Thank you, sweetie. Ah, uh, what is that token from? Is it a is there a field in play? Oh, thanks. Oh yeah, it's right square in the middle. Okay. Yep. Okay. There's a there's a two two zombie token, titled Doctor Pee Pee Poo Poo MD, findable on TikTok.com slash at Doctor Pee Pee Poo Poo MD. Thanks. Thank you. It's sad. I have to drink to make Stephen feel better about his drinking. That's definitely a process. So right now, Darian is playing into this fair brain freeze, and I don't know if he recognizes it. Putting three additional lands into play, four cards total, so there might be about six cards left in Darian's library. I find it, yeah, it is It is interesting Although I think Darian just has, is looking for ways in which to close the game out and yep. sees, hey, I can put a land into play. That could be important enough to be able to close the game. Now that's a boo from the Minskin boo fame. Nice. Is, is there any any particular reason? Okay, so Dan got strip mined out of all these ding-dang lands. Is that what happened? I don't think Dan has played more than four lands this game. Oh my god. He just played a Black Lotus. This might this is probably enough to get the brain freeze win. Yeah. So if we get a library count, I believe we are brain fee brain freeze plus one more spell away from winning. Yeah, uh, I think nine will win the game. Yeah, I mean, Darian's library is looking pretty thin at the moment. Yep. So you can put Windfall on the stack, then respond with Brain Freeze and call it a day. That seems pretty strong. I'm with Here Black Lotus and players plenty four, of mana five, for it. Six. Oh, there's only seven? Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's game. Yeah. Game zony. Dar- Darian has plenty of cards it. in hand, correct? Hmm? Darian has more than two cards in hand. 
Yes. I mean, assuming he has two or more cards in hand, then that is game, even without any other previous spells. Oh, I see what you're saying. But yeah, with with the Lotus, Windfall, and Brain Freeze, that's nine cards total. Sure, yeah, so the Lotus like, was played. You're right, yeah, totally fine. And then you just lose an upkeep. I don't know what Dan's thinking about here. I, I don't think you even lose an upkeep, assuming there's a card in hand. Oh, sorry, draw threes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you lose right now if there's a card in hand. You don't lose from Mill. You? you lose off the Windfall, though. Because he'll discard his hand and then draw that many cards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Windfall is the most number of cards. So even if Dan has a card left in hand, that should be enough. Yeah. Yep. And he will. Yeah, I wonder what he's thinking about here. Are, are we sure this is Windfall? This doesn't look like either of the arts for Windfall. Uh, the second one is. I'm fairly sure that's the OG art. I thought it was Windfall. Let's see which one it pulls up here. It's not this one. It's It's the... There's a muddle there mixture, a but there was also, I thought, an original art windfall. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought we were looking at. Uh, I'm going to look for the original art just to make sure that I remember correctly that staff on the left <clears> side <throat> of it. Okay, but, so, yeah, given... This still does it. Yeah, it, that is a windfall that would have been a win in this turn, but Darian has no way to win on his upkeep, so he's going to lose on draw step instead. Yeah, I don't... Yeah. I do not believe... Um, I do not believe that that was a windfall in hand. Uh, it's not well, allied strategy. I'm, I'm fairly sure that's a windfall right there. Oh, okay. I see what he was doing. He was trying to. Okay. But, but maybe he just didn't want to like do the respond to my own sorcery thing too. Yeah, I, I think this was Dan trying to play exceedingly tied tied to Lee, uh, but realistically, they're you know just. Playing a windfall. Yeah, but there's a lot of ways to eat a recess in this case, and Dan Dan has has lost games that he yeah. should have won before because he misplayed something or just like got tired. That's so, so weird. That's I've, really hard. I've never done that. No, I mean you and I are both perfect players in every scenario. The only times I've ever lost games of Magic were because I thought it was I forfeited because I thought it was particularly rude that my opponent uh, mm. was playing cards that I didn't know what they were. And just uh, was forcing them. me to read them, and I don't negotiate with terrorists. That's smart. <laughs> I'll let you and uh, I'll, I'll let you and Peter continue this conversation. I'm yep. gonna go out there and uh, jump back into making sure this this tournament runs. I'll jump to standings in a minute. Excellent. You know, I'm not not about that life. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Peter, t- take me through uh, what's been going on in my. Hour plus absence from the booth. Jeez. So that match lasted a while. So we saw the the lands matchup. Prior to that, it was just a blur. I honestly forgot. We saw the reanimator matchup. So that was Max playing yeah. against Darian. Darian. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and I mean, this is a uh, you know. Jason really uh, driving up the back of the pack, but mm-hmm. it is it is crowded uh, up at the top there. Uh, you know, Mason in sitting in the driver's seat uh, currently, but, you know, Dan's still at three and one. Dan's very four close. And, Dan's four and one. One. Yeah, Dan, Dan and Mason at four and one. Yep. And I don't believe that they've played each other. Uh, Jeff is a full round behind as well. So Jeff can move up into kind of a, a polling position at three and two. I'm very jealous of you all. Fifth round. We're going to be able to watch the pseudo finals of the 2 4 1 Mason versus Dan. Mason okay. versus Dan. Peter, was Peter off at five our time or five his time? Uh, your time. I don't know if he's on right now. That's right. Okay. Um, I'll be right back. All right. Is it just you right so what's up? Uh, Peter's with me. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, me and Peter are hanging out. What's your deal? Do you have to leave at five your time or five five the other one? Uh, well, it's, it's six my time, so it'd be five your time. So I, I'm here for like another fifteen twenty minutes. Okay, fifteen twenty minutes. Okay, cool. I'll be back in. So, okay. Yeah, you guys, you guys do what you have to. So, have, we've seen Max on camera, right? We've seen Max do Max things. Yes, we saw Max do Max. Is yeah. there anybody we were missing? 
I I think that everybody has. I I think we could stand to get Jeff back uh, on on camera. Yeah. Uh, Jeff being at two and three uh, makes me think that Jeff's probably not in the best oh. mood. But uh, that's fine. Uh, yeah, Jeff. Jeff just reported in. It's Mason versus Heidi. It's who? Mason versus Heidi. Mason versus Heidi. I think we're saving Mason versus Dan. Uh, I'm not Steven. Um, but you could be. It. I could. All right, hold on. Let's change it. Da -da 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 -da. All right, what... Um, th this is your last, like, 10-minute stretch, so what kind of VRD topic would you like to touch on while we're... Uh, Spending our last few moments together uh, in the booth today. So we we talked about um, some underdrafted cards, and we talked about some very good planeswalkers, but we haven't talked about anything that we believe is overdrafted, have we? Uh, I don't. Uh, I mean, we talked about Narset, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I think um, I think Force of Negation is. A little bit overdrafted. I'm going to say it. All right. Um, I, I don't know that a counterspell with the number of restrictions that Force of Negation has realistically belongs in the first three rounds. That's, that's just me. That's okay. just me. Um, it's interesting. Uh, I, in terms of Planeswalkers, I also feel... Like, uh, Karn has kind of settled down into a position mm -hmm. where it's more appropriate. Um, I still think that it is a, a top five walker, but it, it is not the best walker in the format like I would, like I had previously claimed that it, it was. Um, okay. especially with the, the number of, uh, number of creatures in the format increasing. So... There's that. I think that there's a lot of piddly counter spells that mm -hmm. just get drafted. P people panic during a draft because they see counter spells going. They forget that cards like counter spell <laughs> exist yes. and don't draft them like today. And um, opposition agent is another one of those cards that is overdrafted. Um, I think people in their head, they think that they group Dothy Voidwalker and Opposition Agent or Opposition Agent and Hole Breacher together mm -hmm. just because of, you know, similarity of like a deck theoretically wanting them. Yes. And they don't do the same things. And <laughs> uh, Opposition Agent is not... You end up holding it in your hand more than you end up playing it, I think. Uh, trying to get value out of it when realistically the best value you're going to get out of it is as a or frequently the best value you're getting out of it is as a three, two attacker. Yep. I, so. I, I think that's absolutely correct about opposition agent. Yeah. It's just um, a flash more often than not. It's going to be a flash three, two. Yep. Um, I mean, we I could, mean, we could go through the list from today. Uh, and check out what cards were taken where. Um, but uh, I think I won't say that Wasteland is a. Here, let's pull that up. On the uh, There are drafts where Wasteland has gone last pick or has not gotten drafted. So I would not At consider all. that overdrafted but i will say that uh from jason wasteland at number four is a pretty uh pretty grossly overdrafted uh round for that yep um, uh, if, I, along that note uh, to fairy three i think was too highly drafted for what it's currently doing which is living at a sideboard uh yeah for, absolutely i think um you know jeff has let us know that uh, Teferi Time Raveler was a 
piece that he needed for hermit druid combo that mm-hmm. he <laughs> deked himself out of drafting. Uh, you know, kind of accidentally drafted a windswept heath instead of the something that he needed. Oh, yes, yes, I remember that. So, um, in that sense, yeah, absolutely. Uh, using a pick on an off-color walker that's going to be in your board, mm-hmm. not great. We've, I mean, sometimes the, the hard call is making the right call, which is not playing a, a you know, a color that you'd have to force. Um, it's a fairy time raveler. However, uh, is, is a card that you need to take early or is, is kind of wise to take early. If you are either going to be, uh, trying to snag up, cards that you don't want interacted with uh, and uh, in those same draft spots where the best counter spells are going to get taken. Mm -hmm. Um, Or uh, you want that in a a deck that gets extra value from playing sorceries at instant speed. I have uh, I have used Teferi Time Raveler uh, very successfully with uh, a in a Walker's deck uh, okay. with cards like Balance and Council's Judgment, um, where you you can just absolutely blow things out by changing it from sorcery speed to instant speed. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it comes in on four loyalty for three mana is really, really good. Uh, there's, I mean, that's why Teferi is so good. It's why Oko is so good. It's why Karn is so good. Yes. Um, because that is, it's not, I mean, the bolt range is kind of the standard thing that you have to concern yourself with. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, going back to underdrafted, thank you, Mark. Going back to underdrafted, uh, pyrostatic pillar in red uh, is... Does that extend to Eidolon of the Great Rebel as well? Uh, yes, absolutely. Those are okay. two red cards that are kind of prison-like effects uh, Mm -hmm. that need to be drafted. But getting back to the match, we've got Mason here on the right versus Heidi. Heidi has five lands, so does Mason, and we got Lutri versus the General. Yeah. Who you should go to to save some time. (laughs) So coming into this board state without any kind of idea of what's going on in hands, to me this looks like it immediately favors Mason. For a creature deck, I don't think being on six lands is where you want to be. Uh, nope. And I, it, to be fair, Mason has three land. Is that well? His hand is not as great as we have seen him have before. Uh, there's a force of negation there, which is not ideal against Heidi's deck. deck. Yeah. Uh, and oh, there's a Caracas, which is Lutri is legendary. I presume, right? Yes. So, uh, uh, what do we got uh, here? Look, Lutri isn't the worst legendary to put back in hand, but giving Mason access to the fork a second time is probably fair enough. A dire situation, you know. Break glass in case of emergency is where I think we are with that. Yeah. I, if I was in Heidi's position right now, I would be, I would be, I don't know necessarily frustrated, but that's causing you um, some amount of stress about trying to figure out how many times you take three damage versus uh, giving Mason access to time walking twice. Yes. Yeah. I, you are very much in the know of what's going to happen, both with it on board and back in Mason's hand. So yeah. you're kind of looking at the, the devil, you know? Yeah. So this looks like it's just going to be an attrition style game for Heidi until Mason combos out. It's hard to imagine a scenario where Mason gets snowballed. Yikes. Um, is that a sword of plowshare in hand? Uh, no, it does not appear. So, yeah, 
You know, I don't think that Prismatic Ending got drafted. I don't think it did either. Neither did uh, March. Huh. Prismatic Ending did not go. Neither did March. Um, but there were other high... Wait, is anybody else really in white? Is Heidi the only uh, serious white drafter? I think I that's... Yeah, I think that's correct. So, but Heidi did take other very high profile pieces of removal that are great in the deck as well. Council's Judgment is in there. Um, there's several blue black pieces, sorry, black white removal spells in um, Rite of Oblivion, Lethal Scheme, and Vanishing Verse alongside Vindicate that I don't think Heidi needed Prismatic. Fair point. Oh, no. So he didn't quite chain Treasure Cruise into Dig Through Time. There was a one-turn buffer, but... Six and seven. And... Was one of those cards the combo piece? Let us find out. I wasn't quite sure if the first one Mason snapped off the Dig was a red card. Three, four, five... Kiki? Yep. Nope. Uh, she is scooping. Yep, so that was not a... You there know, are I'm... two pieces of instant speed enchantment and in instant speed removal in the main, and they are Lethal Scheme and Vanishing Verse, both of which could break up the combo. And Swords to Pleasure. Uh, not in Heidi's main. Swords that was her third. Path. That was her. Wait, what? Swords and Path are not in her main board? That is correct. Not according to the Moxfield list. Oh, that seems like a mistake. So, in the sideboard are Containment Priest, Council of Judgment, Damn, Dire Tactics, uh, what else? Yikes, Path I... to Exile, Swords to Plowshares. Yeah, I have, I have, I have not, did not see the that list. I. I kind of made an assumption that uh, at least swords would be main board. The answers that Heidi has are purely permanent base removal. There's four pieces of them. There's another, what did I list off? Four or five? Four pieces of removal with containment priest being the fifth piece of interaction for this combo that Heidi can cite into. So it looks like Heidi wanted to be as agnostic as possible with the main deck and just leave it up to permanent base removal, which okay. is understandable and a fine way to go, only dedicating four slots to it. I get it. I think um, when you're making that decision, you kind of have to look at the field that you're going into. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this is a field where outside of Darien you want swords in every single matchup. And yes, even, I, even with Darien, the Ramanop excavator is how you're losing the majority of your matches. So mm -hmm. even then it's, I, I just, I think that uh, I would be understanding of not playing path main board. If you would prefer to go with a uh, permanent removal uh, rather mm -hmm. than just creature based removal. But, um, yeah, swords being instant speed uh, and just giving up life. Yeah. Who cares? We have, in the main, we do have Solitude and we do have uh, Ryu, World Warrior, that can kind of poke stuff out. Uh, That's fair. Does Kytheon flip into uh, uh, a removal? Uh, no. It uh, gives indestructible and gives minus two, minus O, oh, I think. Okay. Um, and it turns into a zero... Uh, or it's into a four four. Yeah, I I agree with 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 the summation. Like, I would still want like we've vanishing verse exile target monocolor permanent for a black and a white as an instant is a great a great problem solver. Yeah, I would think you want a third instant in there as well to be creatures to take care of the creature problem. Yeah, I think that. Like, I think that at the very least, you know, that would that is solved by drafting the uh, the prismatic ending, which, uh, you know, I think 
in retrospect, Heidi would probably feel like, oh, yeah, that would have that would have felt real good. Yeah. Well, leading with Badlands. Uh, okay. Interesting. There is a white source. All right. So Esper Sentinel. Uh, this is looking good because in hand is the uh, either Pyroblaster or REB. Mm-hmm. Um, and that Esper, Esper Sentinel is going to match up really nicely with all the shenanigans uh, that Mason has, although we do see in hand that there's that unholy heat. Yep. And there's no way Mason won't pay the tax on that one. Ooh, Comball. Comball. Yeah, Comball yeah. also hurts. Yeah. And oh, and he does not have uh, unholy heat mana. Oh, that's a breeding pool. Oh, the red or the pyro, one or the other. Yeah. Get out of here, water drain. Yep. Mason might be dropping this match here. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, SCI ma- uh, mentions that Mason seems to struggle with his mana a lot, and yes, it, it is. It has been that we've seen finding the red source, and I think it's because while Mason does have a handful of dual lands, Mason does not have any fetch lands to try and help. Yeah, that this. <laughs> that is the downside of uh, you know valuing fetch lands. F- you know, feeling that fetch lands are as overvalued you you're never going to get them at a price you're willing to pay and if you never mm-hmm. get them you're never going to have them yep that's just a tautology i think uh, but uh yeah um and and i'm good uh and then that draft uh in reptar did you need to uh do you need to do oh, yeah, uh, we can tag uh tag out in between games okay cool I'm fine. um so yeah um so we've one. This is uh, game two. Uh, okay, so Mason took game one. Who got game one? Uh, Mason. Uh, the I. So, Cumball is a two three, correct? Two three, yeah. Yep. So, for cow. Interest. Are, are we bringing Winter back? I don't know. Oh, no, I think okay. that might have just been Venser as a speed bump. Okay. I mean, Combo's really good against Mason here. Mm-hmm. Right, so I thought we would have seen more decks like Mason's, people playing a lot of ticky-tacky stuff to just try and, like, so cobble bitter, together. So Bitter Blossom, or, he <laughs> counters the Bitter Blossom and draws a card. Yeah. I, I thought they would have played more... Uh, cantrips, uh, more conditional counter spells to try and get where they need to go. So Kamal would have been a lot better on the field on the day, but and we have an Uro hitting, which can definitely turn things around here. Mm-hmm. And Uro's not going to come back for a while. Uro is what six to come back? Uh, I mean, he no it's, four. no, it's just four. four yeah, right. so his Crocs is six. Right? Yeah, uh, yes. and Mason has uh, has three green sources on the battlefield. The problem uh, is we are one mana short from recasting it this turn, but we are uh, three cards short of the escape portion. Uh, the okay, escape so the escape right. is six. Yeah, I thought yeah. the escape was six. Right? Okay, uh, so I believe no, it's five. Okay, okay, in the middle. <laughs> so yep. uh, we have unholy heat, mana leak, uh, archmage's charm. Is he gonna get? Is he gonna draw? Is he just gonna, no, he's gonna take the kaithian. He's gonna go take to five. Two. He's gonna take the kaithian. And no, she's gonna say take it. All right, fine. But is she gonna make it indestructible first? <laughs> I mean, oh. oh, is Mason gonna unholy heat his own Kytheon? Seems unlikely. Right. I thought that was during combat. The uh, Archmage's charm does not do everything I thought it did. It's not active treason. Yeah. Uh, and so, what we have morbid. To our hand, or is it delirium on unholy heat? delirium? Delirium, delirium. Um, okay, so that's an elite spellbinder, yeah. which is getting cast. It's pretty good here. If it yeah, he's got a mana leak in hand, though. So. Yeah, yeah, but then then he goes to three. Oh, and there's the encounterable from the cavern of souls. All right, yeah, never mind. I mean, he doesn't do anything, so I mean, yeah, it can deal him two damage. So I think you take. 
Okay, how does uh, Elite Spellbinder work with the adventure cost? On, cause I was gonna, both I was gonna say that I think it's Brazen Borrower. I'm pretty sure both sides, right? Yeah. I, that's an interesting question. I think you want to draw out the unholy heat. Right. I'm pretty sure it makes both sides cost more. But that is an interesting rules question that I'm gonna look at. A spell. So for as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may play it. So that well, part only looks at the card. A spell cast this way costs two colorless more. So I think it's going to affect the sorry, half. Comball uh with the adventure. That will that will hit that will count. That will hit. That will hit. Oh, all right. Lutri flashing in to block Comball, which puts this puts this back uh in Mason's court. Did we have no? We would have cast the unearth if we had it. Yeah, it, That's, it, it I mean, makes both halves cost more. Yeah, in that in that situation, I I don't know if you know who's I mean, in hand, right? Yeah, attacking in there is probably a big mistake. She does have the unearth, uh, but you know if you've got the mana leak for it. I mean, if it's in hand, then that yeah. feels right now. Fairly at least strong. the miner's a flyer. Which is Correct. An interesting, relevant uh, thing here. So that is oh, a, yeah. indestructible. That, that is a menace life linker right there. So we've got three flying. Yeah, but Uro attacks for six. That's not the indestructible. That's the menace life link one. Well, Uro attacks for gain three life. Yeah, that part too. Much more relevant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, Kiki Jiki. Trade those. Neither, yeah, neither creature on board can be kiki jikied for Mason. Right, but Jace the Vine Sculptor will seal away games slowly but surely. Yep. This is a card that I like I watching see people. Thanks for tuning in. This is a card I like seeing how people play because there are often times where I feel like the correct decision is to just start fate sealing your opponent to lock him out of the game because you already have an overwhelming hand as we saw with Mason. But some people just really, really like drawing cards. I've never been uh, good. <laughs> at, <laughs> I I think the first time I ever played Jace was... Threw that red elemental blast. She tossed yeah. that red elemental yeah. blast at that deceiver. Get the right fuck out of here, boy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the the early advantages uh, is something that Mason has been able to uh, bypass here, and uh, looks as though he's going to take this one down. Yeah. That that Uro ended up being a very good call. His, his one green card in his rug deck. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Bug really brought the room together. Did it not? It did. <laughs> did it Obviously not? Obviously, you're not a bowler. <laughs> yeah, this is... I mean, like a crocus here. I mean, I, what we're seeing now is the... Um, I mean, Mason's excuse a shark. Me. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, this yeah. is... What we're seeing now is um, similar to why we don't really see red decks is that this format in particular is one where unless your gas is rocket fuel, mm -hmm. you just run out of gas if you're exclusively casting cards that are three or less. Right. If you're going for that kind of efficiency, uh, you need to have those pieces uh, like... Expo made, exp even, yeah. exponentially kind of make themselves better. Right. Um, you know, like it, you can have every single, you know, you could have a bunch of lightning bolts that did four damage instead of three. And it's still not like, that's still not a good deck in my opinion. Uh, because you, once you've cast X amount of them, right, so it's, Uro looks like it came in out of the board anyway. So Uro is like, Hey, I'm going to bring this in versus the aggro decks. And you know, I mean, it. That makes it, sense. Uro is the card that took down Mike. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because eventually Mason would have lost a mana crit flip. Right. But mm -hmm. that uh, that gain three life trigger is 
just exceedingly relevant. Who would have known that Uriel was a good card? I doesn't make sense to me. I didn't. I didn't uh, play over quarantine. <laughs> but uh, right. yeah, Mason going up to five and one. I'm not sure how uh, Mike and Dan have fared since then, but uh, you know Dan might also be uh, at five and one at this point. I am going to let you two figure that out and take my leave. Awesome. Well, uh, it was great being on the broadcast with you today. Yeah. Uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate you spending a nice little Saturday Have with us. Have a good us. game tonight, man. Yeah, thank you very much. Arrivederci, right. man. Bye. All right. So we should be... Oh, now it looks like we already oh. have re... So this is uh, money kind match. of a presumptive... Pseudo finals, right, right. Um, yeah. As uh, as Caterberg lets us know, top of the standings. Uh, I mean, what we really want to see here is Dan take this down, right? Yeah, I mean, because not no, nothing against Mason, uh, but this it opens up a lot more lines for exciting uh, well, in the game, and, in the game stuff. There, there is a St. Louis versus Chicago pride. We have to, you know, absolutely. All right, so we've got some shuffling up here. Um, you know, so Mason has the counter suite to make this a fight, right? Uh, he, <laughs> I mean, very much so. Um, I am slightly concerned that all of Dan's impact cards cost three. Right. Or more. So, uh... Dan really wants to win this dice roll to go first. Right. I will say that much. Yeah, this is not a match Dan is chomping at the bit for. No. It's not when he's champing at the bit either. Yeah, either one. <laughs> uh, ch- you champ, I'll chomp. <laughs> fair, fair enough. I have teeth, not we, winning. We disconnect this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, this is this is a big one. This, is, this essentially determines uh, the outcome of this one. Much like uh, Dan versus Mason was uh, at the top of the pops for the left. That's yeah, hot. I mean, because if Mason wins, box cars, baby. If Mason wins Woo! here, he's six and one, and like no one's touching him. No one can touch him, right? Uh, so, yeah, it's more interesting at this point if Dan wins. Uh, I did call Mason going six and one. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, Mike is done with all his games. Like he's he's done in there. Oh really? What yeah. happened in his last match? Did he? Uh, we could pull up the standings on. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. Yeah, Mike ending at five and two. Yeah, so or, or, I don't know. It's been updated. Mike said no. He's uh, six and he says that doesn't make six. sense. That's not right. Oh, yeah. Match win four and no. He two. Got, according to oh, that, he's got play, one more. But play, it okay. The, why the? F- it's a stupid. Pardon, system. pardon my French. Right. Okay, so we're looking right here. Right. Uh, you you guys can't see where the cursor is. I. It's on our screen though. <laughs> All right, so Ma- we got Mason. Max five is one. up to four and two though. Oh, uh, that's interesting. Max has gone three zero in his last mm-hmm. last mm-hmm. three. Listen, I, I, it's never been done before. Never once. <laughs> never, before. <laughs> never before. Hey, Mark, if you're on audio here, can you uh, check with Mike? He told me he completed his matches, and I want to see if he just hasn't been updated in the the thing yet. Uh, Jason. The liar saying he was going to finish at two and five, finishing at one and six. Right. Darian at two and five. Uh, the lands deck splitting the lands cards. At some point, you have to audible out of that strategy. Yeah. Jason thinking that Stoneforge Mystic was the mistake. No, J- Jason should have ended up in like Niagara. Yeah. Uh, and he had all the opportunity in the world because, as we saw, the Hex Drinker, the. Nissa. I mean, the Blood Braid Layla Robert never got drafted, you know. Yeah. Maddening Hex. These are all very, very good pieces uh, to put together a, uh, a Naya deck that... Looks like Mason's on a mole, I'm assuming here. See, the, the reason I like a card like Maddening Hex... Pull yeah, for yeah, us, yeah. Uh, is because not only is it immediately impactful... But it's one of those cards that is really, really hard to deal with. It's going to cost you life to even deal with it. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, 
that is um, that is a card from a burn style deck, which, like as I've mentioned, the mono red deck that will work in this format is a red style prison deck. Mm-hmm. You can have like you not only can you have, but you want to have a lightning bolt in there. You you might want to have a unholy mon- heat or something like that. Yeah, right. I mean, obviously unholy right. heat, but like a monastery swift sphere, right. maybe. Right. But uh, if you don't have things like Blood Moon, Maddening Hex, Cinder Vines, Cinder Vine, like Koth uh, of the Hammer, even, um, or yeah. like a Chandra, uh, Torch of Defiance. Torch of Defiance. Those are the kind of cards that you want in a mono red deck because they have right, th- so those resources grow. We got five in hand. Looks like a lot of lands in a daze, mostly. And days in a is that a Mystic Confluence? Oh, it's a Confluence he just drew, so it was not in his opening. Okay, but. And then we have a uh, some kind of red blue land. Yeah. It's either Fury Karn, Karn Snarl. Is that that's, that's Snarl? That's Snarl. Okay. Yeah. So not a whole lot going on from Mason, but enough to counter a Hole Breacher. Yeah. See, this is why I think Echo of Eons not getting drafted was was such a right. big whiff for Dan because he can cast it from his graveyard. Right. Cheaper. I mean, you get a counter. Yeah. yeah. Well, and he already has LED, so right. he's already did half the work for himself. So expressive. Do you just daze when you express it? No, he plays the tape. He's like, I'm gonna daze some here. I all I think uh, in this position. Oh, that's a second whiff on expressive and no land. That's painful. Oh, oh. Yeah, I think in this situation, uh, you don't want to go down two lands to zero when you need to cast your other counter spells. Right, because daze is white, blue, and blind in normal. Yeah. Okay. okay. I was thinking it was blue. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, interesting to me also that Dan, in a Storm deck, did not draft Gush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so Gush is like... I've been loving Gush it, in the green decks with, like, Dryad, where you're just like, cool, I can... Yeah. I, listen, I love a good Gush with some crabs, yeah. okay? I mean, uh, just, even without the crabs, they're just like, all right, oh, yeah. oh, I'm just going to buy, yeah, cool, a Gush, and now I'll just buy the lands back because I have a Dryad, you know? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I've been known to play blue and green in the same deck right. with, with some amount of frequency. Uh, many of those decks also have Fast Bond in it. So you're not always going to get that kind of value out of gush right uh regardless like i was gushing. gush still very good card I let's see a bunch of stuff. i was just like cool i'll gush and then i'm gonna play this land again and tap for stasis <laughs> yeah yeah that's uh that's some good stuff right little shell doc shout out to sti <laughs> <laughs> the lover of shell doc lover of shell doc love maddening hex uh okay jeff just won uh, so that brings Jeff to three and three, I believe. Yeah, so Mike is four and three. So I got baited. Mike, Mike is done. He's four and three. Mike's out. It, it was uh, it was looking very good for him. I think th- for me the biggest surprise uh, is not Dan being at four and one. It's Dan's deck being at four and one. Right. I said this deck is like super can be super strong, but it can also just whiff quite a bit. Yeah, he didn't draft Shell Doc literally once. What? <laughs> he drafts it literally nearly every time. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> so he's, Mason may be running into a bit of a dry spot. It looks like he has another land on top of his hand. I guess this is this is Dan's fourth turn, so nobody's right. missing any land drafts. Yeah, Mason's gonna be fine. Yeah, I mean, Dan is not able to capitalize on the win and the you know the sli- the mole here as as well. I mean, once he's up to three, three or four, yeah, no, Mason, Mason's definitely uh, a competitor for that uh, shell dock. And a time walk off the top rope. So. In this situation, because you can time walk into Brazen Borrower, but like Dan doesn't have anything on the board, so he's just going to walk. You just you just walk it, baby. You just walk Explore. it back. Explore and oh, the, and there's a Snapcaster. So the I mean, the I, question is, I what, like to borrow to borrow the vault here. Um, no, I mean, listen, no. it's not it's not it's not 
wrong. It's not bad. Oh, and there was a force too now. So that's. Yeah. So. And. Let's just take three turns in a row so we can get in for two. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's not wrong. Yeah. It's not wrong. It's just whether or not Dan played, <laughs> nothing was really different about those turns. And Lutri comes to hand. Yeah. That's that's a huge tempo swing, obviously. Once you take three turns in a row, right. it's going to be. So we've uh, got what? Force of Will, so Ponder. Pull, let's go ahead and pull up Lutri here, since we know that that's in hand. Yeah, there you go. I'll let you. So, um, not quite a Narset's reversal. Just, we're talking a twin cast here. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't like that. That's too bright. That's his uh, stormy thingy, my bobber. The top die is his storm count. Yeah. So. I mean, so he's got Academy and uh, he's got a Lotus. So there's oh, oh, is that a Windfall? That has been played. Yes. That windfall is in exile over there. I'm pretty sure. Off of something. Uh, okay. That's his exile. His graveyard's next to his deck. Oh, oh the windfall was exiled off the expressive iteration. Gotcha. Is that one you can play at any time, or is that just... It's one, if you don't play it that turn, it's gone forever. Okay. So. So. so uh, we have a twister. So he's like, do I force the twister? I mean, we have seen Dan pull off some really spicy comes back come, yeah. come backs previously. Um, yeah, he's going so in to allow the twister. I mean, oh, still considering, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Oh no, no, <laughs> we are in. No one's decks have been picked up yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe not, maybe not, right. maybe, maybe not. Pause. Uh, you know, if I'm... Do you allow the twister? I don't, I don't, I don't think, think I do. think I do. Because why? Like, you, you counter it, and if they do anything to, like, force it through, then, like, okay, I'm going to yeah. keep going. Uh... And that's a lot of mana into, it's, you know. Now, I mean, he's going to get a, a full mid of seven. Um, maybe he gets forced back, you know. Fair enough. Uh, but we also, and you're adding to a storm count if you force it. That's accurate. I think it's unlikely that Dan had the ability to do any Stormingtons. Uh, right, but I mean, he's got brain yeah. freeze, so off of a, you know. Sure. But I like okay. It's like, tough. All right, I'll take twelve off the top. I'll take right. four, or I'll take fifteen. So we've off the got top. days. We survived that. Looks like we hit days. Vincer, Lutri's in his deck now, which is interesting. Yeah. Right, Expressive's back. Our storm count goes up. One of the things that um, I I'm not sure that Dan. I guess leaned into appropriately was the Tolarian Academy type things. Like I think I, he's got enough to make the Academy. Like you don't need a ton off of it, right? He's got Monolith. He's got Vault. He's got the Treasures. He's got I think one of the Bobbles. Like I think he's good there. With, with I think anything more, he's going to be watering down his deck. Okay. Like, I had an Academy deck recently where I thought I watered down my deck to try to go into Academy too much. Like, some, some of the little, little nicky-knack things. But it's a tight call. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, we, I think he's close to that line. Yeah. See, it's just, yeah, for me, it's hard to imagine playing Academy without, like, Oko. Right. And uh, for an, a, a similar mm -hmm. card like that. Yeah. Um, Urza, which was undrafted. I love some Urza. I think Urza is I, so much better than a lot of people give it credit for. It, um, it's it is such an incredible card, and I agree. Um, it's kind of right. I, the, when once you've seen that a couple of these cards have continued to go undrafted, and 
uh, you're safe to move into that space. Nobody moved into white, which they should have, and nobody really. So moved he pays into the white. one with his man, floating mana. So he made the days just to lower his value here. Tell him scours himself, right? And there goes Lotus. Takes Lotus back into play. Pretty decent storm count at this point. I can't we, see the die. We have the underworld it's, breach. Yeah, he's breaching. He breached the Lotus back in. And that storm count's up to five or six at this point. Yeah. I mean, this is something that Mason doesn't want to see because uh, you can have all the counters in the world, but storm doesn't really give a freaking heck. Right. 100%. I, I mean, at this that point. That breach resolving was massive, you know. And here's the breacher. He breaches the breacher. Pops the lotus. And wheel. And oh. Mason says, no, I'm not playing this game. Wow. Wow. All right. Dan gets there. I mean, was that... Did Mason not have a counter? No, I mean, he, he cast the days. He was tapped out, so he didn't have oh, a force. what did he cast the days for? I mean, he just made made him lose a mana to, uh, all, that he had floating on, I think, the breach, just okay. to ma make him have it. Yeah. Right, make him have the extra mana. Well, I'm going to take a mana because there's nothing else I can do. Sure. May, days was my only counter in hand, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think... I, th I feel like he had... Or my only counter I can cast in hand. I, he he had, might have had Archmage's Charm or something like that, but it, you know, he did, didn't have Did he mana. not have another counter... Uh, other than days, he had four. He had the, the time twister. He had the force, which it was the choice of force in the time twister or not, and he chose not to, which I think was a mistake, right? Yeah, I make him have it. Yeah, I mean, because he's at that point, he's still winning, right? I mean, he had so much on board. He had the lotus on board. He had all those things. Like, don't give him a fresh hand with that with that group, right? If Dan is playing a glass cannon. And you have the opportunity to take the wick out of the cannon. Right. Do it. 100%. <laughs> Look at me over here criticizing Mason's play like, yeah, I'm, any, yeah. like I'm any better. You know what? That's our job in the booth. Hell yeah. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm immune from criticism. Yeah. In the booth. It is our job to yeah. criticize play. As long as we don't take it too far. That's what like, we were talking about. Uh, a couple people got hairy about the uh, some of that that heads up draft that's going on or whatever, and someone was like, "Have you criticized?" I was like, "Oh come on, like let us, they're doing some crazy weird stuff. Just let them have it." Like I ain't criticizing any yeah. of that. I wish Mason and Viviana's match. Had, yeah, I, I heard it was epic. So it, it was very very good, and uh, Mason avoided dying to his own mana crypt. Like I think it would have been lethal like two turns in a row, and then he managed to get the. Uh, Uro out and attacking, which is relevant, right? Because uh, Mike had a torpor orb out, uh, preventing those uh, those triggers. Um, and, and for an epic match, it still ended up two zero. I mean, that was the uh, yeah. I I was under the impression that it was no, that it, was, it, was, it was straight two one, two but um, it, it was yeah. long enough. Mason couldn't remember if it was two zero or two one, right. so I verified with Mike before I entered the result. Yeah. All right. So these are our new No Glare Sleeves. Thank you, Jason Thurston, for getting us a, a good pack of these. They're decently hard to come by due to supply chain issues at this point. Mm. And we got plenty of them. But I, that also means we're all the same color now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, they are certainly better than the ones we've had previously, although I did think that they would be... They're, 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 they're not no glare. There's some glare. Right. Reduced uh, glare. Yes. Less glare. All right, so we see a dig, we see a spell, spell snare. snare. I want spell snare. Yeah, I mean that's spell snare solid. Uh, all right, dig through time. Uh, while we're uh, waiting to see if Dan resolves this mulligan or not. Uh, oh, look at no moles. So. We're good. We're good. Uh, in a mana crypt. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna be using the bathroom as. Hi, you do that, sir. All right, so this is we've got uh, island pass. Island pass. All right, folks. We got some hot magic here. Playing a little draw go action. There's the crypt Lutri into hand. We're just gonna move this forward here. Get this party started. Now we're gonna do a little mental note, milling ourselves for two. 
I don't know if he did or not. I, I haven't heard of any, and I think he would have bragged to me because I told him his deck was poop, and then he, he roll, rolls into my face with this. You know, I didn't tell him it was poop. I just told him I wasn't a fan. Uh, but th these type of games, like this four and one, this is why people keep coming back to the wheels. They they are very. Uh, they do it sometimes, and then other times you just kind of die in misery. Um, so it's a pretty interesting run here. And Dan's just a good player. I mean, that always helps. Mason clicking and clicking those cards. He got a little roll. Odds takes damage. I mean, I'm a odds ever in your favor type of guy. I always declare odds are safe because the odds are in my favor always. Uh, some people say it's the opposite and that evens are always safe. So he did not play the shell dot down. Probably meaning that he's got cryptic in hand as he flashes through. Yeah, and he does, right? So not playing the shell there, saying, hey, I want to be able to cryptic command this coming turn um, if it becomes relevant. And that is good. And obviously, we're not going to be doing, um, we're not going to be doing any tap down uh, effect with that cryptic. That cryptic is almost always going to be either bounce counter or draw uh, counter. This is not the match Dan wants to be playing, right? Like, Dan does not want to be playing land for land. So now we get... Oh, we forgot our roll. Oh, that was sloppy dice. Did it again. Oof. Let's see if we can get Mason down to one and then have him win a bunch of consecutive rolls. And I don't feel like he brought in Uro in this match, so. Uh, you know, I don't know if he needs to be that grindy. Right. That was a pretty miserable spell lock. It looked like four lands off the spell lock there. But uh, that's I... also good times because sometimes you're just like. All right, so we're going to say, hey, let's try to frantic. And he's like, yeah, okay. You can, you can all right, frantic. that seems all right. I mean, and this is the sign. Like, I, I disagree with his choice not to force the time twister, but like a good counterspell player, you know, you know, you're making these decisions. Like, what is okay and what is not? What is the threat? Do I want to let him dig? Do I want to not let him dig? You yeah, I, I, it sounds to me. I, I mean, like, I'm a shit talker, right? Uh, unintentionally, but Mason is infinitely better at playing counterspells than I am. Yeah, we're just, we're just making the calls that we see. Yeah. That one we happen to both agree on. You know? Yeah. Can't counter that though. Uh, what is it? It's a, a mole. It is drift of phantasm. So he is doing the same as metal to mixture, transmuting. Gotcha. Now. And most likely grabbing a wheel. So. Oh, it's a three drop. Okay. Yeah. Our, we're grabbing. Uh, what's it called? Uh, wheel of fortune, not time twister. Or are we grabbing time twister? I don't. Know. A one of them. <laughs> Not Wheel I mean, of Misfortune. I am a person who thinks too much about number of cards left in the library. Um, Mason does have a Shell Dock Isle, and Dan doesn't know that it's garbage underneath. Right. So, given that, are you grabbing Twister, or are you grabbing... It depends on what's in my hand. Fair. I mean, it depends on what's in my hand, really, I think. that Is there something I want in the yard or not? He's grabbing Twister. Okay. So do I want to recycle this stuff in my graveyard? Do I want to pitch this thing in my yard? Is uh, is Transmute only at sorcery speed? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Does Dan have a Lotus here? So we're going to flash nope. in a Lutri. Just go on the uh, Hey My Beats. Oof. Take three more. 
All those wins earlier. Because Lutri has to race his own mana crypt. Yeah. That's the real game here. Is that a Brazen Borrower in here? No, it's a Till a Dig Through Time, a Spell Snare. Away. What are you gonna exile? Oh, sorry. Uh, we're gonna pitch out this goblin engineer. Seems reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Lead. Not overly sure if the engineer has been good for him today. At all. I haven't seen it in action do much for him. But oh, <laughs> there it Jesus. is. Oh, we got some storm count going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> oh, okay. So we're representing 12 mana on board. Oh, Jesus. Uh, wait. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, 13 <laughs> mana on board. All right. So we're going to tap for three. So he might have already had the Wheel of Fortune in hand. Maybe. maybe. Or maybe he's playing Hole Breacher. And we know he this has a cryptic. Makes mana leak a lot right. less good. We know he's got a cryptic and a spell scenario. He's got enough to use both. Yeah. Right. That Kern. Oh my God. Like just chrome mine. LED. Black Lotus. This is. Let the, he lets it resolve. That's uh, scary. Wait, oh, whoa, whoa. He didn't crack the LED. He did not. Oh, that might end up costing him. Yeah, it could. I don't, man, I don't know if I let that resolve. I mean, I, maybe you just assume he has both and he's got so much mana, you've got to let it resolve and hope you get more? What What is he... I mean, Cryptic, because I mean, Cryptic's going to almost tap you out, right? Like, yeah. you're, you're going to have enough to Cryptic and then Spell Snare, hopefully, for the Breach. Like, that's all you got. You're, you're getting... Oh, man, th yeah, this is... This is not uh, the matchup for Mason that I felt uh, if like you crack, If you crack LED, like, Mason can counter it then. That's a good point, right? Like, that gives him more knowledge about... That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, STI. You are... Listen, I will say this now very freely. Dan and Mason are both better players than I am. That's why I have to draft Wacky Jank, because uh, that's my that's my edge. <laughs> that's the way that I'm getting around uh, other players being better than me. All right. So we've got a four storm count. We've got a little bit of mana floating. See what we got. Is that all right? No, we had no mana floating. See, I in this situation, I really wish that Mason had his hand up so we had access to that. Oh, so we got a Splinter Twin in there. We got a Vincer by the looks of it. Um, it's either Vincer or Maloku's corner. He does have Maloku, so I'm uh, it's Vincer. That is the time walk. Okay, we see a walk on the end down there. Uh, island, island, island. Is that... I don't know what's behind the Vincer. I think there's three islands in that hand. There's for sure t one. I don't know what that one. No, I yeah, think there's the, two. The, the middle one, I can't tell. Yeah. All right. Pop and Lotus. <laughs> Offering up the spiral action. Floating some mana just in case. I mean, if that's if he's got no other counter to venture, I think you have to venture the spiral back to his hand. No, he's got the cryptic again. Okay. So at this point, a brain freeze is for twenty one. Yeah. And it looks like. Well, did he get two off that storm? Because the cryptic two. I think he missed the cryptic off that storm count. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the there's that second dice is for the storm right. counters, not for extra mana. The, the red the red dice are for mana. Uh, I think one of. No, I it's he got a, he had a floated a red and two blue. Okay. On the spiral, or on the whichever one that was, yeah, spiral. 
So I think he missed one off his storm count there. Um, I think he missed Mason's cryptic. Right, I'll go. Okay. So we're going to double check a game state issue here. Yep, and we're fixing that. So, all right. I got a good call. You did? We did. I'm a good boy. You're a good boy. I mean, that's going to be close. I mean, we did not get the no glare dice. Okay, yeah, did not. Or the no glare storm card that uh, Dan brings with us. <laughs> Just this giant gold filigree thing. Dan, the cryptic there puts Dan in the tank a little, right? I mean, that was definitely his thought. I'm going to gamble. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, you're good. A little drunk. <laughs> I know nothing about that. We're going to gamble. We're going to see what we can guess here. I mean, it's a brain freeze, right? Yeah, you're going to gamble for the freeze. I mean, you're going to take the... I mean, you got two blue. And only... Because even even then, like currently on board... I mean, you can't. It's just all. it's just a Lutri. That's three damage a turn. Right. And there's you, Mason doesn't have enough mana to wait. So he still Mason still has one floating. So he can cast a Brazen Bar or a Flash, mm -hmm. uh, which is six. So he's got three turns. Um, this will be interesting to see uh, how the math works out because I, it might just end up being. Uh, Brazen Borrower, yeah, and uh, and Lutri racing to the finish. Got something here. Oh, oh, did he he he, he trashed Brain Freeze? I, yeah, yeah, that's how gamble works. That's, how ga that's a gamble. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what you call and, it. Right? And Mason untaps, and that's gotta that's gotta feel real bad. Yeah, I mean that's the gamble, right? That's uh, a that's that's fine. All right. Oh, the brain. Oh, the gamble. Oh. <laughs> All right, so now we're seeing the walk. We're seeing the Vincer. Yeah, I think at, at this point, it's... It is now Mason's. Mason's to lose. That was brutal. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen and gentle folk, See, did Mystical Tutor get drafted? It did. It did. It went in... Was it Jeff? Uh, like Jeff's deck. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because, like, you prefer... <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. If, if, if I'm understanding this correctly, you prefer to get a Mystical Tutor over a Gamble. For right. the most part. I, to be fair, the Gamble putting it into your hand on the turn you theoretically need it is the relevant... All right, so he's gonna untap. He untaps the crypt with the Thestermite. Dan's like, "What are you doing?" Okay, yeah, do it. and yeah, time walk. Oh, oh, because he only has one red source. Yeah, he's only got one red source. Interesting that it wasn't a. Uh, that he didn't use the Thestermite to untap his own Chiven Reef. Yeah, but I, I don't, even though Dan doesn't have a lot of interaction, I don't think he wants to do it without haste, right? I mean, you still want to, it's still risky. The, right? Well, the Splinter Twin tokens give. Yeah, but it has to be able to tap oh, the first time. Okay, yeah, right. yeah. Did you rip a red source? Does not, but I mean, five, five beat down is, you know, it's a thing. Especially when you got Force of Will and Vincer in hand. Oh, he Vincer's his own red source to his hand. That's, That's a beautiful line of magic right yep. there. Right? Uh, you know what? I wouldn't have even. You would have. I, I've seen you do that crap to me. You would have. <laughs> Maybe. It, it, it would have taken you longer to get there in this moment. Yeah. I didn't. Right. In that moment? Okay. You might have. It would have taken I, you... 
If I was playing today, I if we would were be a cock- lot less If drunk. we were on Cockatrice, you would be like, oh my god, blah, 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 blah. and then you'd be like, oh yeah, this thing. Okay, I win. <laughs> that that is fair. I have uh, I have pulled out some absolute bullshit wins over you. Yeah, but uh, oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. That's yeah. like the strip mining your own land, you know, own red source that I said Cody did the other day to replay the Tega from his graveyard to get the extra red. Yeah, I I think I had to do that with the uh, City of Traders last draft. Yeah. something like that. Nice. Oh my god. So we've got wow. another Dan's got look what looks like a butte there. And goes for the gamble to go for the win. Wait, that is that we're going to game three? We're going to game three. I thought that No, we're going to game three, sir. God damn. Yeah. This is this is too much for my... As the my Beastie Boys little... say, if it's going to be that kind of party, no. I'm going to stick my dick in the mashed potatoes. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking that we were going to Brooklyn for a nice... <laughs> no, no, we're not going to Brooklyn, unless there's mashed potatoes there. Well, uh, if we do, we're not allowed to sleep. Okay, that's true. Uh, okay. Wow, we're going to three. Moving to game three. I really thought, uh, for some reason, that Mason had taken down game one. That is nope. not the case. Mason had a good spot in game one, and then Dan just did the, that, da- did know, the thing. It's... It is rare. And it looked like he was going to do the thing that game. It, it, it is rare that you uh, take three turns in a row. Yeah. And then and have a force of will still in hand. And don't and, lose. And lose that turn. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that, that was a beautiful win there. Uh, the gamble obviously being the big. The, the, the reason that, as of right now, Mason is still exclusively at the top of the pile or is still alive to be the uh, the solitary champion. Max goes to 5 and 2. I've been there. Yeah. This look, is look, this is how this Max is how Max wins. Schroeder takes the 1 2 start. Well, it, I you know, I don't want to I don't want to speak things outside of school or whatever the goddamn phrase is. Theoretically, it could be said that perhaps some people here took edibles in the middle of the draft. <laughs> and that may be the reason for somebody's peaking during early matches. <laughs> I uh, listen, these are these are just Thoughts. I'm just spitballing yeah. here. Uh but that's uh that is it is not unheard of. No. But uh it's a hard fight back. It is it is, but once you get that momentum, once you get like once you go from start feeling o, your deck, zero and you know. two to two and two or three and two, at that point, like you, you really do feel like it is, like it's your tournament to lose. And sometimes it's just matches, you know. I mean, yeah. sometimes it's just matchups. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, personally, I prefer to. Except, <laughs> I prefer to play Mason early because I already know I'm going to lose. <laughs> Uh, Mason does not. Well, it's also hopefully he's. I feels a little less familiar with his deck at that point. <laughs> that is exactly right. That's that is my best chance right. to pull wins out from underneath him. Uh, it has not happened yet. That's right. fine. Oh, we got okay. So we got turn one Chrome Mox pitching the windfall. This looks like spell snare. Ponder. Uh, that's a shoal. That's not shoal. That's mute. It, it, that's the shoal, disrupting shoal over in his hand there. Oh, is it? Yeah. Counterspell wasn't drafted at all. So. Oh, we're breaching holes. Yeah, we're just breaching. Uh, well, actually, we're not breaching uh, we're, holes. We're yeah. fetching breaching yeah. off of our mo- drift of moles or drift of phantasms or whatever. It really makes you think, like, what what would, what would this matchup look like if Dan had taken a lot of his stuff at, like, what is commonly accepted as like an appropriate time, right? Uh, it really makes you wonder. So, drift of uh, give me. Yeah. Let's see. We know the one counter in hand is the disrupting shoal. Um, which can counter any spell, right? So it's target spell. It does not limit. That's why I was checking. I didn't know if it was limited to instant sorceries or, and it's like, nope, I can just exile an extra card and I can just 
do shenanigans. Yeah, Mason has been having some really intense matchups. Yeah. Man, I congrats to Max yeah. getting to five and two. Feels good. It does. He was my invite. He was one of my invites. I'm always happy when my yeah. invites uh, pay Look off. You. Yeah. Who invited Mason? <laughs> <laughs> His win Listen, last time. Listen, you can... Well, who invited him the first time? Because uh, they reached he's, out. That was he's them. really been clogging up yeah. the top of the they, board. They reached out. That was them. They invited themselves, kind of. It looks like an unlicensed hearse there in hand. A little Pestermite. A little Snapcasty. A little, little Jace. Uh, Mana Drain? Yeah, Mana Drain. That's a little the, Sholey. Yeah, Shoal and is good. I mean, again, this is not where you want to end up. I mean, this is where this is often going to come down to Dan testing the waters and seeing what Mason's willing to let resolve. Yeah. Earlier it backfired. Last game, it ended up paying off because of the gamble. Yeah. yeah. So Thought Scour. So he's so here he's at, so he's been Thought Scouring himself, but he's got the hearse, so he's thinking, he's like, do I want to Thought Scour him? And I can just hearse and you know, eat it. And he's like, but, no. I mean, but at that point, how do you even crew it? Right, right. You don't have to crew to eat. You just have to crew right. for the attack. Correct. I'm just saying, like, right. oh, I, 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 pardon me. I thought your point was that his line could be to just yeah. eat with hearse and then start getting in early. No, I'm saying just like, gotcha. Scour oh, him and just well. eat, just eat whatever he has with her, you do with hearse, right? Hearse is on the board. Right. And are we going to see a manager? We're going to see a drain or a shoal here. Yeah. We got the mana, so we might as well drain. Oh. Miscalc. Oh. Or disrupt, disrupt. Disrupt. And now do we see, that? does he burn the shoal? Is it worth it? Uh, How? He exiles a card from his hand, which, right? Which one? It has to be exactly X. Oh, it has to be exactly X? The card is... Oh, that makes it much worse. Okay, yeah. <laughs> right? I would, I'm surprised. Oh, he's going to disrupt with the Pestermite to get uh, the Breacher. Oh, the original oh, Breacher. Gotcha. Yeah. You know what? So do I. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Going th down three cards yeah, to but... get rid of a, a whole breacher. It's not a bad it's not a bad decision. Uh yeah, Pestermite yeah, Pestermite's Exiled. Exiled. Uh tapped out. No snapcaster for you. So we're we're probably gonna see if uh, if Dan can do it, try to go off. Oh, we're gonna muddle. We're just we're we're, we're just and that's that, unfortunate. And that so hearse what... is gonna start eating away here. Yeah. That hearse is gonna be really relevant here, right? So we're gonna see. Um, so he's just gonna be like, right, I'm gonna go for this alternative win, and if I have it, I have it, right? Like, I mean, yeah, that's the thing with Thassa's Oracle is you can just you can just brain freeze yourself, right? Or if he just has paradoxical whatever it is paradigm shift in his hand, you know. Yeah. So he's gonna eat, and he's eating two. Yeah. And if he paradigm shifts, that's that's GG. Right. Yeah, Wait, that, is it is it more than or equal to? Equal to or more than? Or yeah. Greater than? Or yeah, equal I think to. it's greater okay. than or equal to. Um, so we have a snap in hand. Oh, I putting a spell that. pierce underneath. It was three lands and a spell yeah. pierce. Spell pierce had bad under there, right? I, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, Especially if we're talking about Thassa's Oracle right. after a paradigm shift. Because if that gets friggin' counter... I mean, it looks like there's no command on board. I can't... But. There's a Jace, the Mind Sculptor. I mean, he's got Jace and Snapcaster in hand, so he can snap mana drain right now. I mean, that's the big thing. Yeah. So the, the big thing is he can snap mana drain, right? Like that hearse came off the mana drain man mm -hmm. earlier, which is nice. That's, yeah. a, that's a beautiful, uh, beautiful hearse. Mm -hmm. So if Mason wins this, this puts him with Elaine in the the most wins category for St. Lotus, right? Like, uh, I believe Elaine only had two. Uh, two. Well, if we count her, uh, no, she had, she, she lost, lost to John Ryan, Ryan in the tiebreaker. She had the straight win, and then the three-way before we had tiebreakers. So now she... I mean, if we're counting that, then I have right. two wins. Right. But this would put him at three. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to have to ban Chicago. Yeah. Sure. Don't know. 
Uh, is that mental note? Couldn't tell you. I can't tell you. Anyone in chat know what that is? See, yeah, you got good blue eyes. You're, 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 our, you're our blue-eyed Englishman. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, no, that's Paradigm Shift. That's what that is. That's, oh. par that's, that's straight up Paradigm Shift. Which... Yeah. Would get countered? Well, the, if you counter the Thoracle instead. Yeah, no, <laughs> Uh, correct. So, I think he's, he's just deciding, right? Like, Well, he's, I, I think what he's deciding is, does Dan have a four spike? Right. Yeah, I mean, he's got the extra mana for it. I mean, that's why he's, he's holding it up at a minimum. Yeah, he's going... Do, uh, wow, this is, this is, this is VRD, ladies and gentlemen, right here. We are in the throes of an epic confrontation. Between former two-time right. champion of the world, Shift Mason, resolves. versus one-time champion of the stuff. He gets to look now. He's like, I'm going to look. I'm going to see if the four spikes in here. I don't see it. It doesn't help him to know. Did he sideboard it out, et cetera, et cetera, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, this is SDI makes a really good point. Might be considering if the Hearst should exile. Wow. And that, god damn, that Sheldock Isle still being untapped still is super, super relevant. Is he passing the turn? Holy shit. Yeah, he can just draw Muddle. <gasps> oh no, and Mason drew a force of negation. <sighs> I have no oh idea what's no. going on. I, my, 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 I am in. Oh no! Oh Jesus Christ. Does Dan have an artifact in hand to give him a little beefier chunk of mana? I don't think he does. I mean, I don't. I mean, it's spelled, it's spelled out both players. I had a player's great. Uh, Sheldon, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So oh. no, Mason just won this. I'm pretty sure he did. Yep. Yeah, it's right. It's the, the only thing that Yeah, the only thing that snap. Targeting mana drain. Gonna tap these for the mana drain. Gonna present a mana drain. Stifle. Wait. Miscalc. Miscast. Okay. That. Force of negation. Force of negation. And he's oh, no, he didn't leave. He he can't cast the spell pierce. He's got a red mana. Uh, no, red doesn't cast yeah, off know. of Shelba. I know, I know. I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does he? Does, Does he, he have it? Does this motherfucker got it? Does he have it? My angina can't handle this. <laughs> uh, okay. There's a force spike in his hand. I saw the spike. <gasps> oh, but he can do that. He can pay two, or he yeah. can pay the mana. Oh, my God. Twelve, fifteen, eighteen, not enough. Oh, but he still has another turn. Yeah, but not enough. I mean, that's not... Turn doesn't get there. Tome Scour? Oh, he had a Time Twister in hand. Wait, why is this game over? He conceded. He was just like, I, it wasn't enough, I'm pretty sure. I, I'm, I'm going to go find out. I'll be right back. Okay. What? <sighs> what? Yeah, well, I don't think he... Dan can see it. Right. 
Yeah, okay, so Mason's top deck of Force of Negation won that game for him. Uh, however, uh, I'm, I'm still a little bit confused as to what happened. I, I don't think that... Uh, let's see, the Snapcaster could have used the red, I guess... Uh, and left up something for Spell Pierce. Mason might have just forgot that Spell Pierce was underneath the shell dock. I, I doubt it. Um, I would love to get Mason in here with Steven to talk about uh, the end of that game. Wowzer. What a friggin... Right, we got one more match left. Uh, so Mason's six and one, right? Yeah, yeah Mason's uh, one. Will you bring him in here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but go ahead and bring in Mason. You can interview. No, him. you take it. I, I don't feel like. Okay, okay, I got it. All right. Or Mark can do it. All right. Yeah. So. Okay, we got Dan and so Dan and Jeff is our last match just for figuring out which this is going to be one of the earliest ones we've ever had. Um, all right. So Mason goes with this uncontested blue shenanigans uh, to a 6-1, and one, only losing to the lands deck uh, with an aggro-y start. One moment here. Maybe. I must say I'm very happy for Mason, and I'm glad that he's going to do very well. He, I'm also very upset that he won. He is our winningest person now. He is the winningest person. Mason yeah. is the best vintage rotisserie player as of right now. Right. For Sam Lotus with three uh, three wins now. So I think it's where we nine. have to publicly shame Elaine for not coming to defend her win. Yeah. Uh, and also shame John Ryan for not coming to defend his wins. Right. All right. I'm going to let Mason talk here, and I'm going to walk around a few. Right. So. Uh, let, let's switch back to make sure. We, we have one more match. We're right. going to stream it. but I will pop uh, in to do that. I'll just let you talk to Mason. And Mason can stream good. a little bit of that as the winner. Hey so before he's banned from any more Sam Lotus. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Mason. Welcome. Hello. How welcome. are you feeling right now? <sighs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Yeah, I uh, I did. As soon as he went into the tank, I'm like, I should just retype my mana. He probably won't say anything. I should retype my mana. Fuck. I, I, oh my god, I'm fucking up so bad right now. I fucking tapped the wrong land. Absolutely killed me. Uh, but you know, he just uh, he didn't wind up having it. Hey, he told me he could have gone for it at the turn before, and uh, it would have been good enough. So it was uh, it was an insanely close match. Obviously, decisions made on both parts. And was, you know, the, the whole match one. was super interesting. There was a lot going on, and also our names are backwards. I'm going to let you hold this for a second so I okay. can type our names. Nice. It's okay. I am a legend on the microphone. Perfectly comfortable. STI. So, Shout out to that guy. Yeah. I mean, really, I feel like you've kind of grown up through the... Or really grown up is incorrect. You, you've created the Discord circuit, which is kind of... Now oh, well, leveled up VRD and it's that's way. a very nice thing of you to say. <laughs> I mean, like obviously there's a lot of people involved, right? But I, uh, you, you are one of the key players who has been involved in like all of the Discord drafts. Definitely, um, uh, yeah, it's super fun. The guys on there are super active. It's uh, it's a great time, um, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are very, very good at Magic generally. So even like in the new format, generally like you know people oh. play pretty well. Uh, it, it's a good time. It's yeah. a lot of fun. It, it's great to see. It's great to see those matches firing kind of like every other week. I'm. Mm -hmm. I think usually after one of these, we get a few of those that fire right out, right away because people yeah. miss out on these. Yeah. Uh, and it'll be cool to see what happens there. But um, right. yeah, uh, this is garbage. I will crush you next time. Hell yeah, brother! I uh, I want to give a quick shout out actually in that final match to Dan because in the three VRDs that I've played against him now, he should have solidly won two of the matches. Oh, our no. match last time, our match last time when I got to hit the playoffs against. Uh, uh, I, no, 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 it wasn't, yeah, it was the playoffs against John Ryan. The only reason I got to the playoffs against John Ryan is because he accidentally shuffled everything with oh, a windfall, yeah. and the, the ruling for it basically lost him the game, and the only reason I was able to win this match was because he got a one in five gamble. Uh, it was probably the game. I don't think the brainstorm would have been quite lethal, but it probably would have won the game, and it right. was a one in five, so. It really seemed like if it hadn't been... If he hadn't had to throw away the one card he tutored for, it would have been mm -hmm. game over at that point. Yeah, because then I, you know, I can, like, flash in my Snapcaster to try to get five damage on the board, but if I only have, like, two or three turns, plus I have to risk, like, I'm, I'm risking losing mana crypt flips and stuff, so. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> okay, so we, we do have a match here. Yeah, uh, Dan versus Jeff. That doesn't, like. yeah, it's Dan That's versus Jeff. Hell yeah. 
And once. both these guys have been crushing it today. Jeff, I, the the whole field wound up being really cool. Well, okay, I, don't, I guess I can't say the whole field wound up being really close, but uh, some people who had rocky starts have won a lot of matches in a row. That uh, is for sure true. It's been great. Like, Jeff and me, I think, played the first round, and apparently that's the only time he's lost. I The way he was talking about his deck, I didn't think he was, like, super excited about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's nice to see that he's rattled off so many wins. No, wait, because Heidi also beat him. I uh, think J- so. Jeff. Jeff, I think has two losses. Oh, gotcha. That wasn't sure. updated. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? We're yeah. all here to have a good time, and obviously, we already decided the winner. <laughs> oh, oof. oh. But we we do have the final match here. So I mean, hell yeah. So, so Dan's Dan's deck. Do you think you've seen a lot of storm decks kind of mm-hmm. try to get drafted? Usually, yeah. they're pretty terrible. Sure. Um, this time there's a lot of incidental hate in the graveyard, but not much storm hate. What yeah. do you think of Dan's deck overall? Like, is this a good storm deck? Uh, I think Dan's deck is great. So the last time I've seen people draft storm successfully, it was pre Underworld Breach. Yeah. Uh, and and just the the collection of cards is pretty different. I have not really seen a super successful storm deck using Underworld Breach, using oh, Cold Breacher, using that stuff. Hey, those two cards are pretty good. That together. was uh. Pretty quick one. It looks like he must have gotten a really fast coveted jewel onto the battlefield. Oh, it was just off metal worker. Yeah, it was just so metal it, worker coveted jewel combo. W. And then there's a hull breacher. Uh, pretty good. Yeah, but okay. yeah, but then it didn't matter. Tinker, wow. Tinker okay, and the not gonna lie, would not have expected that. I think this matchup is very one sided in Dan's favor. I don't think Jeff has too much game here because I think Dan's gonna be more consistent and much faster generally. Uh, unless Jeff, but, like, mean, turn one or two is a Time Vault combo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is uh, that is the power of the Time Vault combo, right? I'm very harsh on that card. I would have definitely probably called it my most overrated card if Brandon had asked me earlier. Right. Um, but it is fast. I think it's a little inconsistent, but it is fast. That's Let's jump over and look at Jeff's deck a minute, because Time Vault, I mean, Time Vault this time has collapsed in, in the standings, right? But we, have, we do have Time yeah. Vault showing up uh, as a third-round pick at this point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and to Carl, me, that Carl makes a fair amount of sense. Late. Yeah, the dynamics in this draft were really weird. It was sort of... Uh, I felt like this draft was very combo-oriented. It seemed like almost everyone was going for some kind of a combo deck. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you had, like, three people playing fair interactive decks, uh, which was really interesting. Um, it made a lot of things really weird. All right, we, and, we, we've had a realization... Logan has not made his appearance <gasps> on stream yet. Oh, yo, what up, Logan? Let's get Logan up here. Oh my God, it's Logan coming in. What up? What up? Your color changing cars. I think they're in the kitchen, so we can look for those. But Logan, can you wave and say hello? Hi. Oh, Logan. So Logan showed up screen. on what stream up? when you were only three months old, and now you're here again, and you were three years old. So oh, St. Lotus no. has been going for a little bit at this point. That's crazy. I actually didn't know you guys were doing drafts that long. I mean, I've actually gone back and I've watched most of the VODs from your guys' old drafts, but I, I had no idea. It was that long of a time frame, I guess. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Impressive. COVID, COVID stopped us for about 18 months, so mm-hmm. that's why I think there's been only nine, but yes. Sure. That's awesome, though. I mean, honestly, like, most of the groups that do these kinds of VRDs, like, they break, they fizzle out after a, a more brief time than that, and the fact that you guys are here and you're beefing up your setups and you're going hard, it's awesome. Hell yeah. yeah absolutely. I'll be right back. Apparently, I need to find yeah, some yeah, color-changing yeah. cars, but I'll yeah, let you yeah, switch totally back to the that. game scene and mm-hmm. see how things no are No big deal. I'll just, uh, I'll be in here doing my thing. Got to figure out which of these tabs uh, is the game. I have no earthly idea how to find it. Oh, God. Oh, it's all gone horribly wrong. Okay, maybe if I just start closing things. No, that's definitely not going to work. Well, guys, I know you're wondering how I managed to do it for a third time in a row. And let me tell you, really, <laughs> the trick is being really good at magic. That's probably the key. Shout out to my boy, STI. We used to get into arguments on the Discord about whether or not you should uh, just draft blue cards all the time. And it's worked really well these last two drafts, it I gotta does. tell you. I actually... I. One of the things that I really respect about the draft today is that so many people wound up in not blue decks. Mm -hmm. uh, Because I would have been really happy drafting a not blue deck today. Uh, But with the way the seats shook out, I I kind of got in that spot. There were like, you were one of two or three players that actually had a counterspell in your deck. It Mm -hmm. was shocking, the few number of counterspells. 
Mm-hmm. It felt actually a lot like the one where I did the Merfolk deck and just nobody else bothered taking any kind of fast or fast counter spells. Yeah. And I mean, you know, to be fair, I think quite a few people wound up with a really strong deck, so that makes a fair amount of sense. I'm sure, Jeff I'm sure there's got a better envelop, by the way. I think there's a, there's one that's sorcery, but it tutors. It, it searches through the deck for also things. Uh, invasive surgery, if you have yes, delirium, it searches, one. I want to say, for its other copies of the card, but it yeah, might it be just matter. other, yeah. So we, we, we talked about it as he picked it. We were like, you can pick the other one if you want. He was like, no, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Literally couldn't matter less. And we were like, wait, what if someone drafts a sorcery that also gives you multiple copies and then you did that? And we we're like, are there any? What if they've been here to tutor and you want to counter their spell after that and then uh, shuffle their deck? So, hey, you know, ooh, be thinking. now, Become that's a, a great, that's a great thing. Point. That is a great point. Okay, we're going to game two, and it looks like we got some mulligans resolving. Jeff's up a game and Invasive Surgery does dance. have worse art and a worse frame than Envelop, so. Oh, are you sure? I mean, Invasive Surgery's got that whole Innistrad body horror thing going for it. That's true. Kind Who doesn't nice. like that? It reveals their hand, I think. That is... Pro- uh, that could be true, STI. Yeah, that it does. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's probably better. But you need delirium, so like that's gonna happen one uh, one time in a draft, uh, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I yeah, think this is the definition of strictly Mark, better. I'm gonna tag you out so you can say goodbye to people who are, for your hosting duties. All right, that's well, a fair point. You and Mason, uh, we're gonna have Stephen and Mason finishing this out with the final game. Awesome, happy to be here. All right. Let's see. So I. I so Jeff. Sped out game one here. Jeff's three and three. That's yeah, so he just he powered the out co- that metal worker the, the and just won jewel, the following turn, right? Evidently the covetous jewel drew him tinker. He had the key, but it drew him like tinker and everything else he wanted. You know? Yeah. So I think he's a dog in this matchup. I think Dan's deck is faster and more consistent. Yeah, yeah, I know. It but should be. Jeff, but I mean, obviously it's uninteractive, and Jeff had like what a turn two metal worker. He's got more interaction than Jeff does, but it's still not much. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. He has a little bit more. I think he has a little bit more protection, whereas Jeff has some different sort of routes that he can go down. Right. I think if you block Jeff on one front, he can come around the back and and try to you know worm his way in. Right. Uh, another way with another threat, another you know tinker combo, different things like that. Whereas Dan's pretty one dimensional. He's kind of doing the same thing every game. Smooth brain place is coming for you, Mason. Uh, yeah, I don't know who that is. I don't know but who that is either. But yeah. Other than everyone that I just played out there, you fucking idiots. <laughs> okay, <no. laughs> that, that, that wasn't there. Uh-huh. Yeah, that match, man. That last match, whew, that was... Uh, I had some really intense ones today. Uh, Mike, who drafted the Grixis midrange deck, yeah. we had an absolutely, I mean, one for the record books. I wish we had gotten it on camera. It was epic. I could have done a, a an hour-long breakdown just on watching that match. It was, it was a really good. And he also, I think he said he participated in one of these before, but his dra- his deck was very good. I think he drafted very well. I, uh, I, I take that back. I don't think he drafted super well. I think he should have fought over blue cards in the early stages, and yeah. then. Well, it was interesting when, when we were talking. He said he was happy with the first part of his draft, but didn't like the cards of the mid, what, the mid around pack two. Mm. I told him I hated this first half of his draft, but everything after the fatal push, I loved. Mm, and that's interesting. like I was like I, I didn't like your death right shaman I didn't like this I didn't like you know I, you you took yeah. about therapy like way too early it, I think you know. he could have scrapped over some more uh, blue cards. Some stuff's going on in the game we should probably comment on it at some point but yeah so he's got a storm card out which is always a thing uh, so they're resolving a time twister right now which is fair I mean this isn't like inherently insane for not right now for Dan, he doesn't have anything that's gonna but do he does with have it. his lips in play which is nice that's that's half of it right or you know a third of it um. Yeah, I think um, I think Mike could have scrapped over blue cards earlier. Yeah, for but sure. it probably would have encouraged Jason, uh, and probably um, the guy who's playing Reanimator. Uh huh. Max. Max. Maximilian. Yeah. I think it probably would have encouraged those guys to take more of the red and black cards that he wound up taking. Yeah. Um, I don't so think it's Jason kind would. of an interesting push pull. I think he could have fought with me over more blue cards, t- tabled some of the rest of that stuff for later. Yeah. 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 Uh, but in. S- Said he didn't, which probably forced other people into having worse decks. I think a lot of people were very set in lanes, though. So I don't think like Jason would have switched up much. Once he, once Jason was in, the, Jason was going to go black, black, white, and then he saw Heidi was doing it, so yes, he switched to his that lane, was, that was and then funny. he stayed in that lane, right? Uh, and then I, I don't think it would have changed that much, honestly. In this draft, I think people were being stubborn. That's interesting. I got a different impression when I was in it. Okay. Um, in I, here, it I felt like people were being people, very stubborn. It's interesting. I uh, I felt like it was a pretty. 
I felt as though the draft was pretty tough and that avenues were getting cut off. People mm. were doing a pretty good job taking flexible, splashable cards mm. and sort of uh, discouraging other people from getting close to what they've got. And then it allowed most people to kind of execute their late game okay. strat their late game strategies in the back half of the draft. But I certainly felt the pressure kind of coming in from all sides where I'm like, man, I have to get another splash. I have to figure out how I'm going to actually win the game. Yeah, well, I mean, you're un- I was, your unholy eaten to four blue red lands, I thought was beautiful. And <laughs> it was just like, you saw red was really open. At yeah, that, that, was, point. that was a funny one. There was only really one guy drafting like reasonable red cards. Right. There was a lands player, but he was drafting goofy stuff. Right. Like, you really like I was about. surprised you didn't grab giant, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you or, so, I, I had so many great You or cards. Mike, right? Sure, like giant yeah, yeah. Would have been Mike, Mike could have gotten away with right. it. Um, so we've had a little bit more development in the last two turns. we got a lightning grease. We've got some mana development from Dan. Dan's probably just posturing up and looking for... Yeah, like, he's, he's looking for pieces at this point. I think... I, I would imagine Dan is probably in the mindset where Jeff can't really one-turn him super easily. So he's yeah. probably thinking, well... I mean, if he tinkers that opal into a, uh, you know, yeah, into a that's, steel, that's true. I guess Jeff freeze. does does have so so Dan's probably just trying to get either some colored mana online, or uh, okay. So we Drift see him Fantasms. going. For, uh, I think this usually gets him whole breacher. Uh, it'll either it'll get him one of the it'll get him wheel whole breacher or which are, yeah whichever Twitch, half he doesn't have, already in the yard, something so. like that yeah. So that makes sense, Jeff. Looks like after the wheel came out, he just played a lightning reason and passed, which is. Yeah. So I mean, it's possibly setting something up. Like next turn, he jams a metal worker, taps his whole hand, boom. But could have oh, yeah, I mean, he could have done that last turn. He could have just played the. He can also just tinker the opal and bite still, bite still greeds go. I mean, that's the that's the play, the biggest the biggest threat from this board. Yeah, that's probably true. The only thing is, he could have theoretically just tinkered last turn and just had the bite steel in play. Right. Which would have maybe insulated him a little bit more from a wheel effect, whereas so this line, or... if he gets wheeled, so he's got. Play. I mean, he's got mock, or he's got lotus and three mana, so he can just do this if he's got wheel, right? Like he can. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Well, and he's got lotus in play, right? In play, which is you know almost always what he wants. But we will see. That would require him having wheel of fortune in hand or a windfall. Windfall's not uh, as good. Or windfall. Uh, yeah, because Jeff probably has six or seven cards in his five hand. Five to six, at least. Five, five or six, yeah. I mean, I think um, last time he just played, you know, after the time twister, he played land. So he drew, played land. So he's probably got six. Yeah. Yep. Which would certainly make for a nice draw. But no, yeah. he's got Pretty nothing. Turn. Dan and Jeff both kind of stuck after that wheel, and it doesn't look like either of them really hit the nuts. So we'll see whose uh, hand is better at developing from this point. Not three mana, so that is not likely. Tinkery. Yeah. Uh, this mic's been really weird all day. Like sometimes, like it appears way too loud. <laughs> right, right, been, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been super inconsistent. Just um, get a little stand for it. Keep yeah, it right there. Well, we were just trying to go that one, but it wasn't doing its job. It's still up there, but yeah, that makes sense. Uh, it wasn't carrying through. So what does Jeff need here? I don't know. I mean, so he's, he's got looking... so he casts two for the signet, mm-hmm. and he's gonna ship it back. Yeah, it kind of feels it. like he just doesn't really have anything. Now I didn't take a super close look at his sideboard. It's possible he could have some interactive stuff that he's sitting on post board. Right. That would make a bit of sense as to what he has in his hand, right? Because one of the one of the lesser talked about skills of magic that I've seen people sort of talking about a little bit more in the age of MTG arena is using uh, inference to figure out what your opponent has in their hand. And after they, we- a, a deck like Jeff, right? After he wheels uh-huh. and just doesn't play stuff, it's either he's got all lands in his hand right. or he you have to start trying to figure out what he's got. And interactive spells would make sense. It looks like he cycled Rogren Triome which to me probably means he's just land flooded. Probably just drew a shitload of lands. He's got he nothing just, going on. Uh, Wish is almost certainly going to be lethal. Uh, with the whole breacher sitting there, I'm sure he's got some kind of wheel or draw. He's got the spell seeker in the sideboard that. He's got the Tormod's crypt in case he's just going to go for the. Uh, the. Uh, Thoracle. Th- 
Oracle. Sure. So yeah, can, yeah. He was just going to correct. Uh-huh. Uh, we'll see. I, I feel like this should probably be good. Okay, there you go. So he did have at least one interactive yeah, so spell. He's got that to smoke that guy and, and get two treasure. And the wish is for the time spiral. No, I think this is getting... Uh, Force the wish is getting countered, right? I think he, he, he went for the wish for the time spiral and then cast the time spiral. I think that's what it was. Oh, okay, okay, sure. And then... And then the he offer, cast in right. response, and he force spiked it, and now we're going to go time spiraling, right. which means Dan's going to have a million mana, Jeff's going to have no cards, right? and that's probably going to be the game. Yeah, uh, so the wish was so for the time spiral, and then the force spike was the backup for the offer you can't refuse. That makes a lot of sense. Offer you can't refuse, pretty huge card. Yeah. Kind of a gasser. I think Jeff's picked that in both the drafts now, right? He picked it in the last one, maybe? Uh, I was not commentating for the last one. No, no, no Nuke was not out for the last one, so it could not have been. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, there you go, then. Um, speaking of new Penna, Unlicensed Hurst. Woo! Unlicensed good. Hurst. The card's good. Woo! Wow. That it card was off that mana drain cast. That was, a, that, was pretty key. that was pretty clutch for that game. I was like, that could be a, a big, di big difference maker in this game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, uh, I mean, we can keep commentating on this game, but it's probably pretty over. We'll, we'll say if there's anything interesting that happens. But I want to talk for a second, you know, while I got you here. Yeah. Uh, Brandon said after the draft, you guys were, were talking about Ledger Shredder a lot. Mm -hmm. oh, I was and, talking about Ledger through the draft. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. yeah. And he was saying he was really, like, you know, pushing, he really wanted me to pick it the entire time. So I'm going to say, I did not forget about Ledger Shredder. I didn't think you did. Consciously thought about it early, decided it was not going to be the jam. And the reason for that... In Out of the three decks that wanted it, yours was the one that wanted it the least. Yeah. Um, I was looking around and seeing all the different sort of combo decks, mm -hmm. and the idea of tapping out on turn two for a ledger shredder or turn three and then playing a cantrip so you get the uh yeah. connive right away did not seem very good to me when i thought i was gonna have to focus on being so instant speed yeah yeah no that makes um, perfect sense like ma ma it was much better in max's deck and in in uh, mike's deck than it in made a lot of sense in this right. decks um i would have expected max to have taken it very yeah max quickly. said he just forgot about it yeah, yeah. He said the same thing about expressive iteration, but he hasn't honestly, played as much recently. He's a much older sure. school player, and mm. he, he, I don't know yeah, how much yeah, he plays yeah. on arena, but I know he doesn't play much. Mm -hmm. uh, as much over yeah, that makes sense. Right. You know, like uh, Merc Tide went late. Like those are right. cards that, like, if you're playing a lot right now, since they're so yeah. big in every. Yeah, format, Viviano plays a lot right now, but he saw the, the sure, like, sure, yeah. yeah, makes sense. Yep. Yep. And so we got Dan taken down. So yeah, no. Like kind of Legend Shredder was definitely one of the the good undrafted cards. I don't think it was right in your deck, right? Because you, you just what you said. You're yeah. It, it it was actually so far to that side that I really considered taking Factor Fiction over Jason Mind Sculptor mm -hmm. for that exact reason. I was right. Like, no. Man, tapping out is just going to be so brutal. The last time I had that, I drafted Jace where I had that blue black controlling list. I, it was Jace. I there was a couple times where I'm like, okay, cool, I'm gonna tap out for Jace, and then I'm like, okay, cool, I lost because I tapped out for Jace. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It makes for a tough spot. I, I had a feeling I was going to draft Disrupting Shoal. When you draft Disrupting Shoal, you really want cards like 1 through 4 right. on the mana curve, uh, at least as thick as well, you Jace can. Jace did you good in games I saw, so I mean... Jay, yeah, yeah, he was good. And he also lets you... You know, people don't think of Jace as a combo card, but there are a bunch of sequences with Jace where you can bounce your own creatures, mm -hmm. like Snapcaster Mage and Lutri and Eternal Witness, and then oh, continuously like you replay... You, you bouncing your, uh, the, the beautiful line where you... Uh ventured your red source back to the win. You know? That was a top... Yeah, yeah. yeah that was... Uh, I was really just hoping to draw another red source. Yeah, there, yeah. It was funny. Um, yeah, picking up Time Walk, one of the... My favorite thing to do when I draft Time Walk is try to do, like, an Eternal Command style deck, like Eternal Witness. Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, what was the woman you drafted? Black, white? What was her name? Um, the one... Oh, Lutri? Or uh, Heidi? Heidi, yes, yeah. Heidi. Heidi was a lot of fun to play against today. Um, Heidi drafted Aether Vial, and no. I didn't realize how much I was going to want Aether Vial. <laughs> I commented on it in the last draft that between Brazen Borrower and Lutri and the Million Click and all did these three mana cards, I didn't. I okay, didn't I'm surprised it. you didn't. Um, I think Arriba I probably Dirty. very easily. You got Arriba Arriba Dirty, congratulations. All right. Oh, thank um, you, my friend. Um, yep. yep. See you in the discords. Well, much love. Absolutely. Nice seeing you. I can't wait for our uh, St. Louis versus Chicago throwdown yeah, where you're going to get to beat up my former roommates. Yeah, you're going to get fucking thrashed and hammered. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. Take it easy, brother. All right. 
So I think uh, I want to say um, Max in this draft was five and two. Yeah, Max is finish. five and two. He's right now. Which was if awesome. Dan wins, they they're tied for second, and then they'll just will split the two, second and third without a playoff. But mm-hmm. Max will. If Dan loses, Max will take it down uncontested, second place. That's great. I assume you guys talked about the Applebee's gift cards. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, someone, Jason, gave them, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I told yeah. I told Jason what he should have given was uh, pos- or, uh, Olive Garden gift cards because he could have said, mm. no, it's not, I'm just not giving you gift cards. I'm giving you family. <laughs> <laughs> Olive Garden gift cards are great. Those are, those are worth the money. You get yeah. all that nice hearty pasta. Yeah. Oof, delicious. Yum. Pull it, have his Vin Diesel. I'm not there. just giving you money. I'm giving you family. Um... Right, so we yeah, got but six. he brought a non-alcoholic food item. So yeah. when I saw that, I was like, oh, I got to go serious try-hard <laughs> try mode today. Wowee. You're not a drinker, are you? That's right. No, no, no. But, I mean, I... Uh, Re-gift all the stuff. <laughs> I, I have actually given most of the bottles away. Yeah, I mean, they're great gifts. I mean, that's yeah. why that's why we say it. it's something you would be happy to give at a wedding present, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right, we, so we got uh, Island Island here. Right? Snow-covered perfect. Island and then Let's an start Island. start her up. Fire it up. And uh, let me get this other bang over here. Bam. Nice. Ooh, the yeah. fast black lotus, but no big combo turn. Jeff has a play on turn two, but is it uh, just a mana rock? So kind of just development going on. Yeah. But did yeah. Dan? No, Dan didn't miss a land drop. Jeff was on the play. Right. So we've got yes. Island. Yeah, I Dan doesn't have too much development in his deck, I don't think. There aren't too many things that he wants to get out and play. You know, he doesn't have um, Barals and Goblin Electromancers and this stuff. Right. For the most part, when he starts playing all his cards, it's gonna be because he's gonna go for it. Hull Breacher, I would say, is kind of the one yeah. unique card that, that he wants to the get The turn where he went, like, Chrome Mox, uh, LED, Lotus, and then the gamble didn't pay off. Like the, the ga- We lost the gamble. I was yeah. like, oh yeah. my god. The ga- that was I was a, like, that's a gamble? That's why it's a gamble, right? That's, the, that's why it's a gamble. <laughs> that's the gamble. Uh, yeah, that was a brutal one. In game one, I was actually uh, pretty happy. Like, generally, I think I'm pretty happy when he starts wheeling because I've got so many. Right. Yeah, we, we, we were heavy spells. in on the, like, we both thought you should have forced um, the, t- the Twister game one. But. Yeah. I, you know, in retrospect, but oh, yeah, my thought was I mean. that I had so many nice two mana right. counter spells with two mana, right. with two got lands open. Oh yeah, see, and Jeff is Jeff's kind of got the opposite thing going on. Everything that he plays really builds him up towards that right. that night those nice combo turns that he's looking for. So we're gonna consider here. Sure. Uh, consider one. I'm sure Max would have uh, really really liked. Right. Thank you, STI. I appreciate there that. There we go. Tough spot. But, uh, yeah, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Yeah, as a, like, but we both also said you're probably better playing counter spells than we are. <laughs> like, that's, uh, you yeah. know, I've got you guys have been so complimentary to me today. Thank you, for, thank you for that. I appreciate. Well, we try to do an announcement. We try not to call you a bitch until you're a bitch. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mark's been Mark's. Uh, I will say I will always say Mark's usually really complimentary, and then yeah. he I see him with a you know two hours later with a beer, and he's like, ah, fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I imagine Dan is thinking he had to go off here, but nope, he's got a meltdown. Yeah, that is brutal for Jeff. Yeah, yeah. And he's sacking his Lotus in response to see. Now, this could, I mean, pretty big deal that Dan's getting rid of his Lotus here, right? Because right, that yeah, is that's huge. having it in play. Now, unless he just breaches here, then I guess that's the. Uh, yeah. Well, he can models. use the mana for transmute at least, yeah, so he can go get breach. Uh, yeah. set things up with Lotus. That's nice. Uh, meltdown there, absolutely brutal. Yeah, meltdown is uh, really really nice. It's a silly card. <laughs> I think it was my match on camera earlier with Jeff, where I like turn one thought scoured myself and flipped over and she crushed. Yeah, you uh, That was a filthy. Uh, your snapcast and a recall was quite a beautiful thing there. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Snap, snapcasting now, protocols. I was like, that's probably the prettiest snapcaster I've ever seen, and I've seen some pretty snapcasters. <laughs> and now, unfortunately, Jeff looks like he's a little steamed out. Yeah. So if Dan is getting there this turn, I think I glimpsed his hand and I saw that he had brain freeze. Right. Well, if, if, if we just wheel here, I mean, that's just the... Wheeling is probably good enough. Right. It's like either, either wheel... Or brain freeze. 
Uh, Brinker's probably not going to get there, but Wheel or Windfall will get his engine going enough to, to go, right? I mean, that's a... Brain, just, I think Brain Freeze is good enough, right? Because the first one is six cards. Oh, he hits himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah he goes yeah, out for himself. Um, I want to say I saw it in his hand, but it could have been when he was searching his library, so we'll yeah, see. That's a time twister. There you go. He's not, Yeah, yep. he can't play the Black Lotus from his graveyard, so that's not... Oh, no, 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 no it's a frantic search. Twister. It's not a time yeah. twister. Hello. It's kind of even better. <laughs> Freeze is 100%. Yeah, STI yeah. over there. He knows how the lines work. Playing out Lotus with Meltdown now is probably not ideal. Yeah, I'm a little curious as to why he did that. I'm wondering if he had some instant or something in his hand that he thought he might need to interact with. A eh, I mean, little bit of a weird play, but... Um, you can only sack that Lotus for mana, so who knows? might not really right. matter too much. He pops it for his line. Instead, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's, and a, that's, that's the brain freeze target himself. Yep. And that's uh, that's going to wrap and Jeff, up. Jeff also very familiar with these kinds of decks. And he yeah. when he's dead. So, yeah. so Dan goes Woo! to five and two. So we have you as the champion, and we've got uh, those two split. Max and Dan tied. You know what? Honestly, I have not played with Max very much, but Dan definitely deserved this. I really yeah. I, no, I appreciate the fact that he crushed it this time because he deserved it. Yeah, he, he, he plays played his butt off. Today. He plays pretty well, and honestly, I think is the last time he drafted this deck, it went one and it, six. Yeah. Which was a tragedy. <laughs> yeah. he, he should have done a lot. I was his only win, and it was all, and he only won it because he top decked the time spiral he needed. Like it was just right. like it was like dead card. He was completely dead on the board and everything, and mm -hmm. he's just like, all right, you mm -hmm. can go hard of the cards, and he flips it, and it was the time spiral he needed to win, and it was just like, all right, well, that's that's uh, you know. uh, it's kind of a given. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I my usual line for these kinds of things in a seven round. Uh, round robin tournament. It's hard not to get unlucky at least once. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what's so hard to go undefeated. I mean, it's just it really you're gonna is. have. It I really mean, is. like you know, you yeah. lost to the land deck, right? I mean, it'll, yeah, yeah. Which uh, you know, and, it looked, yeah. and the like, game three was off of like aggro Urza tokens. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, there were other, you know there were a bunch of matches I could have lost. Right. Like if one card broke a different way. Yeah, absolutely. So you get first pick. And you know what I'm getting, brother? Yeah. You know I'm going to the apple. All right. Going to the Apple Store, baby. All right. All right. Well, Good you go out there and do some computer. picking, and I'm going to sit here and talk for a few. And then when Mark comes in, we're going to shut this thing down. So Awesome. Thank right. you very Thank much you for joining us for this last Anyone match, who was watching, appreciate it. Much love. The winningest VRD player in St. Lotus history. There we go. Station. He's winning a third. Won a third of them now. Yeah. Won a third of them now. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's just seven matches. That's just... That's a real feat uh, in a format with open lists and hate picks and, you know, a lot of luck, right? So, you want to explain these beautiful prizes? All right, so, win? like I said, normally our, our VRD is, uh, you know, the idea of a food, uh, the food or liquors, Lupe Fiasco, right? So, $50 for the food or liquor, something you'd be comfortable giving at a wedding. We try not to deal too often in things like cards and or cash or things that similar because we just don't want it to be that. But uh, this version of food, just because Thurston did it, with, we have uh, $100 in Applebee's gift cards. It's true. So, it is as close as you will get to winning cash. It's true. At Jason St. loves to tell the story. He's like, I wanted to get $50 for the Applebee's. Mark immediately shut him down. He said, no, no, no. It has to be something actually worth $50. Right. So it's $100. So he, he came back with 100 Yeah. And the non-alcoholic Mason gets to pick up a nice dinner for me. There we go. So, all right. So Mark's going to join us here, and we're going to wrap up and shut this baby down here. This may be our fastest one yet. I think so. This is really impressive. Uh, let's switch to the to the view yeah. Show the viewers what they want to see, you know? Me. Right. Obviously, us. That's yeah. that's always the top the top goal. Exactly. So, uh, all right. So, Mason is now, um, as we said, the winningest in St. Lotus. He's taken down a third of these things, and we might have to uh, use that to somehow trick Elaine into coming back and kind of defending her title. Or John Ryan. Or John Ryan. Uh, I think they are both tied right now. Uh, John Ryan, does he have two? I think he only has one officially. No, I think he got two. I think they both... He took out a lane in a tiebreaker. Yes. And, and then, then also he won. lost to Mason in the tiebreaker. Oh, is that true? Yeah, because he beat... He had the, uh, the reanimator, and he beat Mason in the prelim because he reanimated Iona and just locked the Elves deck out. But Mason outplayed him in the, in the, in the playoff. That's fair. So I'm, I'm pretty sure John Ryan's officially won, a, won, a, you know, won with a second... The tie, so 
Hey, Mark Steven. This is very complicated stuff. Yeah. Trying to. Nope. All right. I'll fix it. It's fine. So, uh... this was overall a great draft. I think we finally got to see Storm kind of do its thing. Yeah. Uh, Dan pushed it to a level that. Honestly, it's pretty impressive given how hard Storm is to draft. <laughs> we're both Steven. Steven and Steven. Steven and Steven. All right. We're Great. good. You know us by this point. This is Mark. I'm Steven. Ha- this is Mark Kederberg. I'm Steven Hagen. And we are St. Lotus Vintage Rotisserie Draft. Mm, not quite the best uh, heavy metal band. No, not quite the best death metal band out of Denton. Yes. Uh, best ever death metal band out of Denton. Not quite. But uh, that, that, that exists too. Yes. Um, but no, it, it's been a really good draft. I think this is one that we're going to look back on and wonder why nobody else jumped into blue uh, and let Mason kind of have that lane free. Yeah. But this actually feels very similar to me to the last St. Lotus Presents. It, when I look back on it, kind of at a really high level, right? You mm-hmm. just kind of have a blue lane really open and everyone else fighting over combo decks um, that don't really come together. So, right. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a, it was interesting. There were a lot of players that... Now, I commented and when in the booth, we thought mm-hmm. that people were being very stubborn and didn't like adapt yes, to the draft. I agree. Mason said he didn't see that out there. He felt really? that people... Like, were adapting, taking picks that they knew would keep their lane where they wanted, right? But yep. so there was the micro adaption. So it wasn't like I'm just being stubborn and taking bad cards. Yes. It's I'm going to take these things to keep my lane where, you know, keep me things going in my lane, et cetera, et cetera, right? Right. I think um, people didn't want to pivot off their strategy because everyone came with one deck. Right. But people inside of their strategy absolutely changed their pick orders, right? People right. picked cards ahead of where. They would have otherwise in order to snipe them from other people, right? We saw this with the Time Vault deck. Uh, we saw this with, like, there were a bunch of decks where um, secondary pieces got taken far earlier than they should have. Right. Um, based on the, like, Lotus score. But, yeah, overall, it, it felt like people kind of came in with a deck in mind, which right. is something that is important. But I think, ideally, you have a deck in mind that you can pivot out of when someone else is in your lane. Right, right. When I saw Jason and Darian kind of fighting over the same cards, I was just really disappointed. I was, like, really hopeful that that they would be able to kind of, like, okay, we're both in green decks. Where do we go when somebody else is in the lands deck with us? Right. And there was enough green-red aggro, green-red prison-y stuff yes. to, to, to do that into, right? And their decks turned out fine, right? I'm not saying that they were bad decks by any means, right? But it was kind of, like, they were both very clearly taking cards that the other one wanted. And ideally, you can find a way to pivot out of that to allow both of you to flourish. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, like early on, I was one that came in with like very, very, very concrete lists. And sometimes it was two concrete lists, yep. right? And I was going to see where I ended up. Um, and those lists even were down to this like pick ranges, like, but with, especially with the discords. But I mean, even the last lightning, like the last two lightnings, I had no list, right? Like the last two online lightnings. Yep. So I, I've moved now as I've done more and more of these, especially through online, that it's not just that of my awareness of what's going on and thing, but I've moved to where... I, I have an idea quite often, but I definitely don't have uh, – I have a list that I develop sometimes as I'm going that day. Like, I start making notes like, oh, yeah, this card, this card. Because sure. if I don't do that, I forget about the card. And then it's like, oh, crap. Oh, I and then Minimal gets taken 16th pick, yeah. something like that. Um, yeah. But it's – you know, so there, there, there's that, that ebb and flow between preparedness and ability to kind of look at what's going on, right? Right. Um, and I think that's it, 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 it's a hard ability, right? And I'm not great at it. I've gotten better at it, but uh, it's definitely it's definitely a challenge. Yeah, I'm excited to to be able to do more of these, um, and honestly, to do some more of them that are not streamed because I think right. that streaming creates a whole different level where you kind of have to feel like I, I think a lot of people draft decks that they want to walk in being prepared, so they come in with really set lists mm-hmm. because they. Uh, they, they feel like there's a lot of pressure on yeah. kind of coming in and being watched the whole time, right? As opposed to being a little more flexible in something like a Discord draft where you can think about your picks a little longer. When you're sitting around a table and you have 90 minutes to pick your picks, right. it's a lot harder to come in with flexibility and, like, look on Scryfall for 10 minutes. Right. Well, but I mean, and there's another interesting level to it as well. Like, I, um, you know, Sam had noticed, Sam had been doing a lot of Discord drafts, uh, but she noticed she did a cube draft and she felt so much better about it. Because she can't read the stupid cards on Discord and she on, on Contratrice. Mm. And she doesn't know, like, she knows certain cards, but she doesn't know the format so right. well. And, like, the, the format of Cockatrice, she's like, I just don't think I can do Discords anymore because Cockatrice is miserable and I can't, right? Like, Cockatrice it has a certain thing. So, like, there, there are so many ebbs about different people and different setups and, you know, totally. what is. And I, I do think the camera or the idea that something's on the line, right? Like, right. the idea that I'm paying something, and even if it's 50 bucks, like, that's 50 bucks, 50 bucks, right? Like, yeah. I'm paying something in. I'm not going to, 
unless you just got extra money, right? You're probably not going to do something as crazy. Um, totally. Because, you know, that's a, you know, that's a pot date or tank of gas or, you know. Exactly. One eighteenth of an electrical bill these days. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> I mean, it's certainly several nice meals at Applebee's. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, so next time, are you going to be in one of these? I, you know, I mean, I, I would love to again. It would be my fourth, um, you know, so um, I would love to be on the short list again for my turn up. Uh, yep. uh, but I mean, you've only, I mean, at your house, that always makes it a challenge. So this would be two. two? Yeah. You've done two? Yeah, I've the done first two. one, and then the one you beat with the mono blue. So yeah, the I've one done, I, got, I got beat with yeah. mono blue. Let's be clear. Me though, so. <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, I've done three. Um, so, but you know, in your house, it makes it a little more of a challenge to play. It's so. pretty tough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I would love to be on that list as the one of the steering committee that rotates in for yep. the next one. Uh, I know. I mean, Eric would always be good for another one, but Eric, uh, you know, Eric's heart's definitely more in announcing. <laughs> he, he's so good at it. He's fantastic. Yeah. It's really kind of shameful. Um, but yeah, this is great. Thanks everyone for hanging out with us. Uh, and we'll probably have some follow ups on this and talk through some of these drafts. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Thanks All everyone. Right, folks. Take care. Bye.